Ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome to the 13th East Asian Seas Partnership Council meeting. This is Karen C., the Secretariat Coordinator of the PEMC Research Facility, which will serve as the Secretariat for this particular meeting. Uh, here we have our EC members, the complete roster, and then also we have here the presence of our country partners and also non-country partners as well as guests. Uh, to begin the meeting, uh, again, I advise everyone to go over the Zoom meeting guidelines as presented to you before. Uh, with this, I open the floor and hand it over to uh, Pa'arif, our council chair, to begin the meeting. Thank you, Karen. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, a pleasant morning. Uh, I call the meeting to, to order. Our, uh, welcome to the 13th is uh, SNC's partnership council uh, meeting. We have a strong line lineup uh, participant today with a representative from country partners, Cambodia, China, Indonesia, Japan, Lao PDR, Philippines, Korea, Singapore, Vietnam, and also non-country partners, ACB, IMAX, QM, NOWEB, OSPRI, SPF, OSL. I also acknowledge the presence of uh, Honorary Kong Vitanak, Deputy Governor of the Province of Prish, Sihanouk, Cambodia, the local government host for the EIS Congress 2021, and Dr. Zhao Hui Zhang, China PMC Center, uh, PNLC President Dr. Wan Suk Senanan, PNLG represented by Dr. Xia Xin Hua Fang and Mr. Handoko Adi Susanto, NDP GF at C2. I'd like to thank for your continued uh, support in PMC activities uh, in the in these challenging uh, times. Also present here, my colleagues, the EC members, Dr. Fan Moninet, Dr. Fu Tancha, Dr. Uh, Jai Ryong O, and Dr. Uh, Keta Furukawa, and the BRF Executive Director, ED, Ms. Amy Gonzalez and uh, her staff. In March this year, we convened all country and non-country partners and held the 26 expanded EC meeting to discuss and decide on the nature of design and design of our EIS Congress 2021 and on the conceptual framework of the seven EIS ministerial declaration. Today and tomorrow, we gather here again to review the first draft of the ministerial declaration, the PEMC roadmap to 2030, and other forward-looking aspect of PEMC operations. To help inform the crafting of the ministerial declaration, which will serve as our overall policy guidance uh, in the next three years. We shall assess the result and the recommendation of the midterm review of the 2018-2022 implementation plan of the sustainable development strategy for the seas of SCSC or SDSC and uh, discuss the proposed framework for the PEMC roadmap to 2030, which is an integrated, integral uh, component of the seven ministerial declaration. The, the roadmap is our decadal blueprint that takes into account the global pandemic and new and emerging opportunities with the UN decade of, of an ocean, ocean science and post-2020 global biodiversity frameworks. The end goal of having sustainable development of seas of East Asia is too ambitious to achieve within nine years. So we break them down into four elements. First, share economic uh, prosperity and healthy ocean ecosystem, resilient communities, and 
green recovery development preferably with measurable target and that all countries have already signed onto. With this, we aim to maintain the position of the needs of the region and analyze the needed paradigm shift in paving the way toward a sustainable ocean and coastal development for the EAS region. It is my hope that this meeting, we can build uh, and strengthen the current draft declaration and come up with the robust version that country ministers can adopt and sign. This will send a strong sign, uh, signal, signal to the rest of the world that the partnership is committed to take action based on its abilities, experience, and resources to fulfill its global commitments. In addition, through, it, through this meeting, we will be presenting, as initially raised in the last EC meeting, the draft charter of the PMC network of uh, learning centers to formalize the network, the 2022-2023 strategic action plan of the PMC network of local uh, government. And uh, the PMC training and capacity development plan 2021 to 2025. We, we must not forget, of course, operational aspect of PMC's plans and uh, operations. The pair of ability to generate and allocate resources will rise as make or big issue for PMC as its serpents. It's focus on enhance its visibility in areas that are highly impactful as implementation catalyst and thought leader. The sustainability of the PRF should therefore be one of the driving principles for how the PMC route roadmap is contracted. Mindful that the consideration need to be made to optimize its current structure and capacity to monitor and report on the progress and achievement of the partnership in SGSC implementation. Thank you, and I look forward to a productive meeting. Thank you, Pari, for the opening remarks. Uh, truly, we do have a number of agenda items for this particular meeting, hence the need to spread out the agenda items over the course of two days. Uh, begin, before we proceed with the other uh, discussion points of this meeting, I would like to first convene everyone for a group photo just to commemorate this meeting. Um, may I call on June, our IT assistant, to assist us. Uh, may I request everyone to turn on their video screens? Uh, okay. uh, June, can you um, make the count? Okay. Please, everyone, open your camera. Uh, we have here some of our EC members whose videos are still not on. Also on the part of uh, PRF staff as the secretariat, please turn on your video screens. Uh, also on the side of the Philippines, kindly turn on your videos. Okay, then um, on the count of three, Ajun, please. Okay, one, two, Three. Okay, then just to make sure that everyone is captured, and because we one. have, yes. Another one. Okay, one, two, three. Okay. Uh, June, uh, okay, all right. Thanks, everyone. Now proceeding to the rest of the meeting. Uh, I shall be presenting the provisional agenda. 
of the council and technical sessions. Rod, can you show the slides, please? All right, okay. Our 13 PC meeting will be divided into three sessions. We have the council and technical sessions, which will be attended by all council members, both country and non-country partners alike, including our guests, uh, the, uh, the PNLC, Dr. Wansok, and also uh, the province of Priyasihanok headed by uh, govern, uh, Deputy Governor Kong Vitanak. Uh, for the first day on the council session to be chaired by Pa'arif Duono, as the first agenda item, of course, we have now the opening of the meeting and also here, the approval of the agenda of the council and technical sessions. For 9.15 to 9.25 a.m., we will be having the council chair's report where Pa'arif shall present for reference the summary of conclusions, recommendations, and decisions of the 12th PC meeting and the 25th to 26th Executive Committee meetings that happened prior to this meeting, and also the actions taken by the PRF Secretariat, therefore. We will also be having, uh, originally as planned, the provisional agenda of the 27th EC meeting. However, upon internal deliberations of the PRF, we have decided to postpone the discussion on this agenda item to give way to other discussion points of this meeting. Uh, the copy of the provisional agenda of the 27th EC meeting, well, it will not be discussed, is provided in the meeting documents provided to the council members last June 28th. Uh, we will be giving a copy of the revised agenda, assuming there are any changes, one month before the scheduled meeting on October. So far, there are no specific dates. We shall inform the council members appropriately in due time. Then, proceeding to the technical session, this time to be chaired by Dr. O as the technical session chair, we will be having as the first agenda, the crafting the PEMC roadmap to 2030. Uh, in particular, the PRF shall present for review or consideration of the meeting, the results and recommendations of the midterm review of the 2018 to 2022 implementation plan of the Sustainable Development Strategy of the Seas of East Asia or the SDSC, as well as the proposed framework for the PEMC roadmap to 2030 and the focus areas and process for developing the SBSC implementation plan for the next round, uh, that is 2023 to 2027. Uh, all these um, meeting documents are provided in the list of documents provided in June 28th. Then as part of the supporting strategies or plans of the PEMC Roadmap to 2030 and the next SDSC implementation plan, we should also be providing um, a presentation of the concept brief for developing the draft 2022 to 2030 strategic action plan of the PEMC network of local governments, the draft charter of the PEMC network of learning centers, and also the PEMC training and capacity development plan. Then, um, after the discussions, we will be having uh, the breakout sessions as initially relayed to the council members. Uh, the instructions for the breakout sessions shall be provided by Dr. O later on. Uh, as you can see from this schedule, we'll be having breakout sessions from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. Manila time, then proceed to lunch before continuing on with the breakout sessions for another 30 minutes uh, from 1 to 1.30 and then proceeding with the pl plenary to end eventually at 3 p.m. Manila time. Uh, Rod, can you proceed to the next slide, please? Okay, thank you. Then uh, that's it for the first day of our 13th PC meeting. On the second day, uh, we will be having uh, the next set of agenda items under the technical session. This time to be chaired by Dr. Keita Furukawa as the co-chair of the session. Uh, we will have, of course, the opening of the second day, preceded by uh, then to be followed rather by updates on the East Asian Seas Congress 2021, where we shall be presenting, among others, the draft program outline for the events on December 1, such as the plenary and the rest of the events under the main conference to be attended by the public. We shall also be giving a demo or rather a preview of the expanded East Asian Seas Congress 2021 website, which has been launched just this Monday, July 26. Then on the substantive part of the Congress, we have here the seventh ministerial declaration of the East Asian Seas 
partnership, uh, we shall be presenting the salient features of this the first draft, as well as the comments and recommendations received thus far from the country partners. In case there are additional comments and suggestions from EC country partners and also our non-country partners. Uh, we shall also be discussing the timeline for developing the declaration and other logistical concerns related to the ministerial forum, which will happen on December 2. Then after that, we shall be having the closing of the council and technical session, then proceed with lunch. So for this, uh, the action requested from PC members is to review or approve the provisional agenda. Do we have any comments? or suggestions perhaps, any other things that our council members would like to note for the council and technical sessions? Uh, seeing that there are no comments and suggestions, I move for the approval of this agenda, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, the, uh, the agenda of the 13th meeting is uh, adopted. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, now we can proceed with the council chair's report. Hmm. Next slide, Rod. Thank you, Karen. Uh, dear colleagues, allow me to present for reference of the meeting, the summary of conclusion, recommendation, and decision of the previous meetings and the action taken. Uh, for this purpose, I refer the, to the command PC slash 13 slash doc slash 02. I shall be sharing update on the action taken from the major conclusions, recommendation, and, de and decision made by the partnership council from the 12th PC meeting and the uh, 25th and 26th PC meetings, which were held respectively in July 2020, October 2020, and March 2021. I'm grouping the key updates on three main issues. First, on managing work despite the global pandemic. I would like to congratulate everyone on collab collectively managing the global pandemic in many aspects, from keeping healthy, managing the work remotely, connecting with each other, and keeping PMC bank balance rather, relatively okay. We shall hear from the ED later on update uh, regarding PEMC's operational and financial sustainability. Second, on the EIS Congress 2021, uh, thanks to the government of Cambodia, we managed to finalize the date and format from a spread out Congress, which uh, started on June with the Ocean Roundtable on Blue Economy during the global pandemic to holding the Congress proper on the 1st and 2nd December 2021. More detail will be presented during technical session chaired by Dr. Keita Furukawa. We, we nailed down a positive and optimistic theme, namely charting a new ticket of hope, healthy ocean people and economies capturing the the needed uh, collective direction of the EIS region in accelerating effort in the implementation of ICM, as well as responding to blue-green recovery during and after the pandemic. Likewise, we nailed down a sub -team of uh, various elements. Country partners have the first draft of the 27 minister de declaration, which will chart the future directions of the work of PMC. I understand that uh, there have been some bilateral consultation with country partners, and as such, we will hear feedback on that uh, draft uh, later. Third, on the SDSC implementation, 
we successfully concluded the SDSC scaling up implementation project, which is part of the four cycle grant uh, from UNDP and GF, aim of transforming PMC into a fully effort regional mechanism. We proved that the ICM mode works as a requisite foundational mechanism to push you the blue economy pathway. The pair up with the technical session chair and co-chairs as advisor conducted the midterm review of the SDSC implementation plan 2018 to 2022 in 2020 to ensure that the plan remains relevant and fit for the purpose amid the global development on sustainable development, including national and local government respond recovery and resilience measures under the new normal. Finding from the review shall also inform the development of 2023-2027 implementation plan and the PMC roadmap to 2030. The findings of the midterm review shall be presented and discussed later for consideration of, uh, of meeting. Then as part of improving standard guideline, technique, uh, tools, pathways, demonstration areas and evaluation system for ICM to scale up the approach regionally and worldwide. The PRF is working on the evaluation of ICM effectiveness using the harmonized evaluation methodology that the PRF developed in consultation with the expert. The China PMC Center CPC is currently pilot testing the said uh, methodology in China. Results are expected in November 2021 and will be shared with PC members. In terms of new members in the PMC circles, the Partnership Council has formally accepted the Norwegian Institute for Water Resource, or NIVA, and Xiamen University, as well as Coastal and Ocean Management Institute, or COMI, as a non-country partner and regional center of excellence, or RCUA, of PMC, uh, respectively. The pair have also recently signed an agreement with the Incheon Port Authority on a maritime transport related research, uh, the paper which assess the current situation and expected the future pathways for reducing greenhouse gas emission in the East Asian seas and their implication on Incheon port uh, in uh, Korea. It was uh, presented and discussed at the Incheon International uh, Ocean Forum. Republic of Korea held in July 2021. Lastly, the extension of terms of Ms. Amy Gonzalez as the PRF's executive director was approved for a duration of January 2021 to December 2023. I hope for a productive, constructive and active engagement with you all today and tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you, Pa Arif, for the brief yet succinct uh, rec uh, summary of re conclusions, recommendations, and the actions taken. Therefore, uh, with this, we move on to the st official start of the technical sessions to be chaired by Dr. O as our technical session chair. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. Uh, Dr. O. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, and also Karen. Uh, first of all, thank you for joining this technical session. And I hope that you are all well and away from COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, as already Karen mentioned, a technical session will be held two days, today and tomorrow. So, Today's agenda item is 4.0, uh, 
crafting the PEMC roadmap to 2030. So we will have several presentations by Dr. Nancy Ormas and also Dr. Wansok Senanan. Then we'll have 10 minutes break then following questions, comments, and suggestions. First, I would, I would like to invite Dr. Nancy Bormas, Senior Program Manager of PEMC, to present for review and consideration of the meeting, the result and recommendation of the midterm review of the 2018 to 2022 implementation plan of the Sustainable Development Strategies for the Seas of East Asia, in short, SDS-SEA, the proposed framework for the PEMC roadmap to 2030, and the focus areas and process for developing the SDS-SEA implementation plan 2023 to 2027. Uh, document number PC slash 13 slash doc slash 04. Dr. Nancy Bormas, please. Thank you, Dr. O. A rainy good morning from Manila to our country and non-country partners. Uh, Dr. Wansok and I are pleased to introduce agenda item four on charting the PEMC roadmap to 2030 and SDSSCA implementation plan 2023 to 2027. Okay, so as, as previously mentioned, uh, this presentation introduces the results and recommendations from the midterm review of the SDS SEA implementation plan 2018 to 2022, where, where a framework and a set of strategies and principles for consideration in the formulation of the 2030 uh, PEMC roadmap are proposed. Uh, the presentation will also cover the focus areas uh, for the SDS implementation plan for 2023 to 2027, including the creation of a technical working group to draft to facilitate the drafting of the SDS implementation plan for presentation at the 28th EC meeting in March 2022 and uh, adoption at the 14th council meeting in July 2022. Uh, there are two information documents, uh, on the, particularly on the formulation of the PEMC Network of Local Government Strategic Action Plan 2022 to 2030, as well as the Capacity Development Plan for 2021 and 2025, and the PNLC charter that will also be uh, briefly covered in this presentation. Okay, so this slide summarizes the milestones in the formulation of the SDS SEA, uh, its adoption, implementation, updating, and reporting of progress since uh, 2003. So it also highlights the evolution of the SDS SEA to render it fit for its intended purpose and to continue to remain relevant in the face of changing uh, social, ecological, and economic conditions and developments at the global, regional, national, and local levels. So uh, let me start here. So the strategy was adopted in 2003 during the ministerial forum of the first East Asian Seas Congress in, 20, in 2003. Uh, the SDS SEA was considered then as the very first instrument that provides a common framework for regional cooperation to achieve sustainable development of the shared seas and resources of the countries in the region. Uh, in 2006, uh, the establishment of the partnership agreement arrangements through the adoption of the HICO partnership agreement by the 11 country partners during the second East Asian Seas Congress in 2006, formally established the coordinating mechanism and reporting process for SDS SEA implementation. So the agreement recognized PEMC as the regional mechanism for the SDS SEA implementation, with the Council providing the policy and operational guidance, as well as monitoring and reviewing the progress of implementation. So an implementation plan for 2012 to 2016 was approved by the Council at its fifth meeting in 2012 during the fourth, fourth East Asian Seas Congress in, uh, in Korea. Uh, the, the, the implementation plan uh, covered actions uh, based on the time-bound targets that were identified in the high partnership agreement and the Manila Declaration. And at the same, in the same meeting, the updating of the 2003, the, the first uh, SDS SEA was approved by the Council in line with new global developments and changing context of the region. So a regional review 
uh, for covering uh, 2003 up to 2015 was conducted. Uh, it served as the baseline for the proposed post-2015 targets, as well as providing a, a key reference document in the development of the, the, new, the, the, new, the new SDS SDA implementation plan. Uh, all of us are aware that uh, in 2015, the UN SDGs were adopted uh, with new targets uh, set in 17 goals, some of which are directly relevant to PEMC and the SDS SEA. So the updated SDS SEA in 2015, SDS SEA was endorsed by the Council at its sixth meeting for adoption. Uh, so the Danang Compact, which adopted the new strategy, set, also set new targets for ICM scaling up in particular from 20% to 25% in 2021. And uh, at the ninth meeting of the Council in 2017, the, the draft SDS SA implementation plan for this period, 2018 to 2022, was reviewed and was subsequently adopted at the 10th meeting of the Council in 2018. And as we enter the new decade, uh, there are a number of notable developments on the seas and oceans at the global level that required PEMC to assess the progress made in implementing the SDS implementation plan uh, 2018 to 2022. And among these developments included the declaration of uh, the UN General Assembly of 2021 to 2030 as the UN Decade of Ocean Science for Sustainable Development and UN Decade of Ecosystem Restoration. Uh, the CBD, the, sec uh, the Convention on Biological Diversity Secretariat is also in the process of finalizing the post 2020 biodiversity framework, which is expected to be adopted at the COP15 of the convention. And uh, the COVID-19 pandemic has added a new dimension to the existing challenges in achieving environmental sustainability. And thus the countries are in the process of developing or adopting the respective post-pandemic recovery measures. So at the 12th meeting of the council in 2020, uh, a midterm review of the uh, current implementation plan was approved and uh, the, the, the the, the review also initiated the formulation of the 2030 MC roadmap. So the, the, the objectives of the midterm review are fourfold. Uh, it uh, consolidates and assess the accomplishments of the partners, including the challenges in implementing the priority governance and management programs in the uh, implementation plan. Uh, the midterm review also aimed to validate the relevance of the indicators of progress in the implementation plan to review the priorities and proposed actions, indicators of progress and opportunities for cooperation under the global plans of actions, including the PMC post-2020 future strategy and post-COVID-19 pandemic sustainable recovery for consideration in the PMC roadmap. And uh, the midterm review also proposed practical recommendations and adaptive management measures and amendments that need to be incorporated in the current plan. So the midterm review was conducted in 2020 and utilized uh, a combination of desktop review and analysis of available documents and remote interviews and online surveys with selected partners to stock take and assess the accomplishments and constraints in SDS SEA implementation. Uh, priority actions and focus areas were drawn from the inputs, uh, comments, and recommendations gathered from the stock taking process and consultation phase. And in addition to new developments that are re relevant international instruments and frameworks that have impacts on PEMC's current and future work. So the recommendations for the 20 roadmap in particular took into consideration the good practices that can be replicated uh, the gaps that can be addressed and harnessed to manage the risk and amplify the opportunities for PEMC. So the SDS implementation plan 2018 to 2022 is comprised of um, three priority management programs focusing on biodiversity conservation, climate change and disaster risk reduction, pollution reduction and waste management, and three governance programs focusing on ocean governance and strategic partnerships, knowledge management and capacity building, blue economy investments and sustainable financing. So each program consisted of expected outcomes, indicators of progress, targeted actions or activities and schedule. And with the adoption of the plan, the partner, uh, 
the part the country partners and non-country partners and collaborating uh, organizations uh, have confirmed their commitment to implement the plan and uh, provide the information to PRF for consolid consolidation. Okay, so for the main findings, uh, the partners continue to recognize the relevance of the SDS SEA and confirm their support for its implementation in the next 10 years. Majority of the programs are still in progress and some may not be fully achieved in 2022. Uh, while the targets are time bound, there are some that are continuing beyond 2022. And the COVID-19 pandemic has also contributed in the delay in the implementation of some targeted activities due to travel restrictions and bans on mass gatherings and face-to-face -face meetings. The PRF, there are several projects that PRF have implemented, particularly the Jeff and the UNDP scaling up the implementation of the SDS SEA that have contributed significantly in governance strengthening and ICM scaling up and particularly in, in uh, reaching the ICM scaling up target of 25% in 2021. Uh, there is a need to reevaluate and update some targets and proposed activities, particularly in blue economy and investments. Uh, while PERMC helped pursue this goal by initially conducting a scoping of potential investment needs and opportunities through the SDS SEA project, more work needs to be done to ensure that the initiatives will come into fruition. Uh, there is also a need to maintain the relevance of the SDS SEA and ensure that, is, that uh, its strategies are aligned with the decadal plans of actions on ocean science, on ecosystem restoration, biodiversity conservation, and disaster risk reduction, as well as FEMSI's post-2020 future strategy. And finally, there is also a need uh, for PEMSI to effectively play its role as the Secretariat to the Council to further strengthen its uh, Tech secretariat and technical services. Uh, Output-wise, there are also a number of notable developments for the past three years, which are enumerated here. So the country partners have made considerable progress in formulating and initiating national policies and action plans to promote sustainable development, uh, including the passage of legislation and establishing the necessary institutional mechanisms in support of coastal and ocean governance. Uh, PAMSI's flagship program is ICM implementation, and we have been able to successfully localize the implementation of selected SDGs uh, through ICM in collaboration with our national and local government partners, communities, non-country partners, and the PAMSI network of learning centers. To facilitate knowledge sharing among the many partners and stakeholders of PAMSI, uh, we have uh, developed an online platform called the Seas of East Asia Knowledge Bank, which was established with World Bank support as a regional knowledge hub for coastal and ocean governance and blue economy. Uh, we have also been able to establish the usefulness of the state of the coast reporting as a platform for consolidating and analyzing data and information on blue economy for particularly for the national state of the coast and uh, improvements in governance and management program implementation at the local level for the local SOCs. And finally, uh, we have achieved and surpassed our ICM scaling up target of 25% in 2021. And there are uh, opportunities to continue replicating and scaling up the good practices as plans and programs for uh, a number of priority management programs are in the policy agenda of countries in response to their commitments and obligations to various regional and international agreements. So this slide summarizes the overall uh, implementation progress in relation to the three management programs focusing on biodiversity conservation, climate change and disaster risk reduction and pollution reduction and waste management. Uh, in general, uh, activities for each of the targeted outcomes as indicated in the bullets underneath each of the management programs, uh, which are contributing to achieving these, uh, the following SDG targets, 6, 11, 12, 13, and 14 are all in progress. And in support of these trends, uh, I would like to highlight that the 2021 Sustainable Development Report, one of the SDG assessment reports which and rank the performance of UN member states, the seven SDGs on an annual basis, other, uh, showed a decline actually in the global average. And 
This resulted from the decrease in the country scores on the SDG index, which the others, authors attributed to a large extent, extent to increased poverty rates and unemployment, which were uh, attributed to COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, the authors particularly cited the pandemic that it has created a, a sustainable development crisis that required a whole of government approach, which our country partners are actually anchoring their recovery responses on. Uh, on the positive side, uh, findings at the regional level showed that East Asia and Southeast Asia showed the most progress compared to other regions in SDG implementation. Uh, the information from the report is consolidated from voluntary country-led reviews. Okay, so overall, implementation progress for governance programs, which contribute to SDG 17 on the other hand, uh, showed some positive progress, particularly in the targeted outcomes for ocean governance and partnerships, as uh, depicted by the, by the green colored boxes for knowledge management and capacity uh, development and blue economy and investments uh, and sustainable financing. Uh, uh, majority of the activities are remain in progress. Uh, the succeeding slides will provide a context and summary of the general trends for each of the management and governance programs. Uh, we have uh, shared the, a copy of the midterm review report, uh, which covered all the details and whether the report was still ongoing. So I will not be able to provide all the necessary details here, but just the general trend. Okay, so uh, for the management programs, the, the implementation of... Uh, programs focusing on biodiversity conservation, climate change, and uh, pollution reduction and waste management have been facilitated through the scaled up national and local ICM programs in the 12 countries, uh, which have collectively covered an estimated 40% of the regional coastline in 2020. Uh, the CHEF uh, UNDP project uh, on scaling up the implementation of the SDS SEA that covered eight uh, Jeff eligible countries have contributed significantly in the replication of good management uh, practices. Uh, the, the recently concluded high level political forum on sustainable development of the UN held a dedicated session on the role of cities and local authorities on SDG implementation. And uh, there was a general recognition at the forum on the that uh, the role of the local governments in uh, implementing uh, local actions that uh, help achieve the SDG targets. So PEMC has been operationalizing the slogan, local is global and global is local through ICM implementation and scaling up and the region's accomplishments have been actually highlighted in Jeff's international waters portfolio and good management practices. Okay. So let's move on to the first management program on biodiversity conservation and management. Uh, you must have seen this slide several times in my past presentations. And as we all know, uh, the region is known as the global center of marine biodiversity. And as depicted in the biodiversity contours for hard corals here and pumacentric fish uh, here, there are a greater number of coral genera and uh, fish or pumacentric fish species that dominate this core of the center, which is also known as the coral triangle. And as we move outwards, the number of coral genera and pomacentric fish species diminishes. So uh, let me just reiterate the significance of maintaining or sustaining the resiliency of our reefs. Uh, there are current scientific discourses uh, which are looking at a possible latitudinal shift in the distribution of occurrence of corals as a consequence of global warming. And it is speculated that this center may shift northwards or southwards as increasing temperature in their current locations here may not be optimum for coral growth. However, as we know, coral reefs thrive in relatively shallow environment and more importantly, they need appropriate substrates in order to recruit and thrive. And these conditions may not be ideal in the Northeast Asian regions, except probably in selected areas in China, Japan, and Morocco, Korea. So the significance of the Philippines and Indonesia as sources of coral roots have been established by oceanographic studies. And fortunately, uh, there are reef areas that have uh, been identified as hard, highly resilient. And, and in, 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 of course, in the two countries, including uh, some two countries in Africa and in, in South Pacific based on a global assessment. And so protecting these areas is very critical. 
Uh, so biodiversity conservation is high in the agenda of our partner countries through the formulation and adoption of the national biodiversity strategic and action plans in, in response to their commitments as parties to the Convention on Biological Diversity. Uh, a number of management measures and, and targets are identified for implementation within the timeframes of the NBSAPs. And the countries have also submitted their, their respective six national reports to CBD detailing their accomplishments in biodiversity conservation and national programs that contributed to uh, SDG 14 and several IHG biodiversity targets. Now, uh, looking at the, our accomplishments on biodiversity conservation on, and management, there are two indicators here uh, that have shown positive results. Uh, there is an increase in local governments that are implementing ICM, and there has also been a number of uh, locally managed and nationally managed MPAs wherein uh, the governance has been uh, improved. And accomplishments in other areas, such as application of special planning tools, uh, um, coastal use zoning, uh, functional zoning, and MSPs, and assessment of management effectiveness of MPAs, and promoting the application of blue carbon tools, uh, methodologies, and capacities, capacities remain in progress. So MPA uh, establishment and networking as tool for conservation planning is widely implemented in the region, particularly in China, Indonesia, and the Philippines. And based on the data collected from the midterm review, there are six countries that are able to collectively uh, cover an estimated 30% of their territorial waters under protection through the designation of MPA. So ever the application of the management effectiveness tracking tool needs to be scaled up because current practices are generally project or, or project based. And in terms of application of special planning tools such as coastal use zoning, uh, functional zoning schemes or MSPs, uh, this target is limited to countries with national legislations in place like China and Indonesia. For uh, coastal ecosystem restoration uh, projects such as mangrove rehabilitation, coastal wetlands restoration and so on, they actually dominate uh, the country partners' efforts in mitigating carbon emissions and enhancing sequestration, but uh, application of tools and capacity building on uh, carbon mitigation and sequestration remain project-based. So there are a number of uh, major projects in the region, like the Blue Cares project involving Philippines, Indonesia, and Japan, uh, where best practices or good management practices can be shared to other areas with limited experience. So for climate change and disaster risk reduction, again, uh, we all know about the region's vulnerability to natural and human-induced hazards, uh, frequent occurrences of natural disasters, such as earthquakes, tsunamis, tropical storms, flooding, landslides, and volcanic eruptions uh, that affect a significant proportion of the population and, incurring, and incurring enormous economic losses have been notable over the past decades. So for disaster risk reduction, uh, all the 11 partner countries are signatory to the Sendai Declaration, uh, wherein they're committed to implement the framework uh, covering this period, 2015 to 2030. And for climate change uh, adaptation, and on the other hand, uh, all the partner countries are signatory to the Paris Agreement, where the main goal is to strengthen the global response to the threat of climate change by keeping the global temperature rise below two degrees Celsius. And as required by the agreement, the countries have submitted or updated their NDCs, nationally determined uh, contributions uh, to achieving climate neutrality over the long term. And uh, these targets is very important for biodiversity conservation in view of the threats of climate change to the natural resilience of coral ecosystems as I mentioned previously. And if the two degrees Celsius or below is maintained, the speculation of a lati latitudinal shift can be uh, avoided. Okay, so for progress in the implementation of climate change and disaster risk reduction, uh, uh, the, the results actually showed some positive trends in terms of passage of legislations and adoption of national strategic uh, plans and programs on CCA and DRR, including the establishment of the necessary institutional arrangements and securing uh, funding mechanisms in compliance with the country's commitments to uh, UNFCCC, Paris Agreement, and the Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction. And at the local level, 
uh, CCA and DRR plans and programs uh, have been developed by uh, selected local governments in line with the national policy framework and strategic action plans. And in some cases, uh, CCA and DRR action plans are mainstreamed into the physical framework and development and investment plans of uh, local governments. And as one of the most disaster prone regions in the world, uh, significant funding uh, and technical assistance from uh, multilateral and bilateral sources have been channeled into the region, benefiting a number of countries and local governments in the form of capacity building to mitigate and adapt to climate change, uh, in promoting the application of tools and methodologies, and in the conduct of targeted research to support uh, disaster resilience uh, planning. There are also a number of numerous products, uh, knowledge products that have been generated uh, that capture the lessons learned and best management practices on CCA, DRR, which have been shared in on various forums. And uh, in terms of uh, realizing the uh, PEMC Cup partners and, and port cities realizing their air pollution and GHG reduction targets, uh, we have introduced the Port Safety Health and Environmental Management System in two international ports in in uh, Thailand and four uh, ports in the Philippines. And the application of the uh, system uh, has been able to, to, uh, to show the, the, the good performance of these ports that are consistent with relevant and, relevant and applicable international regulations. And they have also generated uh, environmental economic benefits in terms of increasing the green cover inside the port premises and reduction in carbon dioxide emissions. So moving on to pollution reduction and waste management, uh, pollution in the East Asian region mainly originates from land-based sources in the form of untreated sewage, agriculture and aquaculture runoffs, discharges from industry and habitat modification. And as close to nine of the world's mega cities and a number of mega ports and economic growth centers, uh, a number of bays, gulfs, and inner seas in the regions are classified as marine pollution hotspots because of high level of pollutants found in their waters and sediments. And the region is also facing the challenge as regard marine plastic pollution. Uh, four countries are at the center of the marine plastic crisis where they have been identified as the leading sources of mismanaged or leaked plastics into the oceans. Uh, so that this figure on the right shows the global emissions of plastics into the ocean, where the same uh, four partner countries are actually included in the top 20 countries with small urban rivers that make up 1,000 rivers that are contributing to 80% of the global plastic emissions into the ocean. So plastic pollution have been recently dominating the headlines due to its visible impacts to the environment and marine life and key economic sectors such as tourism, fisheries, and livelihoods and infrastructure. And there have been a growing momentum in the region to look for solutions. And these solutions are actually captured uh, in the national plans of actions for marine litter or debris, where examples of these plants uh, in Indonesia and the in Vietnam are shown here. And uh, there's also a new development in relation to the formulation of a new global agreement in on marine plastic pollution pollution, which is on the drawing board, as announced at the fifth session of the UN Environment, uh, Environment Assembly. Uh, six countries in the region have expressed willingness to explore options and negotiations for the new global agreement, which is anticipated to kick off in 2022. And in terms of the role of PMC in, in the discussion, uh, uh, the role of regional organization is seen as actually critical in the formulation of this new global agreement in recognition of our familiarity with the national and local conditions, including uh, facilitating the sharing of best practices and technologies and, and so on. So progress in the implementation of pollution reduction and waste management programs uh, show the positive trend uh, in relation to the country partners accession or ratification of marine pollution related international conventions, particularly the IMO conventions. And in terms of managing marine plastics pollution, the adoption of national action plans uh, is providing opportunities for technical support and financing. However, 
uh, much work is needed to be undertaken to translate these actions on the ground. And a negative rating is given in operationalizing this IRBM concept in view of the delay in the approval of the JEP UNDP ASEAN IRBM, IRBM project, uh, which is expected to generate the necessary experiences in operationalizing the, the S2S, the source to see concept and strategy. And uh, the, the EDS report, uh, the executive director's report tomorrow will provide updates on the status of the project. Okay, so for the governance programs uh, uh, of the SDS SE implementation plan, these are actually designed to further strengthen PEMC as the regional, uh, regional coordinating mechanism. And it also establishes the necessary enabling mechanism to facilitate the uh, implementation of the SDS SEA in terms of uh, policy reforms, capacity development, sustainable investments, and financing, knowledge management, and m and &E and reporting. So this diagram, on the, this diagram shows the operating mechanism of the partnerships, which I will skip in explaining since the uh, country partners and non-country partners are familiar on how this mechanism works. And as the council is also aware, the SDS implementation plan is coordinated. Uh, its implementation is coordinated at three levels of governance, regional, national, and local to achieve the, uh, the SDS SEA's vision of healthy oceans, people, and economies. So the regional level, which the council oversees, uh, uh, this uh, addresses the policy and management interventions targeting regional cooperation for priority transboundary issues among the countries in the region. So the national level, which the national coordinating mechanisms is overseeing, uh, it facilitates the formulation of national ocean policy and implementing arrangements as well as harmonizing national legislations and uh, building or strengthening institutional mechanisms. And at the local level, uh, implementation is coordinated by the local authorities at the provincial, municipal, regency, or city level with focus on improving governance and ensuring the alignment of uh, management programs with national policies and strategies. Okay, so for on, on ocean governance and strategic partnerships, although majority of the tar targeted outcomes are still in progress, uh, significant accomplishments have been achieved. Uh, efforts are underway to sustain the PEMC resource facility uh, with Indonesia joining the country partners who are providing voluntary contributions to support the PRF operations. Uh, as mentioned by the council chair, uh, we have also designated new uh, regional centers of excellence, uh, namely the Institute for Global Environmental Studies based in Japan and the Coastal and Ocean Management Institute of Shannon University in China. And we have also welcomed uh, a, a new non-country partner, the Norwegian Institute for Water Research, uh, who joined the, the partnership in 2020. So uh, a monitoring evaluation and reporting system have been established through the state of the coast reporting, which was initiated at three levels of governance. So we have developed the regional state of the coast, looking at the, uh, the LMEs uh, comprising the region. We've also developed the national state of the coast, uh, focusing on blue economy theme. And we have also developed the, or introduced the SOC, an indicator-based SOC reporting system for, for local governance. And in terms of national policies and legislations, uh, recent information indicated that 10 country partners have passed ocean and coastal policies and have enacted supporting legislations, while two countries have drafted policies that are pending approval by the government. And uh, in terms of the length of coastline covered by ICM, as I've mentioned, we have achieved and surpassed this target as committed in the, by the country partners in the Danang Compact. And so, 2020, uh, we have covered uh, close to 40% of the regional coastline. And a number of local governments have also implemented the ICM code and ICM certification system, uh, which is based on two prevailing international standards, the ISO 9001 and ISO 14001. Okay, so for uh, knowledge management and capacity development, uh, which are considered also as key assets of PMC, uh, as I mentioned, we have established the CIS of East Asia, East Asia Knowledge Bank as a platform to enhance 
access to knowledge products and services for our various partners to facilitate ICM scaling up. Uh, the PRF also continue, continues to enhance the functionalities of the platform uh, to, to, to ensure its operationalization and maximize its potential as a knowledge hub on coasts and oceans. And as one of the leading knowledge providers in the East Asian region, uh, PEMC continues to disseminate uh, and publish a number of knowledge products for the coast and oceans. And uh, we have also achieved significant achievements in uh, capacity development through the conduct of training and capacity building activities at regional, national, in, and local levels in cooperation with various partners. Uh, uh, between 2014 to 2019, we have uh, organized more than 200 training and capacity building programs benefiting uh, more than 7,000 participants. And uh, the PEMC network of local government's role in the conduct of capacity building activities has been, uh, uh, has been very significant in the past, in the past uh, three years. Okay. So for blue economy investment and sustainable financing, and based on the actions identified in the Changwon Declaration in 2012, uh, PEMC has taken steps in conducting an assessment of ocean economy, uh, coastal and marine ecosystem services, and investment opportunities for sustainable blue economy de development. Uh, the experience have generated learnings on business models assessment, business model assessment, site assessment, types of potential investment challenges, and lessons learned. And this has been documented. Uh, in, in a report that uh, we have published, uh, which also included an overview of PEMC's role in advancing blue economy and impact investment in the region. Uh, but more work is required to realize, for instance, the target of facilitating private sector investments in bankable blue economy projects and in the establishment of the uh, ocean investment facility in support of SDS, SCA implementation. Okay, so as, as mentioned earlier, the COVID-19 pandemic has created a sustainable development crisis uh, that will have significant impacts on the oceans and marine ecosystems for the coming years. Um, I have here a summary of the presentations made by the eight partner countries at the Ocean Roundtable Dialogue in June 2021 wherein the countries confirmed that the pandemic has uh, significant economic impacts on tourism, uh, transportation, retail trading, and manufacturing sectors, and that uh, the largest affected sector is actually the coastal and marine uh, coastal and marine tourism. So uh, the, the the responses of the countries are will also be taken into consideration in the formulation of the 2030 roadmap. Okay, so contributing to SDS implementation are PRF projects that are ongoing and also uh, in the pipeline. So as mentioned by the council chair, uh, the long running JEP project that PEMS implemented since 1993 with the fourth place, uh, fourth place concluding early this year has contributed significantly in SDS implementation and reporting of progress. So there are currently seven ongoing projects and we expect three uh, projects, three regional projects uh, that are on the pipeline uh, we anticipate that this will be implemented within the duration of the next SDS SCA implementation plan and 20, 2030 roadmap. Okay, so in, in preparing the 2030 roadmap, uh, the midterm review identified a number of key principles and strategies as measures to prioritize and enhance the focus for the new implementation plan. So uh, principle one calls uh, PEMC to to play a uh, policy advocate to implementation catalyst. So PEMC has been considered as a driving force for policy development in the region in the last decade in support of healthy oceans and coasts. And it, is re it was recommended that PEMC should now leverage its role as an effective policy advocate and catalyst by further accelerating the implementation of these policies, strategies, and plans and innovations by uh, capitalizing on the expertise that has been created, the knowledge and the networks uh, in the net, the, for up to 2030 to support uh, national and local implementation of management programs on biodiversity conservation, climate change and disaster risk reduction, including the application of uh, various tools and methodologies. 
and uh, it should also uh, strengthen its capacity to monitor the intended uh, outcomes and impacts of various programs and projects to better inform policy and planning processes of the government and relevant partners. So principle two, uh, two focuses on, uh, on thought leader on frontier issues and new ocean related developments. So the, the interviews and consultations that were conducted with country and non-country partners have validated the PEMC's critical role in capturing the insights and new developments that are relevant to the future of the, the region through regular publication and dissemination of knowledge products, organization of workshops and training events with partners and expanding the networks of the local government and university partners. And for it was recommended that but for 2027 to 2030, uh, PEMC uh, has the opportunity to position itself as a thought leader or a go-to organization for topics that are identified in the PEMC's post-2020 strategy, uh, such as net zero carbon, net zero and carbon neutrality, marine plastics management, uh, including implementation or assisting. Uh, the national and local governments to implement the post-COVID-19 sustainable recovery and also supporting the priorities identified in the implementation plan of the UN Decade of Ocean Science. Uh, principle three focuses on prioritizing PRF sustainability for acting as a bridge between global and local. So the sustainability of the PRF, uh, which which has been providing technical and technical and secretariat services to the council and stakeholders should be uh, the driving principle for how the roadmap should be crafted and mindful at the same time that considerations need to be made to, to improve or optimize the current structure and capacity of PRF to monitor and report on the progress and achievements of the partners in partnerships in SDS implementation. And finally, uh, principle four calls for the adoption of a prioritization framework, uh, focusing on grow, hold, and harvest. And under this principle, uh, it was recommended that PEMC must focus its effort where it can magnify its impacts while maintaining its position in promoting excellence across key outcomes in the SDS SEA. And to leverage this, the use of a prioritizing framework to organize the areas where PEMC should grow, hold, and harvest, and building from the findings of the midterm review is being proposed. So the, the prioritization framework uh, uses a GE matrix. GE uh, stands for General Electric uh, Matrix, which is a portfolio analysis tool used by corporations to determine where they should invest where they should hold their position and where they can harvest or divest based on two variables, uh, industry att attractiveness and competitive strength. So from the perspective of the SDS SEA, uh, our question would be, are the activities identified in the roadmap attractive enough to generate profits or generate the expected outcomes and impacts and thus PEMC uh, and the PRF has the competence to perform and deliver the expected outcomes and impacts. Okay. So uh, for the three strategies, uh, GROW uh, will include activities uh, and initiatives that should be scaled up and positioned for further investments as these have been proven as highly impactful and effective in advancing Francis vision. Uh, for HOLD, uh, this will comprise of activities and initiatives that should be maintained at the same level of effort and investments as these are considered catalytic in enabling PEMC's reach and impact on critical uh, programs such as biodiversity, climate change, and pollution reduction, water conservation, and so on. And for harvest, uh, this, will, this pertains to a set of activities or initiatives that should be rationalized, reviewed, or perhaps turned over to partners with the necessary expertise and resources as these are possibly subsets of grow and hold activities, or they are demonstrated to be out of scope, or possibly a drain on PEMC or PRF's uh, resources. 
Okay, so with the four principles and prioritization framework in mind, uh, the following activities are proposed and classified uh, based on the three strategies. Uh, this, these activities are meant to provide guidance and catalyze discussion among the partners. So the breakout session that we will be having later uh, will initially validate the relevance and timeliness of the proposed activities and the details can be thrust out during the process of formulating the implementation plan. So, uh, so for uh, biodiversity conservation and management programs, uh, activities under the growth strategy includes uh, uh, developing a regional communication and partnership campaigns to support a key research and development and policy agenda. Uh, roll out of new products that are tailored to local needs and applications and uh, in scale up the monitoring uh, activities to measure impacts of management plans and programs. For whole, uh, this will comprise of activities uh, in terms of uh, continuing the cooperation and collaboration with local governments and local communities for uh, implementation of ICM projects and programs. Uh, in terms of harvest, uh, since uh, we have been uh, we have not been able to fully uh, implement the ICM certification uh, system, and we would like to rationalize it uh, under this strategy. For pollution reduction and waste management, uh, continue the monitoring of water quality, the application of pollutant loading, modeling, uh, marine litter, and mic microplastic monitoring in collaboration with our non-country partners and uh, PNLC network of uh, universities. And in terms of hold, uh, we continue to cooperate and collaborate with local governments in, in communities to, to enhance uh, the implementation of plans and programs to reduce pollution. And for knowledge management and capacity building uh, grow, the two networks have been very uh, instrumental in ICM scaling up and local level and helping local governments and national, national governments to an extent in ICM implementation, so we would like to expand the network uh, for, the, uh, to, to, for more additional universities or local governments to be part uh, of the partnership uh, to develop marketing, partnership, and outreach to better um, disseminate and, and promote our knowledge products and services to develop the 2030 research and development agenda for the Seas of East Asia Knowledge Bank and uh, to facilitate the dissemination of knowledge products. And for whole, uh, we will continue to expand the application of the SOC reporting and implement on-demand training programs. For ocean governance and partnerships uh, under GROW, we will look at the formal uh, the establishment of a business development direction division under the PRF to, to facilitate uh, the investment planning. And we will also look at the conduct of a feasibility study and option analysis to restructure PEMSI for financial sustainability. For hold, uh, continue to monitor and report on the progress of the implementation of the SDS SEA uh, to convene dialogues uh, to discuss sustainability mechanisms and uh, for the member contributions for PRF uh, towards 2030. For blue economy and sustainable financing, since uh, we have uh, we have the documentation on the lessons learned, uh, we would like to, uh, to focus on, on uh, establishing the thought leadership on key blue economy topics and financing for knowledge management and training, and har under harvest strategy to turn, har turn over the ocean investment facility idea and platform partnership options and platform to other to, to uh, to interested partners and to also establish partnership options with PRF to capitalize on, on, and on access and knowledge of LGU in facilitation role. And for new developments, uh, we would like to position the, the region uh, in uh, capacity development platform for implementation of the UNDOS uh, decade of ocean science, particularly on recovery and resiliency planning. Okay, so in terms of timing, uh, focus areas for implementation, uh, these the activities that were identified in the grow, hold, and harvest strategy were spread out from 2022 to 2027. So basically, these are all the same. Uh, same set of activities. Uh, the, the only difference is we identified a, a, a possible timeline when these uh, sets of activities will be 
will be uh, initiated or implemented. So for instance, in establishing a marketing partnership and outreach focus, so this will be done throughout the, throughout the implementation plan period. And so there are also a number of, of activities that will be implemented in a specific uh, time frame and, and so on. So same uh, with these sets of activities. So there are a number of activities that will be uh, that will like uh, that will be pursued uh, on a on a rolling basis uh, from 2022 to 2027. And there are also a number of activities that will be an undertaken in a very specific uh, time periods. And same here. So I think we can discuss this further during the breakout session. Okay, so uh, as one of the driving principles on how the roadmap to 2030 is crafted, uh, the sustainability of MC or the PRF is uh, very critical to enable it to survive and continue providing the necessary secretariat support to the partnerships. So we have identified four sustainability measures. Uh, the first one involves improving the capacity of accessing and working with the JEP programming and portfolio and other fund sources to fulfill the needs of the countries for SDS SEA scaling up. So uh, the second one is to conduct uh, an impact study of PEMSI value added in local and regional ocean governance. And I think this will be uh, done by demonstrating and replication, replicating value added initiatives, outputs and services at regional and national local levels through implementation of the experiences of the region and transfer to other region. Uh, the third one uh, focuses on increasing the monitoring and capacity for ICM science-based policy, priority setting and implementation of SDS SEA to increase partnerships and expansions. And the fourth one uh, will involve uh, knowledge management and capacity building for policy and SDS implementation. Uh, we have provided all of the detailed activities on how we are going to to implement this um, these four sustainability measures in uh, document. Uh, number four. Okay, so for the roles and responsibilities, uh, particularly in developing the SDS SEA implementation plan 2023 to 2027 in support of the 2030 roadmap, uh, we would need uh, support from the partners uh, to help us craft the, the implementation plan. So um, for now, we have identified the core technical working group, which will comprise of the technical session co-chairs. Uh, Doctors O and Forukawa as overall lead and advisors, and PRF will provide the necessary technical and secretariat support. And uh, we will invite volunteers to support the core TWG in reviewing the specific aspects of the implementation plan based on your area of interest and specialization. So we can uh, discuss this later during the uh, technical uh, during the breakout session. Okay, so moving on, I will briefly introduce the PEMC Network of Local Government Strategic Action Plan for 2022 to 2030. So the PNLG, as I've mentioned, has been a key player in ICM scaling up, in, in, in helping PEMC reach the, the scaling up, uh, ICM scaling up target 25% in 2021. So uh, this shows the milestones of the network, which actually coincided with the major milestones also that we have accomplished in relation to SDS SEA. So the network was officially launched in 2006 uh, during the East Asian Seas Congress uh, and uh, 18 founding members uh, signed the PNL Charter and Code of Conduct. And uh, as of 2020, we now have 51 local government members from 10 countries plus three uh, associate members uh, uh, from China, particularly the First Institute of Oceanography, uh, the Fujian Institute for Sustainable Oceans and, and uh, COMI. Okay, so the PNLG SAP, uh, the, uh, the, the current PNLG Strategic Action Plan is actually aligned also with the SDG targets. Uh, the 51, the 51, 50 local government members have committed to uh, implement plans and programs to contribute to these four SDG targets. We have uh, develop an PNLG online tracking system as part of the C Knowledge Bank. Uh, however, they have, they have uh, encountered challenges in uh, populating and updating the tracking system since, since uh, it's highly dependent on available data and information. But the significance of the reporting system is uh, recognized. And so probably 
we would uh, need support from our non-country partners and uh, PNLC to help uh, local governments also in, in, in uh, consolidating data and information in support of these four targets. Okay, so the SAP uh, 2022 to 2030 for the network of local governments uh, uh, will take into consideration a number of developments at the regional level and national and local levels. So I have enumerated a number of, of, of items here that should be taken into consideration in developing the SAP as well as the national and local levels, which I will not, uh, which I will not delve on. So the proposed framework, uh, if you will notice, uh, mirrors the SDS implementation plans framework, wherein there will be uh, a, port, uh, a component on governance and partnerships, uh, management programs focusing on the four SDG targets and improving the monitoring evaluation and reporting system of the local governments. So, uh, Okay, so again, as I mentioned, the, the, SAP, the PNLG SAP will also take into consideration the uh, global plans of actions on uh, biodiversity and ecosystem restoration and UNDOS. And particularly for the UN decade of ocean science, the tools and methodologies and knowledge and solutions that will be uh, developed can, be, can help local governments uh, improve uh, their monitoring evaluation and reporting system. Okay, so for the sub preparation, this will uh, if the prep the preparation of the sub is uh, ongoing. Uh, we hope that it will be adopted during the general assembly of the Temsi Network of Local Governments in December 2021, and um, and a corresponding declaration, the Preya Sihanok Declaration, will be signed by the 50 52 soon to be 52 local governments in support of the. Fancy roadmap as well as the network's uh, uh, focus. Okay, uh, so uh, I'd like to turn you over to uh, Dr. Wansok to, to walk you through the PNLC Charter and Capacity Development Plan for 2021 to 2025. Uh, over to you, Dr. Wansok. Uh, thank you. Hey, oh, thank, um, thank you, Nancy, and thank you, Kim C, for the opportunity to, to give this presentation. Um, I'll be um, talking about two pieces of documents that are relevant to the capacity building aspect. First, I'd like to touch on the PNLC charter. So the, the charter um, is designed to strengthen and build on the network of learning centers and regional centers of excellence. Um, it aims to specify the network's ground rules on membership and identify joint activities and outputs and explore sustainability uh, options and funding support. It uh, formalized the vision to build a committed network of nationally recognized academic and research institutions that can contribute to the achievement of SDSC and other relevant commitments. And it also serves as a um, network of country learning centers and regional centers of excellence to provide technical services to the sustainable development of coast and ocean. Uh, it's not moving, I think my laptop is. Sorry. Uh, there was the light. Let me see. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, so the goals and objectives of the charter uh, include the development and exchange of relevant information, tools, methodologies, and publications. That joint activities in education, research, network building, and uh, outreach. Development of new IT insights within the region and capacity development of new and existing country learning centers, IT insights, 
continue to share its knowledge, tools, and experiences. All of Penn State Learning Centers and Regional Centers of Excellence can apply for their membership in the network. Um, there are currently 18 founding members, including 15 learning centers in various countries and three regional centers of excellence. And um, some of the centers have been mentioned in earlier slides, so I will. The charter is still a work in progress, although Penn State has been working on the piece of document for several months now. Um, there's some issues to be resolved and discussed, ranging from definition issues, you know, the distinction between Penn State and Penn State excellence, some uh, eligibility, eligibility criteria roles and you know, administrative of the shutter, you know, involvement of non-member, non-GNLC members in the network and possible funding. So these issues will be discussed in the meeting of GNLC next week. There so will be refining some of this issue to best um, represent the vision and mission of Now I'd like to move on to the document. Uh, Dr. Wansook, yes. um, if may, if I may interrupt, this is okay. Karen. Uh, yes, um, may we request you to uh, increase your volume okay. for the microphone, yes? Okay, so Thank you, Dr. Wansook. Okay, is this loud enough? Yes. Okay, sorry. Okay, so um, this point, this issues will be um, discussed further in um, our meeting next week on August 3rd. So I, I'll now like to move on to the next slide, please. Um, next, we'll move on to PMC training and capacity development plan for the next five years. And this plan is uh, observed um, as the midterm blueprint on strengthening and the capacity of countries, partner countries, and achieving sustainable coastal development. It, it take, this, this plan has taken several considerations in its development, and I will summarize in two slides. Okay. First, um, sorry, uh, should I stay on the slide for a minute? Um, first, I'd like to highlight um, the importance of the, uh, approaching knowledge transfer and capacity building in an iterative manner. Sorry, I think the slide has. Gone faster than is, I can is, speak. Sorry, is this the right slide? No, could you go back a couple of slides? Sorry. Dr. Wansuk, if you could speak louder also, because uh, your voice is very faint. Okay. Thank you. Um, Okay, is that better? Yes. Okay, sorry. Um, so the, the uh, plan takes in, into consideration the iterative nature of knowledge transfer and capacity building as um, lessons can be learned, um, cultivated and revisited throughout the local application, um, information sharing, monitoring and evaluation where possible. Second point is um, the plan built on trainings and similar initiatives that PMC has initiated throughout its evolution um, ever since 
early days where it is a regional marine pollution project to present time of being instrumental coordinating me mechanism for um, ICM implementation on the ground. And we are pleased to um, present that it has benefited, you know, more than 7,000 beneficiaries as 20 um, year 2020 end. Um, next slide, please. The plan considers um, the 10 most pressing challenges for the coastal and marine sector um, development identified by the UN Decade of Ocean Science for the coastal and marine sector, and some of which include um, the need to um, institute behavioral change in improving mankind's relationship with the ocean across a sustainable development path, the need to digitize and innovate um, available technologies in monitoring the environment to ensure more um, responsive and agile approach to coastal and marine resource protection and community um, preparedness and resilience in times of disaster and climate change. Okay, um, and the next important point is the plan integrates into its core commitment to PEMC um, to implement the SDSC and relevant SDGs. And finally, the fifth point is that the plan considered the resources that PEMC has um, at its disposal, considering that we have now concluded four cycles of Jeff support, um, long running project that finance a major portion of uh, PRF's operation in the last 28 years. Okay, next slide, please. So there are five major outputs um, in this um, plan. And first include the, the build um, to build and strengthen intellectual capital and human resources in individual organizational and institutional levels. Um, this involves activities such as training courses, um, study tours, workshops, and on the jobs training. Um, okay, and there's some um, initiative that I already mentioned in, in previous slides. Um, for example, the IKI IMO Blue Solutions Initiatives. And the second output, could I have the next slide, please? Um, the second output is to provide access to data and information, technology and innovative investment mechanisms. Third um, is to share, okay, so this for the second point, um, I think the state of the coast reporting system is, is a good example and um, uh, for integrating and standardizing approach to monitoring and evaluation ICM programs um, as it involves participatory and scientific um, approaches. It needs to be adopted um, to, in more sites across the East Asia um, region. Third output uh, involves the sharing and exchanging knowledge among communities of, of practice. Critical to this, um, the online Seas of East Asia Knowledge Bank, which offers a collection of case studies, manuals, technical reports, um, and other resources among with opportunities for engaging and collaborating with peers and experts. The platform also has the capacity to enable local governments and other stakeholders to identify and develop projects that could attract investment. Fourth output is to develop research and promote um, policy dialogue. And we hope to, to release more targeted research projects and 
provide um, scientific data tools and methodologies and in the process improve the in institutional capacity of PMC partners, PNLC, PNLG, and other stakeholders to further scale up and mainstream the implementation of SDSC in the region. Um, next slide, please. And um, finally, the final output is to reinforce um, initiatives and synergies. Having all alliances and partnerships help avoid duplication of efforts and bring um, about economies of scale from pooled resources and synergy. Um, this brings us back to the PNLC as ICM learning centers and regional centers of excellence serve as PMC frontliner on the, um, on the ground in capacity building that is um, a strong impetus to formalize the network and pursue joint area of cooperation, not only within the uh, PNLC members, but also with other facets of PMC um, cycle of stakeholders, such as PNLG and non-country partners. So the PMT, PMC um, capacity building and development planning plan provides initial listing of areas of collaboration and partners which can consider in formulating um, the operational plan of the PNLC once formalized. So with that, I'll um, end my presentation for the next um, program on the agenda. Thank you. And I hope that we could discuss you know, more detail in the workout. Um, breakout session. Back to you, Karen. Thanks, Dr. Wanso. Thanks, Nancy, for sharing the findings and the proposals on moving forward for the region and PNLG. And also to Dr. Wanso, of course, for presenting the supporting initiatives for developing and executing the PEMC roadmap and the next SDSC implementation plan, especially on the part of PNLG. Um, it is indeed high time that we integrate the PNLG and PNLC more in PEMC-related activities beginning with this PC meeting. And for this, I am pleased to know that Dr. Wansok as the PNLC president and Dr. Fang as the deputy secretary general, the PNLG secretariat, are able to join us in this meeting and the breakout sessions later on. However, before we proceed with the instructions for the breakout sessions and the actual conduct of these sessions, uh, we shall be holding a 10-minute break from 10.37 to 10.45. Good morning, everyone. Again, this is Karen C., the Secretary Coordinator of the PEMC Resource Facility, the Secretariat for this meeting. We shall resume again with the technical session. Uh, may I call on Dr. O as the chair to proceed with the instructions for the breakout groups as well as the actions requested from our PC meeting. Uh, next slide, Rod. But uh, Karen, uh, before we proceed to breakout session, uh, I, I think we have to have questions, comments, and yes. suggestions from the floor regarding three presentations. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Over to you, Dr. O. Uh, we, I believe we have questions from the Philippines, from Undersecretary Te. Mm -hmm. Yes, Philippines, please. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Thank you so much to the PRF for the very uh, comprehensive presentation, on the midterm review, the roadmap, and the PNLC uh, direction. Uh, I think uh, the midterm review affirmed to us the correctness or the and the relevance of our strategy here in the partnership here at PMC, and that it was shown in the midterm review that. Uh, our approach has contributed significantly in terms of improving governance on ICM, especially in the in localizing ICM. And I think that is uh, very uh, critical if you really would like to have something moving on the ground. And I also would like to acknowledge the notable developments um, pointed out in the midterm review. Um, 
I would just like to point out the challenges uh, or raise the challenges that we are we need to uh, address as we move forward. First, is ter in terms of uh, the delays, uh, Nancy mentioned earlier that there are some delays that were incurred uh, for various reasons. So I think uh, the challenge now is how to uh, address those delays amid the pandemic. And if there are assistance needed by the countries, then uh, I hope that the PRF would be able to uh, uh, flag them so that we can uh, together um, mobilize resources and support so that we can address the delays and uh, make sure that we are on track in achieving our overall target for the SDSC. Second is, uh, as any uh, endeavor, the challenge is how do we sustain? Uh, we, we have shown that, uh, that, the, that, that there were really um, major milestones and uh, achievements you know, that we have done in the SDSC implementation. And the challenge now is how do we sustain and a uh, key element in sustaining is, of course, mainstreaming um, the principles, the strategies, the tools that we have developed under this, uh, uh, under this program in our country uh, and national or domestic uh, uh, ICM implementation or program on ocean and marine uh, environmental protection. And um, for us to be able to mainstream, it is important that we uh, ensure that we uh, include them in our national plans and programs. And uh, um, we, we need to, uh, and critical to this and central to this is the support to the PEMC resource facility. Uh, if we want like to uh, sustain our efforts, we have to support really the uh, PEMC resource facilities. So it's important that we continue our uh, commitment a technical and financial commitment to ensure that the PMC uh, evolve as a self-sustaining uh, mechanism for the region on uh, ocean management. Um, the third uh, challenge that I'd like to highlight is the need for spatial planning. Uh, we have uh, address or we have success. I mean, we have effectively identified the twenty percent target. But for us at this point, it is important already that we do some spatial planning, meaning uh, we really have to identify the specific areas where there, where we should really implement the ICM effectively. So uh, uh, on a national basis and on a regional basis, we should be able to identify the specific geographical areas where we can have some impact areas and uh, uh, implement the ICM. And then uh, moving forward, I would like also to acknowledge the development of the SDS 2030 or the roadmap. Um, maybe we, we just need in the in the breakout session, I, I think it will be more fleshed out, but we hope we can, uh, I hope that we can highlight the, the direction towards achieving or supporting blue economy. And uh, that means uh, highlighting climate resiliency uh, toward to address COVID uh, pandemic, and therefore uh, we we can look at the low carbon path, um, adopting sustainable I mean uh, circular economy, uh, addressing marine litter, uh, also pursuing sustainable consumption and production, and of course uh, green recovery. So uh, again, I'd like to uh, congratulate. Uh, PRF for doing this and of course the council also and if I may also acknowledge the chairman's report earlier for uh, the key developments uh, undertaken by the council by the PMC on the SDSC midterm implementation including the ICM effectiveness assessment also the various project uh, initiatives and uh, project preparations being undertaken and even the MOAS, uh, Memorandum of Agreements to Pursue SDSC that have been uh, initiated and also the, uh, of course, also with the government of Cambodia for pursuing the Congress preparation. So I'd like to uh, commend our chair, uh, overall council chair, and of course our technical session chair for 
uh, ensuring that we are uh, moving on this and um, move forward to our uh, roadmap. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Philippines. Uh, your comments are very encouraging, and I'm sure that PRF continue to provide full support to country partners and non-country partners as well. PRF, do you have any comments on Philippines' comment? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I will encourage also, thank you for the comments from the uh, Philippine delegation under Secretary Dev. We are very encouraged by her support and continued commitment as the host country also of the FEMC Resource Facility as Secretariat of uh, FEMC. We will continue to endeavor and help uh, countries uh, fulfill national and local uh, commitments to our international uh, agreements as well as uh, ensure that we foster coherence and, uh, and cooperation at the regional level. I mean, I would not go into details. I think we have a, a full agenda at hand and we have two days to discuss this also. We'd like to hear from others uh, rather than the secretary. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Gonzalez. Are there any further comments, questions, suggestions? from the floor. All right, are there any? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, seeing mm -hmm. that there are no comments, perhaps we can proceed with the list of actions requested from the PC meeting on this agenda item and then also the instructions for the breakout sessions and the grouping assignments. Okay, so if there is no, no more, let's proceed to the breakout session. So can I have the PowerPoint, please? Uh, for the breakout session, uh, I have informed that we have four groups and each group has one facilitator, two documenters, one repertoire and participants. Uh, group one is headed by Dr. Keita Furukawa, group two, Madam Amy Gonzalez, group three, Dr. Nancy Burmas, group four, Mr. Kondoko Adi Susanto. So there are four guide questions. Prioritization strategy, coverage and scope of governance and management programs, timeline to 2030. Then the last one is technical working group. Uh, let's move to instructions for the breakout groups. In the form of breakout groups, review and discuss the PEMC roadmap to 2030, focusing on the relevance and timelines of the proposed priority activities identified in table nine and table 10 of document PC slash 13 slash doc slash 04 which was presented by Dr. Nancy before, taking into consideration the regional or country specific, non-country partner specific context, priorities, goals, targets, and perceived challenges in implementing the priority activity. So the four guide question, A, overall prioritization strategy grow, hold, and harvest. Number one, do you find the strategy appropriate and adequate in prioritizing the activities to be undertaken until 2030? Is the prioritization process able to reflect the strategic goals of the SDS SCA as well as the capacity of PRF and country partners non-country partners 
to achieve those threat targeted SDS SCA outcomes. Question B, governance and management programs. Number one, are the private activities identified under the governance and management programs adequate and responsive to the needs of the region, countries, local communities, PNLG, PNLC, and PLF? Number two, are the programs able to capture the priorities of country partners and non-country partners in strengthening ocean and coastal governance and effective implementation of the SDS, SCA management programs? Global plans of action for sustainable development in the next decade and blue green recovery measures in response to the COVID-19 pandemic if not, please provide details of SDS, SA related plans, programs, and projects that the country partners and non country partners are implementing in the next decade that can be included in the roadmap. See, timeline number one does the proposed timeline for the roadmap match the timeline of the priority programs and project, projects? for sustainable development and blue green recovery measures of country partners and non-country partners? If not, in relation to B number two, please provide additional information on project, program, duration, timeline, if available. D, support to the technical working group. A technical working group will be established to lead the development of the SDSSA implementation plan 2023 to 2027 in alignment with the PEMC roadmap to 2030 to be presented at the 28th ISH meeting. Number two, the core team will comprise of the technical session chair and co-chair as overall lead and advisors with PRF providing the necessary technical and secretariat support. Uh, the instructions for the breakout groups, as I mentioned, there are four groups and I think provide uh, uh, PRF provide how how we proceed breakout sessions. Karen, please. Thank you, Doctor O. So again, uh, may we present here the group assignments. So as uh, initially relayed by Mr. Chair here, we have four groups, uh, and these are the facilitators, documenters, rapporteurs and the Zoom IT support and the participants. For group one, uh, this will compose of participants from MSE Singapore, MOF RO Korea, MLIT Japan, MMNR China. Then for group two, we have here all um, non-country partners, specifically ACB, MX, COEM, NOPAP, OPRI, SPF, and OSRL. And also uh, Mr. Kim, as a second, seconded staff from MOF RO Korea who is working in the PRF currently. Then we have here group three, composed of delegates from MOE Cambodia, MOEF Indonesia, BWR Lao PDR, DNR Philippines, MAF Timor-Leste, and VASI from Vietnam. Then for group four, we have participants coming in from the PNLG Secretariat, PNLC or Dr. Wansok, uh, then AXI2 project team, and then uh, the province of Priyasihanok from Cambodia. As you can see here, um, groups one and three are composed of all country partners. We have uh, divided the participants according to country similarities. And then we have group four uh, composed of uh, supporting networks of the uh, PEMC and also project partners and other guests. And then for group two, again, we have all non-country partners. Again, we have here the facilitators who will lead the discussions and also the documenters who shall make notes uh, to be presented later on by the rapporteurs. Uh, next slide, please, Rod. Anans, okay. Um, here are the specific instructions in terms of logistical concerns. So first of all, uh, secretary shall assist participants in transferring to their assigned groups. And then EC members, with the exception of the technical session co-chair, are free to roam around the groups to observe and participate as they wish. 
Groups shall be given until 1.30 p.m. Manila time for the breakout sessions, although, of course, we'll be having a one-hour lunch break at 12 p.m. to 1. Then, uh, once we are over with the breakout sessions at 1.30 p.m., we will have then the plenary. Groups shall be given 10 minutes each for their presentation. Once we are done with all presentations, open forum shall proceed. And then, uh, just a note, we will be applying Chatham House rules. Uh, to ensure active engagement of the members. And then for Zoom-related concerns during the breakout, kindly approach your respective documenters and do not leave the Zoom platform during lunch break. Uh, that will be all from my part, Mr. Chair. Uh, if I may request the PR, uh, the rest of the Secretariat team to begin transferring the participants to their respective breakout sessions so we can begin shortly. Thank you. Okay, so the let's start the breakout session in, in our hand. And uh, so let me introduce myself first. This is Keita Furukawa, the co-chair for the technical session of the PMC. And uh, basically I'm belongs to the non-country partners before that is uh, uh, Ocean Policy Research Institute under the uh, Sasakawa Peace Foundation. And uh, today, I'd like to moderate the discussion between the uh, core, a kind of core uh, country partners for the PMC. And we are uh, trying to formulate our uh, input to the uh, session regarding to the, how the roadmap can be brushed out, brushed up, I mean. And uh, the discussion result will be reported by the reporter. And uh, uh, are there any candidates uh, for the reporter at the moment? If not, I'd like to ask uh, Ms. Uh, Daisy Padaya for our reporter at the moment. If you wanted to make presentation by yourself, uh, please don't hesitate to ask me to do so. Uh, anyway, the Daisy will uh, record our uh, discussion and making a, a, a kind of the presentation as you see in, in front uh, in the, our uh, uh, screen and making five minutes, 10 minutes uh, presentation for the session. Uh, and as I as mentioned by the secretary before uh, we break out, the Chatham House rule will be applied. That is, uh, we are not mentioned that uh, uh, or attributed the our discussion result as connected to the individual uh, speakers. So take free atmosphere to say in more freedom. Uh, uh, opinion for or, or straightforward opinion to uh, brush up this uh, roadmap. Okay, so just I wanted to ask that everyone if if possible, ju just asking, just uh, in your uh, voluntary basis, if possible, please turn on the your. Uh, uh, video. If the uh, network uh, road is not too much for us, we can see each other and uh, just talking more uh, good atmosphere. So please turn on your video if you like. And I'd like to ask the uh, just brief self introduction for yourself, just name and the affiliation and uh, countries uh, first. This is a kind of a check, checking for the everyone can speak to the <laughs> within this breakout session to not to miss your uh, voice to uh, reflect to the discussion. So in my uh, participation list here, uh, yeah, uh, can I ask Tom, Tony? 
uh, for saying something for say hello to the uh, uh, group. You through mute it. No voice. Yeah, because uh, Tony will uh, assist for or, or this discussion group. Unfortunately, I, I can't hear uh, his voice at the moment. So uh, let's turn on to the Chinese group, uh, China, MNR. I see the four members from uh, MNR. Uh, would you please start self-introduction by yourself? Yuma. Hello, good morning, everyone. I'm from China, Ministry of Natural Resources. I'm very glad to attend the breakout session. Okay, that's my introduction. Yep, thank you. Good, good. <laughs> okay, <laughs> please go next. Uh, hello. Hello. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Su Qiang. I'm from uh, the uh, China Pemp Center and the Ministry of Natural Resources. Very glad to see you here and uh, to discuss of all our uh, the the roadmap. Yes, thank you. Thank you. And wait, wait. <laughs> maybe. Hi, everybody. Here is Zhu Xiaotong, also from the China Pemp Center. It's really great to see everybody and and uh, today's breakout session. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And last from China, please. I muted. Uh, uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> Please go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I'm Wei Liu, and I'm also from China um, CPC. It's very not nice to meet everybody here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So next time for Japan, Mr. Uh, Hash hmm? Hi oh. Hiroshima. Yes, please. Yes, uh, thank you, Dr. Furukawa. Uh, my name is Nobuhiro Hiroshima from uh, MLIT of Japan. Uh, I'm glad to see you uh, all. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Mr. Kobayashi. Hello, I'm Kensa Kobayashi from MLIT of Japan. Thank you. Thank you. So, thanks for uh, Aro Kolia. Please. Hello, this is Subin Shin from Ministry of Oceans and Fisheries of Republic of Korea. And nice to meet you all and hope this breakout session would go fruitful. Thank you. Great, thanks. So the finally the not least, but from Singapore, please. Hi, uh, good morning. I'm Valerie from the Ministry of Sustainability and Environment. Glad to join everyone today at the PC meeting and the breakout session. Thank you. Okay. Do I miss somebody? No? If you want to, to take a floor, uh, just turn on your mic and say something. <laughs> or you can raise your hand in the function of the Zoom if you like. Okay. So let's start uh, the first question. So we have to answer to the four question for, uh, within the breakout uh, session. So as you see, the firstly we like to see the our strategy 
the for the roadmap to, to 2030 is appropriate and adequate. So oh, just in case, just recap the what strategy we have is uh, describing the next slide, two slides. The second, yes, please, thank you. We have a, uh, four principles. And finally, the in the fourth principles, we tried adopting the prioritization framework, grow, hold, and harvest. First of all, uh, do you have any question or clarification needed for these three e e items for as a, our strategies? If not, please uh, come back to the uh, questions, right? Yes, thank you. So let me start thinking the glow, hold, harvest, is a appropriate and adequate or not. <laughs> so or try to think yourself to, or is it all the covers, all these three strategy can cover your uh, intention to uh, do the, uh, some action under the, this roadmap. In my just general view, the glow, it means that uh, we try to scaling up already exist and hold is trying to uh, uh, you know prolong or uh, taking the sustainable sustain taking the sustainability uh, for the action and harvest is dissemination for the uh, partners but uh, how do you think about the uh, new development or new challenges. These are already uh, there, but as uh, our situation under the pandemic, the uncertainty or uh, very uh, drastic change can be happening in the future. Do we need another uh, uh, strategy to uh, cooperate incorporate with uh, such a kind of uh, additional action or not. Just for the discussion, I was just asking you to, if you need to thinking about the developing development or challenge is strategy for or thinking about the uh, adaptation of our uh, roadmap. Do you have any thought? Or if you like, you can say some uh, any other things related to these strategies. No, nothing. If not, we can just stick, sticking out this strategy is good enough at the moment. Just three, grow and hold and harvest. Do you agree? China? Uh, yes, we agree, totally agree. Okay, <laughs> good. <laughs> Japan? <laughs> Just checking your. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, Jama has no comments, so uh, we can yeah. basically agree this uh, table. Thank you. Okay, thanks. And uh, Aro Korea? I agree with this strategy, but one thing I have curious about is the word hold. I think the uh, word. I think this word give us negative tone. I'm not sure mm -hmm. I'm not a native speaker in English, but I think that word give us negative tone. I see. Okay, so the uh, as our group, I we, we can say that the uh, 
reconsider the uh, terminology for the hold to making the expression more uh, uh, positive, I think. Okay, thank you for your uh, comment and uh, Singapore. I don't have any further comments at this time. We agree with uh, Korea that whole sounds a bit negative. Sure. Okay, thank you. Okay, so basically we agree with uh, these strategies and try to uh, asking the uh, session or, or the council to reconsider the terminology for the hold to make or capture our uh, more positive uh, action for the roadmap, as a roadmap, okay? So let's go second. Uh, we are uh, very close to the uh, things. So this part is very uh, intensive part. So we have a, a massive uh, table uh, given by the secretariat. That is a uh, table number nine. And if we look through the three programs here and another three is coming out to the next slide. You, this is all already given to your uh, reference material. So uh, just uh, refer to the reference materials if you need it. And so let's try to see he, this is good enough for or capture our uh, future activities and expected activities for the PEMC. Firstly, he, we will check the six programs are slightly he, changed after the uh, our SDSC pre pre previous or uh, present uh, SDSC implementation plan. Uh, in previously, we have uh, climate change uh, and disaster risk reduction uh, programs. But now that is dropped out from our uh, tables in table nine, I, I mean, and the new development uh, column is coming through. So this change, having some problems or uh, some uh, good point or worst point or for or your uh, respective uh, countries action or not. This is my observation, but uh, you, you don't need to seek out this uh, point, but the biggest change from the previous SDS implementation plan, we see this, this kind of big change. So uh, I'd like to hear if you have some uh, ideas or comment on this too, I mean. How do you think? Um, so this time, can I ask Japan first? I just changing the order, if if you like. Thank you, Dr. Furukawa. Uh, unfortunately, I'm, I don't have any comment at this okay. point. Uh, thank you. Or if you like, uh, do you have any related uh, action plan or uh, project or uh, uh, to the uh, this uh, action uh, pro related to this proposal? For example, the uh, some political. Uh, wheels or some new uh, assignment of the uh, law or enforcement of the strategies? Uh, for example, 
uh, we were in charge of uh, uh, addressing the uh, Marinita, uh, mm -hmm. which was uh, 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 from SIP. So uh, I would like to uh, contribute to the, uh, some work uh, at the IMO or uh, some kind of uh, global uh, 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 global uh, matters. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that. Okay, so if nothing from Japan, so Aru Korea, do you have any additional comment or your thought onto the uh, programs? Um, as the climate change issue is very pending issues these days, so I think that mm -hmm. change would change would be great. Mm. Thank you. Are there any uh, specific uh, action related to the climate change in Arukolia? Of course, during the uh, some another uh, presentation, especially uh, ocean round tables, uh, you are uh, presenting many many specific items a lot. But if you have any example, for example, example for or. Or appealing this kind of uh, 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 suggestion, I'd like to hear some something from your uh, side. No, we are trying to achieve carbon neutrality in mm -hmm. ocean session. Mm -hmm. um, for example, for uh, enlargement of the tidal flat mm -hmm. and uh, enlargement with blue carbon. I see. Right. Okay. Thank you. So Singapore. Uh, Singapore thinks that the PEMC and the roadmap should continue to focus on its niche of integrated coastal management, where most of PEMC's expertise lie. With regard to addressing marine litter, Singapore thinks that PEMC should be mindful not to replicate efforts on other platforms such as COPC, which sees a significant overlap in participating countries with PEMC. Mm -hmm. I see. Thank you for the important point. Yeah, sometimes we need to make a good collaboration and the information exchange between the other uh, organizations, especially the uh, regional organizations. So uh, thank you for that. And China, do you have any additional comment or your thought? Um, I uh, we don't have further comments on the uh, priorities and uh, mm. for, uh, concerning the uh, related action and the programs uh, China have done. I think I can make a very brief introduction um, uh, related to to these uh, uh, um, program or activities. Uh, since uh, now China has um, um, uh, done a lot of work on the blue, blue carbon uh, mm -hmm. research. And mm -hmm. uh, also we, we do the uh, marine ecosystem uh, protection and the restoration. And we uh, conduct the uh, cooperation with uh, IUCN and mm -hmm. try to, um, how to see, uh, try to use the uh, concept of uh, uh, NBS, nature-based solution uh, mm -hmm. to, uh, to come uh, to try to com combine combine this concept and to our uh, domestic concept like uh, um, ecosystem uh, civilization, uh, yeah, to to realize the goal of uh, re uh, the the goal of um, ecosystem civilization, and uh, we have uh, published uh, the 
best uh, ten best uh, practice uh, practices and cases mm. on uh, NBS uh, management. Uh, try to enlarge the uh, utilization of this concept, and also we um, develop the uh, renewable energy relate, related to ocean, and such as the um, tidal tidal energy and uh, like uh, current maybe current mm, energy. Right. Think, yeah, and so on. I think that's all. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the very detailed information. Yes, really encouraged with uh, such a kind of movement is happening in the region. So uh, just look through some. Uh, Dr. Keita, if sure. I may clarify or ask. Yes, please. Okay. Um, going back actually to um, our old Korea's comment that climate change is a uh, uh, still a priority issue. Um, do you wish to actually suggest that we consider this as one uh, priority program or uh, just leave the current priority programs identified now? Yes. Uh, okay, thank you, Clarif thank you for the clarification. And uh, I think this roadmap uh, 2030 is now developing, and uh, uh, this discussion is not making the final documentation. So uh, the purpose of our discussion here is not miss the important things during the uh, next revelation. Maybe that is a final uh, question questionaries related to the final questionnaires, uh, if we need it for the task, uh, technical working group on this or not. So that I'm, in, in my view, uh, we are not proposing to the changing the text at the moment, but just pointed out the importance of, of the uh, climate change. It should be uh, captured in some, uh, uh, some uh, uh, style or uh, and already he mentioned by the each respective uh, countries the for example the blue carbon uh, actions or blue car uh, renewable energy exercises is ongoing so the the importance and uh, related uh, programs is already ongoing in the respective uh, countries is a, a kind of uh, information we pass through to the uh, session. Yes, from China? Yes, yeah. uh, take. Uh, sorry for intervention uh, for no, no. the, uh, yeah, for the uh, SDS, SEA uh, priorities to 2030. I forgot to mention that we do have some uh, suggestions on the uh, priorities. Uh, my colleague just uh, uh, tell me that we have some um, uh, amendment. And uh, for the, the, the third one, information, uh, knowledge management and capacity building, uh, we uh, suggest to add uh, in the hold hold volume, we suggested to add something like continue training programs uh, with the participants from CPs, NCPs, and all stakeholders. That's one suggestion. Right. Yes, and uh, um, for the programs, we uh, suggested to add another one, uh, like uh, climate change. Uh, a climate change adaptation and a disaster mm. risk reduction and management, since that's mm. our uh, it should be the um, priorities. And sure. for yeah, for for the growth volume, maybe we can add something like uh, utilizing um, bilateral and multilateral sources of funding and the technology support, uh, improving the capacity to adapt. To climate change and the response to respond to disasters. That's one. And the grow two is um, promoting regional exchanges and cooperation, and uh, exploring ways and means to reduce the 
vulnerability of coastal communities. Uh, for hold uh, volume, we suggest to uh, add, uh, like, uh, continue the regulation and the reduction of carbon emission from ocean related transport and port activities. Mm -hmm. That's all. Okay, okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you for the very specific uh, suggestions. In, in this input, with this input, I think it is good enough for uh, suggesting the session to uh, consideration on the inclusion of the climate change adaptation and disaster risk reduction management to the uh, our new strategies. Maybe we, we don't need to make a tablet, tablet size, but the we already have the some kind of basic uh, such line for what is can be, be included in glow and hold session. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank. You. Do do we have any uh, additional comment on this from uh, this group? Please don't hesitate to turn on your mic microphone. Okay. Okay. Anyhow, after the break, we just re re revisit the, all the uh, items. And if you have any another uh, additional thought, please don't hesitate to, to, to say at the time. Okay, so in the third question, shall we move? Yeah. Okay, for the timelines. This is very complicated tables we have, the table 10. As you see, the three successive tables is already prepared. And uh, they uh, presented here. But if the uh, previous table changed, all the uh, detail or information should be revisited or uh, reissued uh, accordingly. So uh, at this point, if you have any specific question or suggestion, we would like to take that one. But if not, uh, we're just making a general discussion for this table, not, not for in detail. This is my uh, uh, suggestion for the uh, group. Just saying, the, do we need some organization of the listed items? Now that we have just plain list of the all the uh, items, but actually we have six uh, categories of the uh, programs and we have uh, attributed uh, pro uh, action related to the glow, hold and uh, harvest. But some, something, some uh, organization is needed to uh, class classify the, uh, these items, or you like to have this kind of plain list as a uh, uh, timetable? That is a uh, first question to you. And sometimes the, the load map shows that there's some uh, point only the one year for that uh, project. It's something curious for me. If we're taking the hold option or glow strategies, we can identify the when it will be start, but it is very difficult to say when it will be end. Or does it mean that the if we put the, some marks on the column and remaining part is le leaving as a white. Uh, does it mean that we giving up that project after the <laughs> year or not? Some, something very uh, cu curious and feels stranger, strange on, on that by my perspective. So the, are there any, any suggestions to show the uh, time roadmap with uh, this kind of 
tables. And sadly, he, again, uh, as I stated at first, oh, okay, we, we have a <laughs> rising hand. <laughs> so please. Okay, thank you. Um, actually, we do have a detailed uh, suggestion. Okay. Um, for the, uh, how to see, it's, it's actually it's number 12 um, program or, or like something like that. The uh, re regionalization, uh, okay. regionalize ICM certification and the PSHEM into a shepherd mm -hmm. product offering. So um, my, uh, my colleagues uh, suggest that um, maybe we can achieve the target of ICM code earlier, such as uh, like 2023, uh, because um, we also have a lot of progress. Uh, mm. concerning the ICM code certification. Maybe we can uh, advance the, the, the time into, now it's 2024, maybe we can change to 2023. That's my suggestion. Okay, thank you. In that case, the, the ICM code uh, try to harvest in uh, 2023 and how about the rest of the time? Is it leave the blank or maybe that is one of the uh, case that uh, China makes the, such a progress in advance, but uh, how about the other uh, nations to catch up with uh, such a kind of activities? I, I'm not uh, opposing to move the uh, one block first, but uh, do we have leave the remaining block, the conti continuous uh, years to reserve for all the other countries? Or we, we just say, we try to targeting to only for the 23. Do you, do you catch my question? Uh, maybe my colleague is more familiar with the ICM. Okay. <laughs> so, Shou Tiang, can you speak? Can you explain? Uh, hi. Uh, for the ICM uh, certification, the uh, uh, PMC uh, has started this uh, work before, I think it's uh, 2014. Uh, and we joined this uh, kind of work and uh, we uh, do some certification work in China. And now we have five uh, demo sites to get the certification. So uh, we have, now we have, uh, mm, uh, we have the, the, uh, the guidebook for the uh, ATM code. I think this, uh, this work uh, can be uh, th this time can be uh, earlier before the two, uh, 20, uh, 2024, maybe 20, uh, tw 20, uh, 22 or 2023. Uh, I think it's uh, possible. Okay. So the, there is a uh, one country can be achieved that uh, item before the. Uh, 24, I mean, yeah. But uh, I understand the situation and uh, still uh, I'm thinking how we can cope with the uh, case of the other nations. You know, the, if the, some other nation is targeting to the, Mm -hmm. getting the ICM certification within the 24 or even 25 or successive years. How, one, one of the questions for me, of course, the earliest the, in China case, you can, uh, you can target into the 23. And I fully agree with the indicating such a kind of uh, uh, ambitions in, within the table. But if we try yeah. to thinking about the follow-up <laughs> countries, do we need to make uh, another blue marks for the continuous uh, years or just leaving the white? Uh, 
which one is more understandable for the other uh, countries? Uh, yes, I totally agree with you. Maybe uh, Shou Qiang just mentioned the situation in China. So maybe other countries um, cannot realize they uh, the, uh, got the harvest uh, before 2024, maybe uh, a little bit longer time. So, okay, yeah, yeah. We can receive. <laughs> okay. okay, thank you. Okay, thank you for your uh, suggestion and the, your opinion. Do you have any other thought from other countries? Singapore? <laughs> I just randomly called. <laughs> if you not, just, just skip or if you like, please say something. How about Arocolia? Japan. Okay, let, let me take like this. We have a, a, some one specific uh, suggestion that uh, uh, the, if the country having the more ambitious uh, action, we can shift the uh, timelines block ahead like a ICM certification. Specifically, I see certification to to the 2023, and we are thinking this marks is just showing the uh, timing. The who can start the uh, project or action in advance, but we have to thinking about the some delay or not not delay the the different time. Uh, brands for the other countries. So the, we're just proposing that the successive column is also uh, marked up for any, uh, for, for, for some uh, colors. Maybe that is not fully the same as uh, uh, blue, but uh, just showing the uh, preference of the uh, or accommodate the uh, uh, each individual country's uh, roadmap. Okay. So, Jana, do you still wanted to have a floor? Your hand is rising. No. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Sorry. Any. Any. Any time. Take. Take your hand. Okay. <laughs> so, oh, let's try to uh, come to the final question. As we see, uh, only this uh, short break, uh, breakout room discussion. We we saw that there's some different. Uh, uh, project and action is ongoing at the in the different countries, and uh, such a kind of uh, action should be incorporated with the, our new uh, SDC implementation plan 2023 and roadmap to 2030. So the PRF is proposing to. Uh, formalize the uh, technical working group for making the uh, more deep discussion and the alignment uh, between the implementation plan and uh, roadmap. So we would like to ask your uh, flavor for if the technical this kind of technical working group is needed or not, and if yes, please identify what kind of style the membership of the technical working group or governance of the technical uh, working group is preferable, preferable for or, or you, or if you don't want the technical working group for or specific uh, issue here, uh, which kind of discussion is uh, uh, recommend, recommended. For example, the 
the more uh, PC meeting <laughs> for the, uh, this specific, specific uh, uh, action. The, ju just one example. So anyway, uh, I'd like to uh, pass the microphone one by one again, if you're not raising your hands. This time, start from Aro Korea or China. <laughs> you, you turn on the mic. Um, I, I'm, I'm just uh, prepared. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Then, not actually. Uh, yeah. Okay, right. if you uh, want me to say something, okay. I can take the order at uh, the first one. Um, okay, yes, please. Yeah, we, we uh, agreed to set up a technical working group to mm -hmm. lead the development of the uh, implementation uh, plan from mm -hmm. 2023 to 2027. And uh, yeah, and that's uh, our position. Sure. But for the composition and how to up, uh, how to um, the, the operation of the um, of the working group, we do uh, we we do not have very specific idea or suggestion. Mm. Yeah, and I'm I'm not so uh, clear um, the. Um, the participants of the working group is um, from the um, PC or from the country partner or from um, including um, related stakeholders. So mm -hmm. I'm not so clear about it mm -hmm. and how mm -hmm. the size, the size of the working group. Right. Yeah, I'd like to hear from the floor. Sure. That is one of the things we can have the uh suggestion for the uh, session how 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 big the technical working should be or if we include the non-country partners for this discussion or not just just uh, say freely to your uh, uh flavors or preferences so Ado Collier, do you have any, any preference for the technical working group of course you 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 can uh say agree or disagree for the <laughs> technical working group first. I also agree with that off and as a key of technical working group, mm -hmm. I think it would be great if we got more detailed information like mm. operational regulations or the whether mm -hmm. the technical working group mm. uh, like uh meeting would be held or not yeah uh right so the only uh, we have the information that this technical working group try to prepare the uh, output toward to the the 28th EC meeting. It means we only having the three or four months. Daisy, is it true? The um, do you, do you remember the when the twenty eighth EC meeting will be held? The EC meeting, Doctor Forokawa, is in March twenty twenty. Twenty twenty March. Uh, excuse me. I. But there's a meeting in October. Sorry, sorry. It's October. There's a meeting in October. It's in October? Yeah. Okay. But the PEMSI roadmap, let me see again the presentation. Uh, sorry, let me check first. Yes, please. This is very important. So yeah. if we have how long the technical working group can be have, that is the basic for uh, our thought and try to think how many times we can meet or what kind of, uh, how many people can be meet within that time frame. So. Okay, let me see, where's the timeline?
Uh, this is the PNLG. Uh, okay, here. Uh, okay, so the draft implementation plan will be presented in the 28th EC in March 2022. Mm -hmm. March 2020. Okay, so... So we have... Uh, July, almost uh, eight right. months. Okay. To go. And usually, if the uh, PMC establishing the technical working group, always they call for the attendee, the voluntary attendee for the technical working group for the country partners and also to the non country yeah. partners. That is uh, our uh, experience. So basically, we, we thought this style uh, can be happen in this time again and try to think if we wanted to uh, enhance the uh, invitation or we try to restrict the invitation for the country partners only, for example, just, just for example. And uh, Usually technical working group, uh, the size of the technical group is about uh, 10 members, 15 members, less than 20. Uh, that was uh, happening. So if you think this is too small or too big, uh, please state uh, your opinion if you like. So, in the order of the list here, can I ask uh, Singapore to uh, have your? Uh, Singapore is in principle agreeable to setting up a technical working group. Sure. However, um, we have to agree that with countries that we have to review the TOR for such a working group. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have some concerns with the timeline. And uh, also of the view that we should be mindful of the level of participation in terms of frequency and the burden mm. on countries in the context of resource requirements to attend mm. the meetings, given that uh, we also have quite a crowded calendar already. Sure. Okay, thank you. That's fine. Meetings frequency and so on. So, Japan, do you, do you have any thought in this stage? Thank you, Dr. Furukawa. Uh, Japan is uh, generally agreed to the establishing the technical working group, but uh, it's difficult to uh, say about the, how to proceed with the technical working group because uh, it's not uh, unclear the agenda, so mm. uh, it uh, should be uh, depend on mm. detailed agenda. Thank you. Right. Thank you. The floor or this group, the intention is basically ugly, but we need a more uh, precise TOR prepared for uh, more de deep consideration on the uh, technical working group. This is a highlight of the discussion and uh, message conveyed to the session back. After. And yeah. hmm. right. Okay, just in time, but the, uh, if you have any uh, additional comment on this, uh, please provide uh, the after the break and. Especially uh, some countries concerning about the uh, limitation of the resources, so that not so many 
times we can meet together and uh, the number of the participants can be restricted. But it is not preferable to uh, establish a TWD with a, only two persons or <laughs> three three members of the our uh, partners. Maybe it is more than uh, five or six or something. Such a kind of a kind of standard uh, is there, could be there. So, if you have some specific uh, recommendation for the PRF or sessions to consideration on the uh, specification of the TOR, please uh, make additional comment after the break. Okay, thank you. So, Daisy, we will make uh, some refinement of the presentation afterward. And we will ask to the other members to be taking your uh, lunch break and yes. meet me together on the uh, one hour later. From now on, the uh, 13 o'clock, 1 p.m. in Manila time. Is it okay? Yes, Dr. Furukawa, I will work on the PowerPoint and then um, I think we can discuss it when we group again uh, yeah. before the, before, I, I think before one or something. Sure. I can try to, I will remove the other slides and just the highlights for the discussion. Okay. Really, really. okay. Thank you for that. So thank you for participating in this breakout room and uh, thank you for your uh, active participation. And I enjoyed to hear the voice from the, all of you and uh, see you soon after one hour uh, break. Okay, see you. Thank you see everyone. You then. <laughs> thank you. See you, see you later. <laughs> see you later. Thank you. See you later. Thank you. Thank you. So good morning, everyone. So I'm chairing this session. Kate will help document, but she's actually more than documenter. She will also uh, help facilitate this session. And uh, Masanori San from OPRI is going to uh, report on our progress. So since we're a small group, I think it would be good if everybody introduces uh, themselves. Um, we start with OPRI, Mas uh, Masasan. Yes, uh, thank you. And uh, I'm Masanori Kobayashi, Senior Research Fellow of the Ocean Policy Research Institute of the Sasaka Peace Foundation based in Tokyo, Japan. I've been associated with uh, PEMC activities for the last uh, four or five years, and I'm very pleased to be part of this uh, uh, working group. Thank you. All right. Uh, go to Atsushi, also from OPRI. Hi. Yeah, good morning. I'm a colleague of uh, Masanori, and uh, I'm at Shibatanabe from uh, OPRI, SPF. Thank you. Happy to participate in this group. OK, and Ipika? You're on mute. Yeah, apologies for that. Yeah, good morning. Can everyone hear me? Yes, OK. Right. Uh, OK, yes? so I'm, I'm naming. Uh, I'm actually the project manager for the global initiative uh, for Southeast Asia project. Uh, so it is a joint project between IPCA and the uh, International Maritime Organization. Um, so today I'm representing IPCA, uh, but mm -hmm. specifically my remit is more on the oil spill preparedness aspect. Yeah. Yeah. And you're based in Singapore, no? Yes, I'm based in Singapore. So. All right. Okay. And James is here also, active partner. <laughs> Morning, everyone. Can you ever hear me? Yes, yes. yes. Very loud here. My name is James Tan from OSP Response Limited. Um, I am the industry engagement lead uh, representing OSRO in this region. So very happy to uh, work with uh, the pet, many talents now here in this discussion. Um, I am based in Singapore as well. Pleased to meet everyone of you. Right. And we have ACB. Good morning, everyone. Thanks to PMC for inviting uh, ACB. I'm Marlin from, uh, I'm part of the Coastal and Marine Ecosystem team. Yeah. Thank you. So ACB is a science center for biodiversity. Is Cloud with us or is she multitasking? Uh, hi, Cloud. <laughs> we are all multitasking now. <laughs> uh, you're on mute, Cloud. 
Cloud, you're Yes. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Claudia Binondo. I'm also with the same team as uh, Marlene uh, from the SIN Center for Biodiversity. Okay. And from PEMC, we have uh, Mr. Kim. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Wonder Kim. I was seconded from the Ministry of Oceans and Fisheries in South Korea. Okay. Nice, nice to be with you. <clears throat> All right. And Greta? Um, hi, everyone. I'm Greta, uh, which is, uh, who is the intern in PRF, and I'm from Malaysia. Nice to meet you all, and good morning. Yeah, and of course, you know Kate? Yes, good morning. Uh, it's really uh, nice to see again uh, all the friends and old faces. So I'm uh, working now as a consultant of PEMC, and I'll be providing support for this group to document the highlights of discussion. Thank you. Back to you, AG. Yeah, before we start, can we get everyone on video so we can take a photo? Uh, and Greta, do you know how to take a photo from your from your computer? Uh, yes. Okay, all right. Okay. So one, two, three. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. All right, okay. So this is group two. And we are all non-country partners. And you have heard um, Nancy's lengthy presentation. I apologize for that. Well, I should not apologize because I think it gives uh, a good background of where we are in terms of the implementation of the SDSC from the beginning uh, and uh, also towards the roadmap of PMC 2030. So I hope you bear with us with that very long presentation. Because also, you know, the last meeting we had was in March 2023 when we were still finalizing that. So, and in between, you know, it's difficult to, to, to meet every, well, actually now it's, it's better because we're meeting almost uh, thrice a year because of this expanded EC. But last year, you, we, we, uh, previous years, we meet only once, once a year. So it's difficult to keep track of the, of the uh, developments and progress. So, uh, so that's why we had a very lengthy presentation because we're also at the crossroads now. We you know we finished four cycle of the global environment facility uh, support and UNDP support. So we have uh, we are on the cusp of full transformation into a regional governance mechanism. So this is uh, so this uh, has several meanings. One is you know. The grant is over, so we need to actually find some other mixed funding sources and also then develop a, a program, uh, a regional strategy. So, and then also with the start of this new decade, there are new opportunities and there are also some challenges and some uh, that we need to, to, to overcome like the global health pandemic and other ways and means of working together as well. Now we have this virtual way of working and how, how long this will be, we don't know. Uh, next year, it seems like there could be some limited travel, but still the norm would be hybrid. So, so there are so many uh, different uh, new developments in terms of start of developing a new strategy, opportunity to really look and review, reset our work to ensure that we will fulfill the commitments that we have and other international agreements. Uh, also, we have the biodiversity conservation framework post 2020 that it's also uh, being developed. The UN science, the pandemic, and the post pandemic. So there's a lot of these opportunities and challenges that uh, we need to capture and capitalize and work with. And, and so this is uh, why we are doing the PEMC roadmap to 2030. So lots of internal, external as well as probably also even in your own organizations, you are under, undertaking the same. So this is a, a sharing session under Chatham House Rules, so feel free. And we have some guide questions uh, that we could answer. How we can work together, what is in your plans? You know, are there some uh, agreements or areas that we should closely link with each other? Um, so. For example, with the ASEAN Center for Biodiversity, we have a joint fundraising initiative with them. Fingers crossed. Um, 
uh, we, it's still in the concept stage, but it should be submitted this year so we could work closely together. And uh, with OSRL, we have some training uh, workshop that's ongoing. Uh, OPRI, we tried one workshop, but probably we could do some more. Uh, uh, Norisan. IPICA, I think, dovetails with uh, OSRL. There are, and we could do more, or that would be great. Yes, I'll be sharing the slides now. Mm -hmm. Is it up? Okay. Yeah. So AG has already um, basically provided an introduction of the importance of this uh, discussion. And again, we would like to encourage you. This is an open discussion and it's an informal one. So we hopefully that would help uh, further uh, bring in more thoughts into the pro proposed uh, roadmap as well as the outline for the SDS SCA implementation plan and presentations made earlier. So again, uh, our focus for this uh, group discussion is if the proposed uh, documents are relevant and timely, as, especially vis-a-vis uh, -vis your specific non-country uh, uh, programs or your entities programs, priorities, goals, targets, and challenges. So we will have four guide questions and we'll go through that one by one. And then from under each uh, um, this group. So, and then at the end of this uh, group discussion, we have Mr. Masanori as our rapporteur who will be presenting the results of our discussion at the plenary later. Okay. So this is the question for the team to discuss, uh, AG. Yeah. Um, before we go into the specific question, are there any general comments that any of you would like to provide us uh, in, resp in response to the presentation by Nancy and also Dr. Wansuk? Or are there any questions you have also? No? So are we ready to proceed to the specific questions then? Okay, AG. So if yeah. there are no comments as of this time, uh, maybe yeah. we can proceed with the first one. So this is mm -hmm. focusing on the, uh, the strategy that was presented. In particular, we are being asked if this strategy if we find it appropriate and ad adequate in prioritizing the activities to be undertaken until 2030? And is the prioritization process able to reflect the strategic goals of the SDS, as well as the capacity of PRF and particularly the non-country partners to achieve the targeted SDS outcomes? So first question, is it appropriate? Is it adequate? Do you want to, probably we can go to the slides where it is shown, Kate. Yes, yeah, so for global, reference, uh, yeah. just to remind you of what has been presented. So this is the proposed strategy, the Grow, Hold, Harvest strategy for the 2030 PEMC roadmap. And so the Grow aspect uh, is focusing more on highly impactful and effective uh, initiatives that would help advance PEMC's vision and also looking at uh, possible investments when we can further scale up these uh, initiatives. On the hold aspect, this is the catalytic initiatives that would enable PEMC's reach and impact. And we, as much as possible, would like to maintain these activities as part of a PEMC and SDS SEA implementation. And then the last one is the harvest which is a, a possible subset of grow and hold activities and demonstrates that uh, if some of these activities are out of scope already, it can be rationalized, reviewed, and turned over to other partners who have more capacity to further implement or strengthen those uh, initially established initiatives. 
So those are the three uh, strategies under the Grow, Hold, Harvest being proposed for the 2030 roadmap. And then in line with question number one, these are the uh, proposed adjustments in the SDSSA priorities to 2030, particularly maintaining to the uh, three major management programs of the SDSSEA. So that uh, looks into biodiversity conservation and management, pollution reduction and waste management, and knowledge management and capacity building. So I believe we can uh, focus first on the, strat the proposed strategy and also on the management uh, programs aspect uh, under Grow, Hold, Harvest. So the next item on governance will be discussed in question number two. So maybe we can focus on question number one for now. So any uh, thoughts, inputs, or comments on the proposed uh, strategy so far and the adjustments being proposed on the SDS SEA priorities? So the priorities are on biodiversity conservation and management, which I think is uh, uh, the mandate of the ASEAN Center for Biodiversity, one of the key mandates, right? Pollution reduction and waste management. I think o OSRL and IPICA as work will actually uh, fall into that. Knowledge management and capacity building. I think uh, all of us are, are engaged in this somehow and OPRI as well. Uh, so, um, just trying to, uh, we, we don't have, um, we have some activities here on the grow, for example, communications and partnership strengthening campaign, but we are not limited to this. I mean, you may have some ideas on, on what uh, types of activities that you have that you could, uh, you would want the partners also, you know, the partnership to scale up uh, from, from your own perspective. So are there any programs uh, in terms of the sectors that, uh, you think uh, the partnership should do more, and that uh, you know your your own um, agencies or organizations are able to help push for it. For example, yeah. So perhaps AG uh, mm -hmm. for on biodiversity, if we can hear from our colleagues from. If plans or programs that are currently being implemented or are targeted to be implemented up to 2030 that you think would complement uh, with this uh, particular program area. So again, it doesn't have to be just constrained within these uh, mm -hmm. pre-identified targets from the, the PRF uh, or PEMC side. But uh, we hope you can share also what are your plans in the future that you think would be complementary to this. <clears throat> yes, um, good morning. <clears throat> good morning again. Um, I'm, I'm just closing my video. <laughs> yes, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I have a very low yeah. bandwidth, actually. <laughs> and um, yes, um, for ACB, um, we're actually very impressed with the uh, strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, that you uh, thought of, like the the gr especially the 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 grow, hold, and harvest, and it's um, they are very clear, very clear to us. And then in terms of this um, alignment for the <clears throat> programs, um, we're actually good with the what is in here, uh, especially for the grow. Uh, for example, the regional communication and partnership. And then also for the whole uh, cooperation and collaboration. And um, I think, I'm not sure, but uh, what is indicated here is only with the local governments and local communities. So perhaps something, uh, is this uh, targeted only for, for the local? But I think perhaps something at the regional, something at regional scale. And then also for the harvest, um, uh, we're, we're good with it, uh, rationalizing ICM uh, certification. Although uh, in, in ACB's um, interventions, we've not into that uh, part because um, uh, our intervention is um, kind of um, slightly different from, from this one, but uh, we fully support this one, especially 
for the countries that um, that are participating in the uh, what um, Ma'am Amy, Amy um, mentioned before in the Jeff uh, proposal that uh, we're developing still in the um, concept stage, but uh, we're also hopeful. So um, we, with this, I think um, that proposal is very much aligned uh, with this um, SDSC priorities and all of these um, approaches will be, um, <clears throat> uh, will be catered to. So for, for the ACB, um, we're into um, strengthening um, our um, ASEAN Heritage Park program, Parks program, or the AHP program. And then under that, uh, we're supporting capacities as well as uh, both uh, the technical capacities and also the governance and management effectiveness of the um, affected area management units in the ASEAN member states. And then um, we're hoping that there will be more um, concrete collaboration uh, under this SDSC priority, especially with the PEMC uh, <clears throat> resource facility in terms of uh, capacity building, especially uh, with the strength of PEMC on ICM and other um, area-based uh, management tools. And <clears throat> also for, for other um, interventions, uh, currently um, ACB is also partnering with um, other regional uh, institutions uh, for the um, in understanding the marine uh, protected area targets in the ASEAN region um, in view of the new or the post-2020 uh, global biodiversity framework targets for marine protected areas. So it says there uh, the 30% ambition so we are, um, we've just uh, started our collaboration with youth charitable trusts to see, this, to, to understand the circumstances in the region, whether this target is, um, can be achieved and how this can be achieved. And then, or how can um, ASEAN um, significantly contribute uh, to this global target? So how much of that 30% can the ASEAN um, uh, contribute? And then what are the um, actions that need to be, um, that, that the member states uh, need to, uh, to take on? So um, we're hoping that uh, through, through also the partnerships of um, PMC at the national level, um, this, part, for example, um, the new products tailored to, to local needs and applications, especially I think on the ICM and MSPs, uh, which are tools that are um, helpful in um, improving management of um, MPAs and also in expanding these areas and also in supporting um, a more connected um, ecological uh, links or networks among these uh, marine protected areas. I guess um, we don't have any more um, comment on, on this one and these are very aligned with uh, what we do, especially on MPA. So what's new actually at ACB is on marine litter. And then uh, we're um, exploring partnerships, uh, especially with the uh, uh, <clears throat> ROK or Korea, and then also with uh, the Philippines and um, Thailand. And then we, although we've not yet um, identified a more concrete pilot project, but um, we're hoping that it's something that can also be uh, uh, that, that ACB can also significantly contribute, uh, especially in um, achieving the SDSC priorities. So I think that's it. Um, so basically it's on marine protected areas and um, the new one is on the marine litter. Yeah. Thank you, Claudia. Yes, AG, would you like to proceed Are to the next? Yeah. 
sorry, maybe Marl can, can add or if... Yes, please. Especially on the AHP program. Um, in terms of the knowledge management, I'd just like to add that ACB is also actively working on the ASEAN Biodiversity Outlook. <clears throat> And for AHP, uh, as mentioned by Claude earlier, um, we are reinforcing our efforts on uh, management effectiveness um, using the MEPP4 that was recently developed by IUCN. So that's basically it. Thank you. Did I capture that correctly? It's MEPP4? I'm sorry. Uh, MEPP4. Uh, meet, meet, okay. Meet, meet. Uh -huh. Yes, okay. Um, M-E, double T. Double T. Management effectiveness. What's the, the two Tracking piece, Marley? Tool. Tracking, Tracking tool. Tracking tool, um, yes. You know, I think these are very good initiatives and this uh, actually reinforces uh, and complements the work that uh, we are doing mm -hmm. uh, also on ICM. Um, uh, Yusek Teh mentioned earlier, marine spatial planning. And I think yeah. these are complementary tools also that we will be exploring in our joint project on the large marine ecosystems, transboundary connectivity of we were, uh, marine protected areas. Yeah. We, we also appreciate the presentation earlier regarding the progress of the SDS earlier. And because mm -hmm. uh, at this point, um, we have just finished the review of the AHP ASEAN Heritage Parks Regional Action Plan. Mm -hmm. And this year, we will be starting the post-2020 RAP for the AHP. And I think um, some of the pointers that were shared earlier will be part of our um, terms to be considered for the development of the post-2020 RAP. Okay, glad to be of help. <laughs> Now, um, just, just a comment on the MPA uh, work with uh, the 30% target with Pew, Charitable Trust. Um, when, if you progress on this, I think that's really, be help, that will be helpful. And if we could, you know, in any training, seminars, or orientation that you will have, if we could include a PEMSI network of learning centers as well, because I think Pew brings with it a number of uh, new tools, uh, you know, or fresh way of thinking strategies that could possibly, uh, you know, we could look into to help strengthen implementation of MPAs uh, in, in, in the region. And uh, uh, what better way to do that uh, is through our learning centers who could then, uh, you know, be, it, it could be like a trainer's training where you could have more people uh, having that sort of knowledge that could curate and adapt it in the region. So something to think about also as we move along. Thank you for that. We'll, not, we'll take note of yes. that. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, AG, do you like to proceed to pollution reduction? Yes. Okay. So, yeah. okay. so we have here our colleagues from IPK and OSRL. Uh, may we hear from you on this aspect, please? Yeah, we move. I can just uh, comment on the strategy. I think it, it does offer a uh, very good framework in um, prioritizing the uh, different focus areas. Um, so it, it allows uh, the better allocation of resources for sure. Right? Um, and also looking at the uh, adjustments in the uh, priorities for uh, 2030, I think um, it, that um, really uh, sort of um, allows the, the program to zoom in on the uh, more current or trending issues. So obviously, IPCA represents the oil and gas industry. Uh, and this is where I, I think um, the industry can actually contribute to all this uh, effort to, to different uh, collaboration. And indeed, uh, as an industry of um, association, IPCA is looking at how to uh, assist the industry transit uh, into you know, the renewables and then different uh, um, different types of uh, energies uh, uh, available going to the future. And, and I think this is where uh, industry can actually collaborate with the and the uh, um, local government networks to, to really address some of these issues beyond uh, just pollution uh, reduction, right? 
So, um, but specifically, uh, let, let me speak a little bit more about the uh, focus of the Global Initiative for Southeast Asia Project. Uh, and uh, one of the key areas is uh, capacity building on oil spill preparedness. And this is always uh, one of the uh, key uh, objectives of, of GIC. And um, when you talk about uh, capacity building in oil spill preparedness actually goes beyond just uh, oil spills because uh, obviously there are a lot of overlaps between uh, oil spill preparedness and different elements of integrated coastal management. Right? And also on the recognition that a lot of these issues are local. So uh, building capacity at the local level will always be a uh, focus for, for the global initiative uh, uh, program. Uh, and in this regard, because of our association with um, the International Maritime Organization, one of the um, areas that we are interested in is to uh, help the different uh, ASEAN member states um, accede to the key international conventions as it relates to oil pollution uh, preparedness and response, as well as uh, liability and uh, compensation. So um, this is actually one of the... Uh, Drivers for us in in the tri in this current triennium, uh, the, the GIC is uh, into its 20, 2021 to twenty twenty three triennium. So this year we are going to launch a uh, remote legal review, working with uh, eight of the ten ASEAN member states um, to to really to really try to um, identify gaps in the existing uh, national legislative framework and to help them. Um, um, a seat to these conventions as well as the subsequent implementation of some of these uh, conventions. Right. And I think overall the uh, overall the, the concept is that the legislative framework provides the foundation not only for oil spill preparedness but uh, all the other elements as it relates to uh, environmental management, environmental conservation, so on. So uh, I think that that uh, shift in focus towards the uh, legislative aspect is, is something that um, I'd like to highlight uh, from the uh, GIC's perspective. And this is where I believe um, we uh, can interface with the work of uh, PEMZ, right? Um, because this is also one of the areas that uh, PEMZ is, is looking at. And so, um, in that sense, I think we can complement uh, each other's uh, work in, in, in this uh, regard. Yeah, thank uh, you. that's all for me from now. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Naiming. Uh, can we hear first from OSRL? Um, uh, morning, everyone. So um, just to share my thoughts on the strategy, I think I'd like to second the previous two speakers on, on the strategy that grow, hold, and harvest that was proposed earlier. I think um, it is a very good framework, but like what Naiming said, um, to really leverage on your core competencies and, and you know, um, focus on those that have the greatest impact. Uh, but just, just the harvest side of things, of course, I'm, I'm not too sure what's the plans for, for the harvest uh, strategy under, under for the activities uh, categorized under the harvest strategy so it'd be good to have a eye on keep an eye on it uh, so that um, um, you don't waste the good work that was done pe before that so I think that is something that uh, just a gentle reminder mm -hmm. um, to go into the proposed uh, adjustments um, as we can see on the slides I think uh, Nai Ming rightfully pointed out you know, uh, voice view actually uh, is rather broad topic um, if I can uh, make a, a point that no, it, it probably has a little bit to do with the biodiversity conservation, a little bit to do with the pollution reduction, and as well as knowledge management. So where OSRL uh, will be very happy to support, uh, to raise awareness, to share our, our experience of responding uh, into incidents into, into various countries. Um, the aspects of COVID, you know, right now we are responding into the Sri Lanka, uh, called mm -hmm. Sri Lanka incident. So, mm -hmm. so that has given us a lot of learning lessons as well. Uh, what, how do we respond under a, a COVID situation or even future pandemics or how can we be more prepared for to respond to such incidents? I think these are things that we can share. Um, 
as well as uh, what Naimi has mentioned slightly as well at the local level. I think uh, based on my current experience uh, in my current, in my role, I think uh, I've been dealing with a lot of uh, regional partners uh, at the national level, but where uh, it could be, it could be better improved is really having that, that level of engagement with uh, the local governments as well, so that uh, we are able to make sure that the information is, is able to permeate into the local government, which, which is where the implementation takes place. I think this actually is quite of quite in line in what uh, Ms. Amy shared earlier from the imp- policy advocate moving towards the implementation catalyst. I think these are, this is something quite in line with uh, where OSRO can help um, I think as an update, uh, so, sorry, moving to the knowledge management, I think there are areas where we are able to collaborate and even share, share, share information uh, where we are already strong core, you know, core competencies like you know, oil spills, uh, technical handbooks. Of course, IPCA would have um, a very well-documented uh, wealth of materials. Uh, OSR will be, have, will, be help, will be glad to help share all this and um, Apart from that, OSRO has been looking into areas where we could uh, further support our members in terms of uh, tackling marine pollution, like looking into potentially marine litters, um, alternative fuels like LNG, uh, ammonia, hydrogen. Uh, these are areas that I think we could um, perhaps work together, collaborate. Um, after this, we are, uh, OSRO will be happy to discuss this further with you, with um, PMC. That's all I have for now. Thank you, James. Uh, Amy, uh, AJ, if I may. Yeah, sure. Yeah, just related on pollu- pollution reduction and waste management, uh, we, I also would like to highlight and also to thank OSRL in particular, who have been actively coordinating and communicating with uh, another PEMC project, which is the Arafura Timor Seas uh, project or ATSI 2, and which is now also fo- uh, one of its main focus areas is also on pollution reduction, including on oil spill response and uh, management. So we hope that uh, through the PEMC network or partnership, we'll be able to further strengthen that possible cooperation uh, with ATSI2 and other related initiatives in PEMC, including the continuing work on the Gulf of Thailand. Yeah, AAG may have some more. Yes, uh, just to pick up on a point also that James mentioned on uh, the branching out into alternative fuels. Um, this is like uh, the, the link between uh, uh, pollution reduction and also combating climate change. And uh, PEMC is moving towards that uh, direction as well with uh, our work, our, our current project, which is called Blue Solutions Project, uh, which is to improve energy efficiency in the maritime transport sector. So let's to talk about on that. I think uh, you were invited to our initial uh, regional kickoff meeting and there will be more of those in the future. So we'll, we'll uh, make sure that uh, you are part of uh, our consultations and in, in the workshops because we're developing the full project, uh, full project at the moment, uh, which should start, it's funded by the German government and we should start, fingers crossed, in 2022. Uh, yeah. So. Thank you so much, Ms. Amy. Looking forward to that. Okay. Yes. Um, I think uh, OPRI, uh, no? Okay, so may I just uh, add a few more thoughts? And thank you uh, for very informative uh, uh, presentations by uh, PMC and uh, uh, as a Center for Biodiversity and uh, IPEK and uh, OS, OSRL. And from OPRI side, uh, we've been working on the sustainable blue economy capacity development. Uh, we have been undertaking uh, case studies and also bilateral uh, policy dialogues uh, for the promotion of sustainable blue economy. Uh, we are also engaged in the multilateral discussions uh, such as uh, high-level panel for sustainable ocean economy, uh, etc. Um, we, uh, as uh, we, yeah, uh, Amy and others mentioned, uh, this uh, co-benefit and the synergies of marine conservation and sustainable blue economy is uh, one of the challenge. And the 2030 
30% um, target of MPA uh, is uh, one of the important policy agenda. And obviously the fishing nations have to find a way to balance between sustainable use of marine resources and the expansion of marine protected areas. So this is really the uh, important task that we have to tackle. Um, another thing is that uh, uh, blue carbon, uh, we work on the seagrass and the seaweed and the aquatic uh, plant uh, habitat conservations and the expansion. And we also try to quantify the carbons sequestrated through uh, blue carbons. Uh, so this concept uh, may be also relevant to link uh, marine environment conservation and the climate change uh, mitigation and adaptation. Uh, obviously, the seagrass is an important habitat for the fish stock. Uh, so we see this co-benefit between seagrass conservation and uh, um, the sustainable fisheries and aquaculture as well. Um, the um, marine data was mentioned. And uh, of course, uh, marine plastic is uh, one of the uh, key component that we have to tackle. But at the same time, we also work on like uh, uh, management of the fishing net and also collections and the recycling of uh, abandoned fishing net as well. We have to eliminate a ghost net uh, for the conservation of the marine environment. And with that, uh, we see some innovative actions, um, of, of course, in Japan and uh, Indonesia, uh, where the NGOs are trying to collect the abandoned fishing net and uh, try to recycle it. Um, uh, last year, uh, Amy and I organized uh, uh, like a session with uh, uh, UNEP Sea uh, of East Asia, and uh, where we have addressed this uh, uh, recycling of uh, fishing net as a, one of the important tasks. So um, this is if this is also relevant to PMC work. Um, we are interested in exploring uh, collaborations with the PMC members and the partners as to how we can eliminate uh, ghost fishing net or abandoned fishing net as a source of uh, marine pollution in uh, East Asia. Um, I thank you for your kind attention. Thank you, Masanori. Yes, uh, we still have other partners uh, from COEM. Can we hear from our colleague from COEM? I'm not sure if she's still here. I don't okay. see her name anymore. Okay. Yeah. So just a reminder, it's already 11.48. So we still have several questions to respond to. Uh, on knowledge management and capacity building, I believe uh, most of our non-country partners have already raised the, also their support to continue uh, uh, support on capacity development and knowledge management and sharing of knowledge products uh, between uh, the country partners, local governments, and also the resource facility of PEMC. And are there other uh, specific inputs that you would like to make on the knowledge management aspect and capacity building? Or uh, have we covered that already? Is there any more additions to it? Yeah, I sorry, the, uh, Kate, I forgot to mention this uh, uh, UN ocean uh, science, UN decade for the ocean science for the sustainable development. And uh, yeah, this, if uh, this is also relevant to the promotion of knowledge management, uh, maybe um, it's also good to uh, indicate the linkages of this knowledge management with the UN decade of ocean science for sustainable development. Thank you. Thank you, that's noted. Okay, so uh, can we proceed to the next one? AJ, are you okay with the, to proceed to number two? Yes, but I think OSRL James has raised his hand. Oh, sorry. James, please. Sorry, sorry. Just wanted to make a point on, on the knowledge management. I think uh, it will be also beneficial for 
because it's such a broad topic, uh, ocean science, uh, environmental management, I think it would be really beneficial for, for uh, the knowledge uh, to be shared around various uh, stakeholders. Like uh, I, for me, I would see that OSRL as a uh, response organization, we would benefit greatly uh, if we had this uh, knowledge of this as well. Um, I likewise, we are also happy to share our knowledge with you know, uh, people, uh, organizations who are involved in biodiversity so that we all establish a common understanding about what each other do so we don't really, uh, knowledge is not kept within our core but really just spread across all industries that are involved and we all can better understand and identify areas of collaboration. Yeah, that's noted, James. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Two. Okay. So, uh, are there any more inputs? If none, we can proceed to number two. Okay. So, this is a uh, question number two on governance and management programs. In particular, are the activities identified adequate and responsive to the needs of the region? Are the programs able to capture the priorities of uh, country partners and non-country partners in strengthening uh, coastal and ocean governance? So, and also looking into the uh, linkage with the, on, uh, the current pandemic and its impacts and the efforts of various countries on putting up and implementing the respective blue grid recovery uh, measures. So those are the two main questions that we need to address. And uh, for reference, uh, this is the proposed uh, priorities uh, related to governance. So one on governance and strategic partnerships, one is related to blue economy and sustainable financing of SDS, SEA, and other new developments, uh, special, uh, particularly in line with the UN decade of ocean science. Okay, uh, back to you, AG. So these are again the questions. Yeah. So, um, uh, like we said, we are not limited to what is in the in the list uh, because this is also only what we know. But uh, you know, if if uh, partners, you have uh, programs uh, that you would like to be featured here, or th that you would like uh, more uh, countries to adapt um, or to put emphasis emphasis on. I, of course, blue economy is uh, like the the new uh, alternative pathway that. Uh, we are trying to get uh, all country partners to 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 promote, and we have uh, you know they have agreed to this uh, in 2012. But uh, the proof of the pudding is in the eating, really. So uh, the work on this will still need to continue. So are there any other means that uh, you know we could push uh, and promote the blue economy, particularly? I think uh, uh, what we could, how we could distinguish this from the previous question is like. Post pandemic, how do we see, uh, you know, uh, promoting governance and strategic partnership, promoting blue economy, and then also what new developments uh, should we be looking at, which is not captured in uh, the current uh, plan, that which would be important to capture moving forward if we are to remain fit for purpose and we, if we are to remain, you know, as a leading partnership uh, in the region. I leave it there. Any insights from our partners? Um, it's, it's, okay, so can I yes. just uh, yes, um, please proceed. Ask uh, questions. Um, so yeah, I'm just wondering uh, with regards to this um, blue financing. Um, this uh, has been discussed uh, in the PMC uh, framework, and uh, uh, one of the point was uh, linkages with the private sector. Mm -hmm. And I'm just wondering uh, whether you have developed any thinking about how we can relate this blue financing discussion with uh, private sector uh, activities. Um, yeah, this is something that, yeah, may I would like to ask. Yeah, okay. Um, on the, uh, in, in, in the secretariat, in the PEMC resource facility per se, um, this has been uh, like a work that's been really lacking in progress because A, 
we don't have the current capacity at the moment. We had one um, or two even at some point in the, the previous years, but we don't have someone now. But we have an ongoing partnership with Coca-Cola uh, on marine litter. So uh, that's one. I mean, we want to expand, we want to do more, but uh, we, we don't have the resources to pursue such activity. And, you know, you would require some sort of sophistication and also um, having a knowledge into private sector, um, uh, what you call this, uh, working to be able to attract uh, also um, them. Uh, what the other thing is that the lack of resources, the other thing is that we are waiting for new projects to come in. For example, like the integrated river basin management and even the blue solutions project that will put us in touch more with concrete, you know, we have funds on the table, we have a clear work plan that we could put forward and uh, promote with private sector partners. So yeah, so that this is lagging behind at the moment. We have uh, a strategy, we have some lessons to learn, but in terms of like how to push and promote this, uh, from the secretariat side, we haven't been able to capture it. So we would also be, uh, we would want to see how partners are doing it also. Uh, and uh, as well as, uh, you know, kind of countries themselves, you know, how have they been engaged um, in, this, uh, in this initiative? This is something that we would like to pick up pretty much because we were one of the first to promote sustainable financing and, you know, have some activities, but um, we don't have the expertise at the moment uh, also. But yes, we will pick this up. Yeah. Thank you, Amy. And uh, another uh, point was about uh, the blue recovery. Uh, this mm -hmm. COVID-19, uh, yeah, it's been affecting the entire world for more than a year. Mm -hmm. And uh, ASEAN, I'm not so sure how uh, quickly uh, the ASEAN can recover from the economic downturns caused mm -hmm. by this COVID-19. And uh, this um, blue recovery, like uh, economic promotions and economic uh, recovery through the conservation and sustainable use of marine resources, uh, this can be um, probably an important engine. Uh, nonetheless, um, I'm just wondering if um, uh, you are also thinking anything about how we can collaborate or assist the countries uh, in devising a kind of strategies to promote uh, blue recovery, economic recovery through the sustainable blue economy. Yeah. Very quickly, uh, we started this already um, with, uh, you know, countries presenting their economic recovery plans at the Ocean Roundtable, which we held at the world in the, during the World Oceans Day. So uh, we would continue to do so. Um, uh, we will hear from countries today also on how they would want to progress on that, but we would like to at least at the very least capitalize, capture this in a regional setting. We also are planning, we have a planned uh, regional uh, paper looking at the impact of COVID and what could be done post-pandemic. So we have the regional overview, not just the national uh, uh, overview and plans. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> I think James has raised his hand, uh, Karen. Oh yeah, um, actually uh, when uh, Mr. Masanori was talking about private sector, I think uh, I'm not too sure if uh, this is a question, uh, if there's any, there's any plans for dialogues with the shipping sector, because uh, if you look at the, the players on, on the ocean, I think the shipping sector does uh, play, uh, contribute to a, a, a relatively big role. Um, uh, I'm not too sure if where there's any engagement with at the IMO level or or, direct, or perhaps directly with the uh, shipping sector themselves. Yeah, this is my question. Hello, Ag. I think you're on mute. Yes. Yes, so uh, the question from James is, uh, are there any plans or dialogues that are being undertaken by PEMSI currently with the shipping sector? Um, we are starting slowly. Uh, we have, um, we're working with them on uh, biofouling management uh, guidelines. And so that's one of the work that we're doing with UNDP, Jeff, and IMO. 
uh, the Blue Solutions Project will also put us in touch with the shipping sector, uh, particularly in promoting uh, energy efficiency guidelines, looking at baselines on greenhouse gas assessment, not only at the country level, but also at the um, sector level, shipping um, in the East Asian region. So yes, we are just waiting for these projects to mature and hopefully this will be coming from 2022 onwards that will bring us closer to, uh, to uh, working with uh, the people who matters, you know, the, the uh, what you call this, um, shipping sector in terms of uh, work in the maritime sector to reduce greenhouse gas emission. Also, uh, we had some initial work done with the World Bank on the uh, recycling sector, actually, and how we need to to improve uh, and strengthen uh, capacity of the recycle sector, provide policy measures and uh, enabling market uh, incentives for them to uh, promote uh, sustainable uh, recycling basically, and not just uh, look at end of pipe solutions. So there are some of this uh, in the works. And so, yeah, we just have to be a bit patient uh, in terms because this, this projects take time to, to materialize. <laughs> Yes, but that, that is the plan. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Amy. I mean, I understand that it takes time, but it's, uh, it's just a question. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing on, on, the, on the progress of these pro this projects. Thank you. Okay, uh, are, do we have further inputs? Mr. Kim, do you have any thoughts as well that you would like to share, if any? No. Okay, no thank you. Thank Hi, uh, Kate. Yes, Naiming, please. Yes, yes, Kate. Uh, so I, I think to just to add on to James' uh, questions, I believe the shipping sector will always be integral to the work of MZ. Uh, just, just looking, I mean, just looking at the profile of this region and the amount of uh, traffic that we get here. So uh, as, as what uh, was rightly mentioned, uh, some of these projects around the uh, blue ocean, Blue economy uh, around these biofouling projects, uh, Maxis, for instance, uh, all this actually involve the shipping sector, although uh, you no know, largely driven by IMO as the sort of an international regulatory body. So I, I suppose the, the question is whether um, there can be more direct interface with the various uh, entities in the shipping industry itself, for instance, the different uh, associations like uh, the Federation of uh, ASEAN Ship Owners, for instance. Or the uh, PNI insurers uh, as, as part of the dialogue partners to, to be more directly engaged, uh, you know, uh, especially that the, the uh, local uh, government level to let them understand uh, you know, the inner workings of the shipping industry so that uh, it all adds up to all part of the, um, the overall uh, capacity uh, building effort. Right? And a couple of other observations uh, just to add on. Um, if you look at what is around this region, I believe there are a lot of overlaps between the different projects. Uh, I mean, historically, some of these projects, uh, the starting points are different, although they are all funded through similar organizations tied to the, the UN framework. So I suppose there can be better collaboration between these uh, different setups. To, to really sort of like uh, consolidate some of these resources and to amplify the effort. Um, even uh, if you look at the, the work of GIC itself, there are also actually a lot of overlaps between what, what is going on in this region. So definitely there's room for all this kind of uh, different collaboration to, to bring uh, all these, uh, especially the sub-regional elements into the you know, whole regional framework so that we can sort of uh, better address some of these issues. And also, if you look at the um, how some of these new projects have actually developed, a, a lot of times the, the, it's actually what, what we call what is the focus or what is the flavor of the moment in a sense. So if you look at, for, for instance, uh, support to the countries to, to accede to different conventions. So obviously, you know, the, the, the latest conventions on biofouling, uh, greenhouse uh, emissions, uh, all these will definitely get more attention and uh, perhaps also opportunities for funding. And so, but um, the key is that the foundation must be that the fundamentals must be there. So without a proper governance framework to begin with the maritime 
governance framework to begin with, then you, you mean the countries or the regions may not actually fully benefit from uh, all these uh, new initiatives that are coming on, on, on board. So it's, it's really a question that we have to ask ourselves whether the countries are, are ready to, to embark on some of this. And on, on that point, if you look at the, the whole region, uh, obviously there's a lot of disparity between the uh, different state of development across the different countries. So obviously that translates to you know, the, the readiness of the countries, resources available, and uh, maturity of the, uh, the governance framework and so on. So, and you find that a lot of times, uh, countries in this region are quite reliant on international aid. And uh, without international aid, you, you find that they, they find it very difficult to move forward. So this is probably something that, uh, that can be addressed through uh, a platform like PEMZ as well. Yes. Right. And so um, financial sustainability will always be a, a challenge. Uh, so even if I look at the Global Initiative Program, uh, we receive funding from both the industry as well as the IMO, but it will always be a challenge to, to stay relevant, to, to demonstrate our value. And it will come to a point in time whereby um, we have to ask ourselves whether the, the value of certain projects uh, still remains in that sense. So, uh, and of course, with, with the uh, post-pandemic recovery, I believe uh, we are looking at probably a reduction in funding available overall from the different donors. So that again will also pose uh, another set of challenges altogether. There are just some thoughts and, and sharing here. Thank you. Thank you, Naiming. Yes, uh, it's also it's good uh, that you also highlighted the uh, convening capacity of PEMSI and that we can make use of that platform to ensure that we reduce overlaps uh, in uh, various initiatives at the same time to enable various stakeholders and partners to come together and agree on specific uh, direction that we would like to take for the region, especially taking into consideration the challenges that we're now facing in view of the global pandemic. AG, do you have other insights or inputs on this? It's uh, currently, uh, just a reminder, 12.07 already. Yeah. Um, I think those are very good points. Perhaps we can uh, pick on them, Naiming, also bilaterally, because uh, there are so many developments in the maritime shipping world. Um, just, uh, I forgot actually that, uh, you know, um, on uh, private sector engagement, we've, we've, we have some pilots, and uh, we, through uh, Mr. Kim, uh, Baywon's uh, uh, help, we have been working with the Incheon Port Authority also. Uh, it's a very uh, nascent initiative looking at you know, how the, the region is responding to climate change uh, challenges um, in the ports and shipping authority and what lessons could, uh, you know, on how uh, Incheon Port Authority could play a role also on that. So we have a copy of the paper which we could share with you guys as well. So uh, back to the question of Mr. Masa-san, Masanori san, um, we, we do have some uh, private sector. We're doubling, but it's really pilot. It's not still at the strategic impactful level. But um, yeah, thank you. I know it's already uh, uh, 12. So I think if we can extend for like another 10 minutes just to go through the two other questions, I think they're pretty straightforward, right? Yes, AG. So the third question is pertaining to the timeline that was, was presented. And specific, specifically, there's the proposed timeline for the roadmap match, the timeline of your uh, priority programs and projects uh, up to 2030. So again, this is just a reference of what has been presented, the timeline. It is, it is in line with the different uh, priority uh, programs under management and governance, and also uh, in line with the proposed strategy on grow, uh, hold, harvest. So this is the first slide. So roughly is the timeline. Um, are, are you also working towards this type of uh, time frame for your own planning purposes? Five years, the next five years. I don't mind what is in the in this uh, column. Uh, just look at the timeline in terms of like the implementation of, of activities and actions that you had mentioned earlier also. Uh, 
Um, yeah, Naimeen, your hand is up. Go ahead. You're on mute. <laughs> Yeah, apologies. Uh, I'm having some network issues, so I can't. Yeah, the video is on now. Yeah, apologies. I was having some network issues. Uh, so in terms of timeline, yes. Uh, the uh, I pick a uh, strategy actually stretches from twenty twenty one to twenty twenty four. So it's definitely within that time frame, and uh, I pick a definitely supports the uh, UN uh, sustainable development goals uh, towards twenty thirty to help the industry transition. Uh, for the global initiative project, uh, we are currently in the 2021 to 2023 triennium, so we work on a three-year cycle. Uh, so yes, definitely we are well within uh, this, this framework. Thank you. Is it the same for the others? OPRI, ECD? Uh, yeah, from OPRI, uh, yes, we have a multiple year work plan and uh, yeah, although they are not really identical to what you have presented, but uh, yes, uh, they can be aligned with your activities and I hope we can find a kind of synergies and a common platform uh, to support uh, PMC activities as shown in this timeline. Thank you. ACB. Yes, uh, it's aligned because uh, right now we're looking uh, forward to a new timeline actually until 2030, although we have also some uh, planning uh, documents until 2025, but uh, these are uh, very much uh, extended. Okay. Um, oh, sorry, well, I suppose it's the same, right? Yeah, we have a, a five-year strategic timeline. Uh, uh -huh. That, that, that also have a uh, quite similar themes with uh, what MC has, uh, collaboration, uh -huh. communication. So I guess these are areas where uh, OSR will be very happy to work with uh, PEMC on. Okay. Um, can we ask for copies or new links to your, to your program, program plans? Um, and so we could also see where the alignment could be uh, in, in developing uh, uh, our implementation plan up to 2027, or you could just give us like excerpts, whatever is uh, easier for you, so that we could refer to your plans also um, in, our, in, in the regional strategy, basically. Yeah. No problem for OSRO. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and for the rest, I suppose that's fine, right? Uh, yes, for ACB, I guess um, we will also have to, to get e feedback regarding mm -hmm. the AWG, CME plan, uh, ASEAN working group on CME plan, and they're having a meeting tomorrow until yeah. Friday. So yeah, we I, might have uh, get more uh, updated feedback on on the implementation of the plan and okay. possibly share it to PMC as well. Okay. Thank you for that. Yes, we have we have uh, one colleague joining because uh, we have our okay. own meeting tomorrow still. But yes, we will be present in the. ASEAN Working Group on Coastal Marine Environment. Um, okay. Um, so this is the last... Uh, the last one, yeah. Yes, yeah. this is pertaining to the proposed uh, establishment of a work, a technical working group who will uh, help lead the development of the sts SEA implementation plan. So this is a five-year plan that is being proposed that will be anchored on the uh, Roadmap 2030 uh, st strategies. So uh, we would just like to hear from you if you believe this would be the best approach to do this. And the, this core team will be comprised by the technical session chair and the technical session co-chair as the lead and advisors for the PRF in undertaking this uh, uh, the, in the development of this implementation plan. So just uh, we would just like to receive some confirmation from you if this is a good approach or are there any suggestions that you can make to help us in this process. Thank you. Or, yeah, or do you want to be part of this technical working group as well? Uh, because we will be working on the plan intercessionally, so there could be some obligations also to, to you know, co provide comments on the papers, not just, uh, not just in the formal partnership council. So we're looking for volunteers, basically. 
So can we just go org per org? <laughs> I mean, if there's no compulsion, right? I mean, if it's it's voluntary, purely voluntary. <laughs> Yeah, for, for ACB for now, uh, we will just acknowledge this um, recommendation and mm -hmm. um, we will uh, refer this to our um, executive management. Okay, yeah. thank you. So, yeah, we, we acknowledge this. Well, And the, and the others? Um, for OSRO, I think it's a great opportunity to establish a closer relationship, uh, collaboration opportunity. Oh, this also, also open up, opens up a lot of collaboration uh, opportunities. Uh, in principle, I think OSRO will be very happy to join in uh, the technical working group. But I guess the details of our contribution would have to be uh, discussed, perhaps a term, yeah. of, term of reference, uh, before we can make a better decision, a more informed yeah. decision. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Thank you. Ipika? Yeah, in principle, I think uh, we have no issues with uh, being part of this technical working group. Masasan, OPRI? Yes. <laughs> We've been so looking we for some have... policy linkages. <laughs> yeah, so we are also happy to join the working group and I hope to develop uh, collaborations uh, with you uh, on uh, broad issues and also a thematic issue as well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I think sustainable pursuing sustainable blue economy in more concrete forms would be a way to work together with OPRI because you're quite strong on the policy side. Okay, are there any other things, Kate? Yeah, so that covers the four uh, questions uh, pertaining mm -hmm. to the roadmap. And mm -hmm. just to refer back to the actions requested uh, by the council. So I believe we have covered uh, bullet uh, on the proposed framework and the focus areas on PEMC roadmap mm -hmm. and SDS plan. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, earlier, the chair opened uh, any comments for the midterm review results. And if you want to share further your thoughts on the results of the midterm review, we can also take note of that. And then also this one we've already covered already. So this is uh, just the midterm review section was uh, uh, if, if there are further uh, inputs on this while others have already been touched upon. Uh, so, there, yeah. yeah, are there uh, any reactions with regard to the results shared on the midterm review? So again, the results of the midterm review was also used as a uh, reference in the design in designing and conceptualizing the strategy for the roadmap to 2030, as well as in the initial planning for the concept and structure of the implementation plan. So that feeds into those uh, key initiatives. So any any further insights on that? If none, I think AG we have covered uh, yeah. all the key points. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, what we will do is during the break, the Secretariat will be uh, refining the highlights of the discussion under each questions, and then we can go through it after lunch break. And then, uh, so at least Mr. Masanori will be ready for the group presentation later on. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank you so much for everyone's uh, uh, contribution today. I think it's been a good discussion. Uh, it would have been better if we were all in the same room talking. Yeah. You know? <laughs> we could continue some of the issues that uh, we'd like to put forward. I just also want to, to share that we have a bulletin. Uh, every month, we actually have a monthly bulletin, which we share not just in the region, but all over the globe. We would welcome stories or you know, even advertisements of your programs. I think we've featured, featured OSRL and IPICA and also some work done with the ACB before. So Masa Nori-san, I think we've also like advertised uh, some of your uh, uh, workshops, you know, because we get the Sasakawa Peace Foundation seminars. But if you want to feature like uh, what uh, Naining was saying in terms of your knowledge, your tools, your technology, I think uh, it's a good platform to get better coverage and marketing, not only for your work, yeah. but also for, for the partnership. Thank yes. you so much. Yeah. Yes. Ag, I uh, just right. want to uh, also highlight that uh, this is just the initial 
uh, yes. discussion. Yeah. There will be a lot more in the mm-hmm. coming months, uh, especially in the lead up to the uh, December 1 and 2 main events of the East Asian Seas Congress. In particular, the roadmap that we are discussing today is uh, a key uh, output that the ministerial declaration in this yes. on December 2 will uh, commit to. So definitely all inputs coming from country and non-country partners are very crucial at this time. So we'll keep in touch on the developments on these aspects. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so I think we can leave the breakout room. Do not leave the meeting, just leave the breakout room, okay? And then we'll be back at 1.30. Um, yes, 1.30. Thank you. So, so Kate and Masan, you will have uh, some discussion on the on the key points. Yeah, so I'll clean up first the the highlights, AG, and then I'll be discussing it uh, with um, Mr. Masanori later. We can also discuss it as a group later, but I'll clean it up during the break. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Have a good lunch, good everyone. Good lunch. Okay, I believe everyone is already present, including Vasi. So I think we can officially start. A slide show. Ah, yes. Uh, okay. But... Okay, so uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, this is a big group. Actually, there are currently 26 uh, participants uh, in this group. And uh, we would like to welcome our country partner representatives from Cambodia, from Indonesia, from Laos PDR, from the Philippines, from Timor-Leste, and, and Vietnam. Uh, so six uh, country partners. So as Karen mentioned, I will be facilitating the discussion. And uh, she will record as well as uh, Isa the, the, proceeding, uh, the, the decisions or highlights from our discussion and uh, we will be presenting it during the plenary. Uh, next next slide, Karen, please. Okay, so uh, I hope everyone was able to, to listen to my very long presentation <laughs> and able to, to uh, organize their thoughts around the, the, the various uh, components of the roadmap as well as the implementation plan that were presented. So, but basically uh, what we want to do uh, uh, during this session is to, to review and discuss the, the roadmap that was presented and determine if this, uh, the, the activities uh, that were identified are relevant and, and, and their timeliness uh, uh, of the proposed activities. So we would like to refer uh, our discussion to tables nine and 10, uh, which I also discussed in my presentation. And uh, since the, this group is comprised of country partners, so we will be uh, looking at uh, the, the various country specific contexts and what might be the priorities, the goals, targets, and perceived challenges that the countries are, are, are seeing in terms of implementing the priority activities. So uh, the, the discussion will be guided by four questions, but definitely we can adjust if you think there are additional points that we need to raise that are not covered by the four guide questions. Uh, for instance, USECTE has actually provided some inputs um, uh, for the road mapping process uh, from the Philippines perspective, so we can uh, also capture that. And, and so, uh, so per perhaps I can go through the presentation first, and then uh, we can go back to, to discuss each of the points uh, being requested to, for us to focus on. Uh, next, next slide, Karen, please. Okay, so, so the first question uh, is uh, uh, looking at the, the prioritization strategy that was uh, applied in, in identifying which, uh, which might be the, <clears throat> the activities that we need to implement first and, and, and so on until 2030. And uh, so we would like the, the feedback from the countries if the, uh, you find the strategy appropriate and was it adequate in prioritizing the activities to be undertaken in, until 2030? And uh, are, they reflect, they were, are they able to reflect the strategic goals of the SDS, SEA? 
as well as the capacity of the PEMSI resource facility and country partners in achieving the targeted SDSC outcome. So I would like to highlight that these are not new targets, but as, as, as elaborated in my presentation, uh, like these are like your, your uh, commitments and obligations to, to a number of multilateral environmental agreements like the Convention on Bio Biological Diversity, the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change and so on. So uh, the, how the countries are responding uh, to their commitments and reporting their progress in implementing these, these uh, conventions. Are, so we would like to know uh, what are the, the programs and projects that you're implementing in relation to uh, to, to various um, international commitments that you have in your respective countries? So next next slide, please. So if you recall, uh, so this was the framework uh, that was used in prioritizing the activities. So they we group together the activities in terms of are they highly impactful and effective, and that we need to scale them up. These uh, these are the activities under the grow strategy. And then under hold, so uh, we will, we will, this will uh, comprise a set of activities that we should maintain at the same level of effort and investments. And uh, we will still continue to implement this because they are uh, catalytic in enabling PEMC switch and impact on critical themes such as biodiversity, climate change, and pollution management. And for harvest, on the other hand, uh, these are sets of activities that we need to rationalize, review, and perhaps, as, men as mentioned, turn over to partners with the necessary expertise and resources because this might not be in our priority list or scope of activities and it might uh, need more resources than what we have. Okay, next, next set of activities. Okay, so I think I will stop there. Uh, and then probably we will uh, tackle each of the questions uh, one by one, or would you like me to, to cover all the uh, four, four sets of questions and then we go back and, and discuss. Uh, may I know what's the, what's the preference of the group? From my side, I think that what Nancy, I prefer one by one, but this is better if you all put it in the package. I think that was the, not easy to discuss later on. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, so do, do we agree with Mr. Long? So in that case, so we will tackle uh, the first question first. <laughs> hmm. So, okay, so should we go around the table uh, in alphabetical order or just feel free to chime in if you have uh, any inputs uh, in relation to question one? So the uh, question one uh, is um, clarifying whether the prioritization strategy comprising of grow, hold, and harvest strategy is appropriate and adequate in uh, grouping together the, the different sets of activities that uh, we will discuss later. So should we start with Cambodia if we go by alphabetical order? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, Nancy, I think that what is the, uh, in the group, uh, I have also this here, my colleague uh, from the other sector, uh, might be was the aid uh, to what, what I'm going to speak now. Uh, relate to the uh, question one, you know, from the country perspective, uh, you know, do you find any strategy appropriated and adequate priority to be undertaken until 2030? I uh, would like to say that was in 2030, uh, in some part that was in Cambodia can reach that, what is it? Because we have a, uh, uh, some section that was already planning well, uh, late in terms of the climate change. Yeah, but the biodiversity, uh, I think it was my colleague, uh, Dr. Van Moninet, uh, can respond because what he's, uh, he uh, uh, oversight on that sector, as well as what is the uh, climate change. So uh, with that, I, I think that was, I would like to uh, hand over what is the, the, the floor to him. So maybe it was uh, Dr. Van can edit more uh, you know, about it, that document, we have it at the moment. Uh, Nate, can you uh, edit up 
what what is the MOE we have it at the moment with, in terms of climate change and biodiversity. Any response? Uh, or perhaps uh, that can be covered under question two on the management programs and uh, governance programs. Uh, for this particular question, we would just like to know if you find the, the strategy of grow, hold, and harvest appropriate for us to group together the different activities. So uh, if I may reiterate what I mentioned, uh, the, 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 the matrix that the consultants used actually to, to group together the different activities uh, aims to determine where PEMC should invest, where we will just uh, set aside some of the activities because these are not highly impactful and, uh, and where uh, we can maintain uh, a set of activities in, in consideration of the, their, our capacity to deliver as well as the um, um, opportunities for uh, the different projects to generate uh, impacts and outcomes. So as I mentioned, from the perspective of the SDS SEA, uh, does the, the strategy that was uh, applied able to, to take into consideration our capacity to deliver as well as the, the group those that are like the, the low hanging fruits that we can uh, generate greater impact because we have the available capacity and resources to implement. <clears throat> so for the specific programs on climate change, on biodiversity, on water conservation, uh, on pollution reduction, I think that can be covered in question number two. So as I understand from Mr. Long, uh, Cambodia finds the, the strategy grow, grow, hold, and harvest appropriate uh, in prioritizing the activities for the roadmap. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, can we can we hear from maybe Ms., uh, Dr. Um, Mr. Ban can Munit can uh, contribute later in, in question two. I think yes. When I try to reach him, but perhaps what is still what on another what is a meeting at the same time. So <laughs> okay. my respond later. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Long. Can, can we invite Indonesia to provide uh, their comments and inputs to the, uh, to the strategy that was uh, in, adopted to prioritize the activities for the roadmap? Yeah, thank you, Nancy, for uh, opportunity to Indonesia to share. Uh, for the, we prepared the roadmap, especially how to <coughs> find the strategy appropriate and adequate in the practicing activity taken on the 2030. You know, under 2030, we have uh, the, the global target uh, in uh, 2030 for sustainable development goals, the target also in the 2030. And uh, the biodiversity also uh, still in discussion. Uh, there are uh, agreement uh, for uh, uh, 2030 uh, uh, target uh, until now so negotiation also in uh, in the context of climate change until now we have uh, uh, national we uh, uh, we work to to, to achieve national determined contribution and also the target until 2030. This is uh, our uh, global concern. Hold uh, to strategy uh, under PMC. We uh, work together, but. Uh, 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 also, with, uh, in accordance with national uh, priority and uh, uh, policy, uh, the, the point I think we, we have to get together in 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 in, in, uh, in, the, in East Asia region based on the big ecosystem based approach. Yeah, hold together to achieve uh, the target uh, global for SDGs for uh, biodiversity, also for climate change, uh, in accordance with national and uh, uh, policy and priority. They must be in line with national and also in, in, in global. Uh, <clears throat> uh, for this issue, I think uh, we support uh, uh, our PMC to, uh, uh, to 
focus in the, the, the area priority in biodiversity, uh, climate change, and also uh, uh, reduction for uh, waste and pollution. Uh, but the, the, the three components, I think, not alone. This is must be integrated. For example, biodiversity also, in, uh, they are linked with, with uh, climate change. Also, they are linked with, uh, with uh, reduction of waste and pollution. Uh, to work together for, for, to, to integrate the, the, the uh, three areas based on our, 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 our fuse integrated coastal uh, management. This is very important to, to, to work together. For this issue, I think uh, the, 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 the issue in, in specific area, for example, uh, issue for uh, climate change must be also uh, synergist with, 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 with issue uh, 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 based on integrated coastal management. Uh, for this issue, I think uh, uh, issue for climate, for, for example, a focus for, for uh, issue for vulnerable, for example, yes. This is also for, for resilient, this is the adaptation uh, issue. This is very, very important. It compare with, uh, with uh, target mitigation like uh, shifting like like this yeah i think this is our 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 our, our, our perspective for 2030 uh, for for uh, our scope operation uh, how to achieve uh, the the target uh, in the global for SDGs, for climate also for biodiversity how to integrate this 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 uh, this uh, area to, to integrate it, uh, biodiversity climate also was reduction based on the the, the, the perspective integrated coastal management Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, thank you, Padida, for that very, very uh, uh, for your inputs. Uh, definitely, you have confirmed uh, that the the priority targets that we are aiming until 2030 are in line with uh, also with Indonesia's uh, plans and programs in relation to biodiversity conservation, climate change, and pollution reduction. And I think uh, our our horizon is up to 2030 because that's when the SDGs will be uh, will be completed. And we do agree with you that there should be an integration and that these uh, different management programs should not be taken in in silos, should not be considered in silos, but they should be integrated. So I think uh, the the framework that we have been using actually showed where integration can happen at the regional level, national level, and local level. Uh, thank you for your input. So uh, you have confirmed that the strategy that we use in prioritizing the activities uh, is uh, adequate and relevant uh, for Indonesia. Thank you. Okay, so uh, can we invite Lao PDR to, to provide their comments and inputs to the, to the question on the strategy? Yes. Good morning, Nancy. Good morning. Bye. Yes, uh, I am on behalf of uh, Diva with advice from Dr. Interview with, with me here. So first of all, I would like to agree with the Indonesia uh, comments about the strategy. So we uh, target for the biodiversity and climate change for the, uh, for the next uh, strategy. But uh, I would like to highlight about the gender mainstreaming. I'm not sure if it is uh, under which priority, which uh, strategy. So gender mainstreaming is, is the one of the um, important aspect right now. And uh, as Lao is the landlocked country, we don't have marines and sea, so we also think it big some big strategy that will cover uh, river basin management. Yes, I think that's that is for uh, for now for the comments. So if I have more, then I will come up to the to the floor. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Miss Ban. Uh, so as as Miss Ban highlighted, uh, Lao PDR is a landlocked country. Uh, but they are part of the TEMSI partnership because we are connected to Laos through the international river, river system, uh, which connect uh, several countries in the region. So we have been doing uh, river basin management, water conservation programs in Laos. And uh, okay, we take note, uh, Laos, um, Ms. Ban mentioned, highlighted the 
uh, the importance of gender mainstreaming into the plans and programs that we are implementing. And, and, and she also confirmed that the strategy that we use in prioritizing the activities is uh, adequate and relevant for the region and for the country specific context. Uh, thank you, Ms. Van. Okay, so may, may we move on and invite uh, Philippines uh, to, to provide their, their additional inputs uh, in addition to USECTE, because I think USECTE has highlighted a number of uh, important areas that we need to consider in developing the roadmap. So I, she um, identified a number of challenges as well as provided uh, specific directions in terms of programming in relation to blue economy in uh, promoting climate resiliency in addressing the COVID pandemic, uh, <clears throat> pursuing a low carbon path, uh, addressing marine litter, uh, promoting sustainable consumption and production and green recovery. So, okay, Philippines, please. Uh, good morning, Ms. Nancy. I am Arvita Andres from the Biodiversity Management Bureau. I'm pleased to attend for the first time a partnership meeting. <laughs> Welcome, Ms. And uh, we fully embrace and support what USECTE has mentioned earlier. Uh, but uh, we would like to support also the um, uh, intervention by Indonesia that we need to ensure the synergy among these multilateral environmental agreements on biodiversity, climate change, and also um, uh, uh, at the national level, we are uh, uh, pleased to say that this is uh, truly uh, uh, complementing our current program on coastal and marine ecosystems management program. Uh, and. Um, Right now, uh, we are about to, um, to update our National Biodiversity Strategy and Action Plan. So whatever will be uh, discussed here, we'll be able to consider in the updating process, uh, uh, given the post-2020 biodiversity framework discussion at the Convention on Biological Diversity. I think uh, those uh, are the inputs uh, coming from our end. Thank you, Paul, Ms. Nancy. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Ms. Nenning, and, and well noted uh, on your point, that, uh, in support of Indonesia's point also that we need to ensure synergy of the different uh, multilateral environmental agreements, uh, since these are all uh, interconnected and, and related. And uh, we also take note of the updating of the PBSAP uh, in consideration of the post uh, 2020 biodiversity framework, which we also hope to be able to capture in the in the roadmap. Uh, thank you, thank you for that. Uh, okay, so may may we invite Timor Leste to, to provide their comments on question one. Uh, Mr. Celestino, good morning. Are you are you with us? Are you in this group? Uh, maybe if not, can we move in the meantime to Vietnam while waiting for Timur Leste? Hello. Hello. Ah, good morning, Mr. Celestino. Please. Hello. Yes, yes. there is Celestino. Yes. We can hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am not. Uh, what is the uh, voice is uh, not clear from here. Oh. But I try to, what is it, to talk. This is uh, my perspective from the uh, uh, Timor-Leste country is, uh, you know, uh, our mission is the uh, ICM is calling up, uh, up. In, 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 in coastal area in Timor-Leste side, yeah. But, uh, we lend it back to all the, what is the prioritized into for the PMC in, in terms of the biodiversity con conservation yes. management, and then what is the pollution reduction, capacity building, and then ocean governance, 
and then blue economy uh, on my my perspective is uh, like uh, one country is uh, what is a difference between Timor Leste in Indonesia and also uh, what is the and another college from the uh, each country yeah? like uh, Laos, Myanmar, Vietnam yeah this is a very 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 what is the difference situation, situation and condition real in the in the in the each country that's why I'm before that we what is a make the what is a analyze the depot yeah to before that we the the put the program and then to implementation for example i like the comment from here uh, like uh, what is the ocean governance and strategy partnership is a uh, we must, you know, that the uh, uh, implementation of the activity in each country different. Like uh, Timor Leste is many, many activity from the different partners. Yeah? That's why we must be before, before that uh, we must be, what is a, uh, analyze value, variants uh, the activity from the our partners can 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 you hear me please yes 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 yeah. uh, yes sir and uh, what is it like uh, in solution also yeah Pollution and then uh, what is it? Capacity building, yeah. Different from the national level and then local level is a uh, what is it? capability is a uh, different. Uh, before that, we must be what is a uh, like a uh, assessment eh? before we 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 implement it. I think this is what. Thank you. Uh, th thank you, Mr. Celestino, for your inputs. Uh, uh, if I may summarize, so you highlighted that Timor Leste has a different context and situation compared to other countries. Uh, we have been a partner, Timor Leste has been a partner of PEMSI, and uh, as you have highlighted, uh, ICM implementation and scaling up is one of your priority targets. And uh, I think we have provided. Uh, uh, or we have generated the necessary experience in three areas in Timor-Leste, in Likisa, in Manatutu, and in Dili, uh, where we can uh, scale up and um, share the best practices that were generated in, this, in these areas. So I think uh, uh, in response to your point of, in response to your, sorry, Government and local government. Okay. Can, can I add something information? Yes, okay. Yeah, and also, you know, also uh, from the you talk about the local, uh, what is the governance? Uh, is uh, before I, 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 I hear uh, this uh, may, uh, expansion, expansion, eh? expansion area for the local government. Mm -hmm. Replication area or yeah, replication yeah. area. Yes, this is, uh, yes, I I very very interesting this one. Mm -hmm. uh, how to uh, implement it for the until the two, 2030. 30, yes, is it more more than local government? Not mm -hmm. uh, like in Timor Leste, not just just uh, like now is currently three municipality, but uh, we more we want to move uh, what is the uh, a little bit eh? Mm -hmm. uh, more from the three three municipality. Okay, uh, under the Jeff uh, UNDP SDS SEA project that uh, also where Timor Leste was also one of the beneficiary countries. I think we uh, facilitated uh, we helped Timor Leste in developing the national ocean policy 
and implementation plan. And I think if the, uh, those documents will be adopted by the government, it will facilitate ICM scaling up. But uh, for the purposes of our discussion, uh, we take note uh, of your point that uh, to, to take into consideration uh, Timor Leste's different context and situation compared to other countries. So we usually like do some mix, incorporate some adjustments on the level of activities and capacity building uh, that we uh, that we implement in Timor Leste, and we will take note of that in developing the yeah. roadmap. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Very thank much. you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, so moving on, uh, can we invite Vietnam to, to also provide their, their comments and inputs to the discussion? Hi, hi Nancy. Can Hello. you hear me? Yes, <laughs> loud and clear. Yes, okay. I'm sorry that I cannot uh, join your meeting from the beginning. Uh, because I am just go to the hospital for vaccinate. So, uh, for from on behalf of of Basi, I think the proposed content is uh, quite suitable for also for Vietnam context. Uh, currently, now we um we uh, priority to implement the marine um economic development strategy, and we also uh promote the um, uh, management of ocean and uh, ocean and marine plastic waste and I, can you hear me yes yes hello yes and we can hear you hello voice. okay can, can uh, so so uh, i think now we um, we also develop the new uh, marine strategy and we also integrated uh, icm on that so I think uh, we I think we need we need to pri priority the ICM uh, activity with the uh, other partner country partner in the PMC in in uh, future. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that, Miss uh, Miss Nguyen, <laughs> not one. <laughs> Okay, so Ms. Wan highlighted the uh, ex existence of, the, of Vietnam's uh, marine economic development strategy, I think for 2030 until 2045, right? And uh, definitely the, the, this long-term strategy uh, is aligned uh, to the SDSSEA's vision. And uh, in addition to this long-term uh, strategy in achieving a sustainable marine economic development in the entire coastline of Vietnam, they also have uh, specific plans or national plans of action on marine plastics. So uh, we we uh, we will look into the into the details of the marine uh, economic development strategy and to see uh, uh, which among the yes component uh, strategies or action programs uh, that might be of relevance to the SDS SEA uh, so that we can we can also capture it in the roadmap. Thank you. Thank you for that. Okay, so I think there is an overlap in our discussion actually. So we're just <laughs> we're still discussing supposedly uh, question one, but I think some of the inputs from the countries already covered uh, question number two. Uh, question number two, actually- I'm I think what is here, uh, could you please, what is here, give a chance a few minutes to my colleague, or to Mr. Rodset. Uh, okay. Uh, because what is here, Dr. Van, he's not available right now. Okay. So I think it was the uh, set, can you uh, highlight a bit what you know, there will be the uh, general issue on climate change, whereas what is it, we have a pro uh, very appropriated document okay. on 2020, uh, 20, uh, 2020 into 2020, 30, uh, 2030 on the climate change, we have prepared what document and also concern to biodiversity, what we have the uh, so some geo planning, what you can, can you hide uh, uh, about that? And then plus the marine plastic that what you wish, wish to aid it. Could you please, Ratsit? So, so, mm. so thank you, thank you, Mr. Long. Uh, 
Are there additional inputs from Cambodia? Yes. Yes, please, Seth. Thank, thank you, Mr. Long you know, for allowing, allowing me to you know, speak up uh, in terms of the lucidity issues because I'm not much familiar with biodiversity conservation. As, as I know that, you know, under the, the UNCLOS, that recently, uh, I think, in the region, uh, collected the input for the protection of biodiversity beyond the national traditions. Then the biodiversity is uh, one among the party concerns in regions that not only in the our territory but also in the EZ. So as far as uh, we extend to this uh, action point, then I think Cambodia uh, currently we are collecting information on the marine uh, plastic debris and also we going to develop the national regulation on. Uh, how to address the sound waste measurement of uh, marine plastics uh, as well as in terrestrial, you know, uh, plastic waste, including revealing, revealing you know, uh, uh, plastic leakage as well. So that is why uh, I think uh, the strategy, uh, the C strategy to the 2030 is aligned with the Cambodian, you know, uh, the initiative and, you know, action to be taken uh, till the 2030s. So Cambodian agree with uh, the action proposed by the, the region uh, about the uh, SDSC uh, to the 2030. And uh, more of this, Cambodian would like to know more or study about the fate of the marine uh, you know, plastic, including the uh, uh, fishing gear where we found that uh, most of these uh, Cambodian uh, plastic uh, pollutions uh, are mostly involved with the you know, fishing gear and plan, uh, up to uh, 80%. And then the rest is uh, the plastic bag or land-based pollution that comes with about 20% that are fed to biodiversity. So in this regard, uh, I think uh, the capacity of being uh, or extra curriculum uh, should be applied uh, at the coastal area uh, where the student and the public in general have to have a special you know, learning and training program on how we can prevent the uh, land-based pollution uh, as well as uh, the clean-up activity should be taken by the local you know, uh, peoples uh, uh, and also we need the extending uh, training programs and awareness raising for the tourists because the uh, tourist industry become growing as in not only Cambodian but uh, within the region as well, uh, go to the uh, beach and the islands. So the tourists are doing along with uh, not only the pollution but also disease as well. That is why a common capable disease uh, need to be uh, covered this strategy. Uh, as an example, the, the COVID-19 is a good experience of the uh, a good experience uh, for us to be prevention of other diseases that only human to human, but also human to biodiversity. So far, we mentioned about the biodiversity where that bring the cause disease to human, but for the in terms of biodiversity diversity conservation, and human brain disease to biodiversity also another concern because we can carry a lot of, you know, uh, you know pathogen into the soil area as well. So I don't know really in detail about the action plan, but I think point of uh, communication disease will be covered in the strategy as well if uh, it's not, you know, uh, uh, talking before. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you, Mr. Roth, for your uh, additional inputs. Uh, let me see. I think I was not able to clearly capture what you mentioned about uh, UNCLOS, uh, but you you mentioned uh, a number of issues in relation to marine debris and marine plastics. And uh, based on my presentation, I think uh, I, I've highlighted that the region is actually facing a, a crisis in terms of addressing uh, marine plastics pollution. And, 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 and as a consequence, actually, and there are a lot of opportunities for 
uh, donor projects as well as of course uh, um, the uh, country's response also to, to addressing the uh, marine debris problem in relation also to the regional plan of action of the ASEAN in addressing marine debris. And so uh, we will take into consideration your, your inputs, uh, particularly highlighting that fishing gears comprise 80% of your uh, marine litter and single-use plastics uh, from land-based sources, 20%, and as well as your need for training and uh, capacity development uh, for, for to address the, the, the problem. Uh, we also take note of the uh, impacts of the tourism activities, particularly in the islands. And uh, yeah, so we will, we will include that in our, in our notes and, uh, and we'll take it into consideration during the formulation of the, the roadmap. Hello, Nancy. Yes. Nancy. Right now, Dr. Van uh, already back to the uh, room. Yes. <laughs> would like to add what about this, the uh, comprehensive plan okay. of managing and biodiversity? Mm -hmm. Could you please, uh, Dr. Van? Uh, Nancy, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, Dr. Monini. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Mm. I uh, think that regarding to the question one, I think it, it mostly. Uh, um, strategy that you prefer uh, until to 2030. I think that is really aligned with what uh, Cambodia, especially uh, Ministry of Environment, are doing. So, one, we uh, uh, talk about the uh, uh, legal legal aspect. We we are now uh, under finalization of environment. The code. And uh, also, the, we call the urbanization law. This urbanization law also includes the chapter of the coastal management uh, 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 sector as well. So um, I think it's important that we um, are now under um, uh, well prepare how to define clear on the uh, coastal area in Cambodia. Uh, regarding to the um, uh, strategy, uh, planning, uh, policy, we, we also now uh, preparation or develop uh, of the uh, payment ecosystem. Yeah, payment ecosystem also the one that we uh, try to uh, make sure that Cambodia has been uh, take uh, 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 measure on or take action on the uh, natural uh, based uh, solution for the uh, biodiversity as well. And then at the same time, we also update the action plan with the uh, idea of the uh, preparing also the road, uh, biodiversity roadmap. And regarding to the uh, climate change, of course, uh, as uh, you are aware of the Cambodia has the, the Cambodian uh, climate change strategy and up to uh, 2023. And we are now trying to um, uh, scaling up and review into the, we call the uh, long-term uh, strategy on carbon uh, neutral. So this one will ask to the so uh, uh, climate change of course there are too many uh, uh, activity right now at the national level or at the at the uh, local level or sub national level. But anyway, I think this is the important that we uh, are going to to do. Uh, with the uh, long-term strategy for uh, climate change. So uh, Cambodia, uh, I think leading the, uh, also with the uh, uh, key ministry to uh, develop further on how the uh, climate change uh, strategy for the sector approach, the sector uh, uh, ministry. Like we have a 14 ministry has been developed the uh, sector, the climate change into the, the, the ministry already. So uh, I think this is good in advance that all at the national level uh, has been uh, developed by sector, uh, strategy and sector uh, action plan into the 
the uh, the ministry and also the for the sub national level. So to make a mainstreaming the uh, climate change into the um, we call the commune council development plan. So commune council development plan is very important to look at the uh, local uh, government levels that that can assist can help the um, our local people to adapt adoption of how the climate change impact from 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 the, the climate. So um, the we are, we also now uh, try uh, uh, to 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 implement the uh, we have already uh, an, uh, launching the uh, we, uh, we call a circular economy strategy. So circular uh, circular economy strategy also the one that we are uh, taking the lead with the. Uh, as uh, Ratset already said about the plastic waste, uh, mostly we look into this uh, uh, circular economy strategy that we already launched in the uh, last few uh, uh, weeks ago. And I think on the area of the, uh, the waste management, especially the plastic, plastic waste. Uh, and do in this so we uh, are uh, in the developing they we call the green building uh, guideline so this is a, a one of the uh, our uh, method for the ministry to reuse the greenhouse gas from the building uh, 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 aspects by it apply of how the guideline or green building guideline has been uh, developed and we have one more with that the uh, uh, we call the uh, strategic plan for the uh, city. So uh, this is also include the uh, coastal city as well. So we, we include with the uh, cap and also the city. We call the strategic plan for sustainable city. So this is the one that we has been the um, uh, adapted already and we, we, we will take time for launching with how the, uh, the, the city has been uh, complied with this uh, strategy plan. So I think mostly uh, if we're talking about the um, biodiversity and climate change and one more that we uh, think that we, we, we should do also, uh, I mean the public awareness is very important that we, we are not now uh, this is focused here to to the uh, strategically uh, communication between the uh, national sub national level and the community level. So all the um, uh, knowledge and information regarding to the environment has been really uh, spread to the our community because. You know, during the pandemic, uh, uh, COVID pandemic, we can see all the people from the city going to the ecotourism area, especially in the city area. So uh, this is very uh, a movement from what the, we can see the people are now more understanding, more love with them. And the, uh, the big problem is after the uh, visit there, and then of course the waste also generated. This is the point that we need to make sure that how we can improve the uh, waste the, at the local community level or at the local ecotourism uh, area. So this is the something that Cambodia is moving on. So thank you for um, uh, uh, this. But yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Dr. Molinot, for your very significant input. So you have raised uh, a, a lot of, of uh, you have provided us a lot of information on, on Cambodia's plans, uh, strategic plans and programs in relation to climate change and to biodiversity conservation and uh, the circular economy pollution reduction, uh, particularly focusing on, on, on plastics or marine plastic waste. Uh, I think we are covering actually questions one, two, and three uh, simultaneously. Uh, 
if, if any of the countries would like to jump in or chime in, please please feel free to do so. But I, I think what we are hearing now is, okay, at the national level, there are uh, legal mechanisms as well as plans, long-term uh, plans and programs, uh, not only in response to our commitments to international conventions, but also uh, in response to the emerging problems of, cli of, of climate change, uh, marine plastics, and, and so on. Uh, and uh, I think uh, what we might be needing from you is how, will, how can we access uh, these documents if the, these are already published or if not, uh, will you be able to share the draft to us uh, if they are in English <laughs> uh, or at least an outline of what uh, these uh, plants and programs contain in terms of uh, you know, ocean and coastal governance and, and how, uh, how they are linked to the sustainable development strategy. Uh, for the seas of East Asia, and, I, and as I mentioned, these are uh, the, the SDSC just provides the framework and uh, like a, a platform for for uh, consolidation all of the country country uh, accomplishments and and uh, plans for the next uh, ten years. Uh, so I think we should be able to to get additional information. But thank you very much for your input. So can uh, are there additional inputs from the other countries? Uh, I think for the Philippines, I am from the Philippines, so I think uh, I am aware of the different plans and programs and coastal and marine management, as well as the upcoming uh, projects that the Philippines will be involved in relation to, for instance, marine protected area management and networking and, and so on. Thank you. Uh, I think we need to break for lunch. Uh, it's already 12.03. And according to the program, we're supposed to have a lunch break uh, from 12 o'clock to 1 p.m. Uh, we will convene at 1 p.m. probably to, to, to consolidate our, our, uh, the, the highlights from our discussion before we proceed to the plenary. Uh, maybe when we return, we can discuss the, the the convening of the technical working group and how we can engage our country partners in the process of formulating the, the implementation plan. Ms. Nancy? Yes, ma'am. Ma yeah, I just would like to know if, maybe I missed it, but uh, just the information that uh, we are looking at new direction for our ICM, and that's mm -hmm. for a mainstreaming actually in the locally mandated plans. Maybe this has been mentioned already, but uh, I just want to highlight it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes. Th thank you. Thank you, Ma'am Nelling. Uh, okay, so for the, the information of our other country partners, so in the Philippines, uh, we are, uh, our discussions are ongoing in terms of mainstreaming integrated uh, coastal management into the local planning, uh, local planning development and investment. Uh, process of local government. Uh, and I think this is a, a, a very good development uh, uh, for the Philippines uh, for having been like in, in ICM business for like the, for the past uh, uh, three or four decades. And I, I think uh, uh, there are also a lot, an, a number of developments in other countries, but uh, as, as mentioned by Timor Leste a while ago, we have different contexts and situation but then there are also common elements that we need to, to also uh, look at across the, the country so that uh, when we discuss about ICM implementation, uh, whether in Indonesia, in Cambodia, in Timor-Leste, in the Philippines, or in Vietnam, uh, we are talking of the same, same uh, process with common elements, but probably there are some, uh, some um, uniqueness in each of our programs, but there are common elements that we may need to, to consider. So uh, with that, maybe we should uh, break for lunch and uh, we will um, resume at 1 p.m., Karen. Yes. Okay. May we know if the representatives from Vietnam are already here? Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, perhaps you can already proceed to the continuation of the breakout session since we still have one or two or rather two more questions that we need to cover. 
uh, perhaps you can go on without Vietnam since we were able to get their preliminary inputs already. Uh, Nance, over to you as the facilitator. Okay, uh, thank you, Karen. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to our uh, session. Uh, so uh, from the inputs, uh, from, the, from this morning's discussion, uh, Karen actually tried to consolidate uh, our inputs as shown in the table. Do you want to review it? Because we will be presenting this to the, to the plenary uh, when we reconvene at, at 1.30 p.m. And, and as Karen mentioned, uh, there are two more questions that we would like uh, to receive inputs from the countries. Uh, one is on the creation of the technical working group and uh, another one is uh, in, the, in, the, in the roadmap that, uh, that I presented uh, this morning, uh, there are a number of activities or action points uh, on PEMC, on, the, on PRF in particular, on the PEMC resource facilities role in, in, uh, in SDS, in coordinating uh, SDS, SDA implementation uh, through provision of technical and, and uh, secretariat services to the countries. Uh, so I think to some extent, the, the role of PEMC as uh, secretariat to the council uh, is very clear, but are there other, other uh, role that you might probably think PMC or PRF can take on aside from the current one? So those are the two questions that we would like to uh, receive additional inputs from the countries. So may we invite uh, feedback from the countries? So for the, sorry, for the technical working group, uh, we will have a core team comprising of uh, the two technical session chairs, Dr. O and Dr. Kurokawa, and MC will provide the necessary technical and secretariat support. So, uh, but we would like the engagement of the countries in the formulation of the implementation plan and roadmap, but on an ad hoc or voluntary basis only. Uh, we recognize that uh, the country representatives are busy and so, uh, we will be developing uh, a work plan for the formulation of the implementation plan so that we know exactly when uh, the consultations may <clears throat> excuse me, take place uh, so that you can calendar them in case uh, you will be invited to provide inputs on very specific aspects of the implementation plan. So, okay. Uh, yeah, we'd like to open the floor now for uh, Thank you. Perhaps we can start uh, alphabetically with Cambodia. Mr. Long, Mr. Amida, uh, do you have any comments on the uh, proposed summary of inputs from a while ago? And perhaps on Nancy's questions on the technical working group? Okay. I think it was there. I will start what is there on that. I hope that was there. My colleague also add or be uh, put some more information if I miss something. Uh, right. Related to the uh, technical working group, what they established for the uh, to the uh, to lead uh, development of the uh, sustainable development of the Sea of East Asia, 2023 and 2027. I uh, support of this what they see a uh, program. And I think a technical working group are very uh, beneficial and very fruitful to the uh, implementing of the SDS ATA. In the past, we did already, we got a success on this. And without this a technical working group, I think it's also, uh, you know, we floating without direction. Uh, and uh, as you know, that was a uh, local government need a uh, support from that. Not only this uh, national working group and also a technical working group, what is here from, uh, I mean, a PRF uh, should be with there uh, to be, uh, you know, bring up and also the uh, 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 put them in the, uh, uh, the same level as the other country. I, I think that was it we need and also that we need a roadmap, a good roadmap. And by the time uh, we should aware also this uh, pandemic uh, virus. So that what is the, uh, to make sure that what we reach the, the, the target. But something like today, so we are afraid that what is the, uh, the, the, 
the target we cannot uh, achieve it we cannot get the to to that what the uh, point 2030 so related to this number two the core team will be comprised of the team concession chair co-chair i think you see yes okay so uh, from my side what is the i support and the, i would like to see that was the uh, technical working group uh, you know uh, working at the grassroots level so to make sure the uh, the local government can move up particularly with that i would like to see a uh, you know uh, duplication and replication to the other side not only the sihanoukville i think but by by the other uh, uh, chance so the other what, three provinces what can 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 uh, implementing the icm the demo, uh, demonstration site as a Sihano bill. So right now, uh, we uh, all, the whole coastline be implemented, but uh, the other three provinces are still not the level of the Sihano bill yet. So we will see. We wish to see that what is the, the bring up through this uh, program. So I have now, and the, uh, I stop now. What is it? I hope what is here maybe what the, my colleague would edit something on this. Point. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Long. Uh, I, I would just like to clarify that the working group will be uh, established purposely for the, create, for the formulation of the implementation plan. Uh, but in turn, in, ter, in re reference to your point of supporting the replication of ICM uh, in not only in Sihanoukville, but also in Kampot, in Kep, and Kokong. Right. Yes, yes. Uh, yes, we will, of course, we will keep a uh, uh, component of the implementation plan on ICM scaling up because that's our flagship program. So we will take note of your uh, point to provide uh, continuing assistance to the other provinces that have not yeah. reached the, you know, Sihanoukville level yet. Thank you. Yeah. But would you be willing to be uh, a voluntary <laughs> member of the TWG? Uh, with that, I afraid that what is at the moment because the uh, the uh, number of the uh, uh, knowledge skill person from the Ministry of Environment still limited, you know, on that. So yes. I I afraid that was what I uh, uh, say that was it will be what the volunteer or not or something because I would like to say that was a still limited technical uh, expert or be a technical person. From the MOE so far, yeah. And, and, yeah, and also uh, Cambodia is hosting the 2021 East Asian Seas Congress. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so uh, can we invite Cambodia? Ah, no, Indonesia, I would say. Padida. <laughs> okay, thank you, Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes, uh, I think. Uh, in the effort preparation uh, to align uh, uh, SDAC uh, 2023 until 2027 uh, with the PMC roadmap to 2030. Yeah, so I think very important to ask our colleague PMC to uh, sit together uh, by technical uh, discuss uh, for uh, development the SDAC. Uh, this is different because, because we must be detail uh, technical how to stock taking information, uh, also how to to inventory uh, uh, among countries. Uh, this is very important to for us to know the 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 the, 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 the not 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 leveling, but the the the. the the circumstances in in its country, yeah, uh, the different with uh, other countries, uh, and also the the the, the priority and the concern. This is very important uh, for a technical working group to stock take information uh, in the the first time. After that, uh, develop uh, for the next uh, SDSC uh, with align with the PMC roadmap. Uh, for the establishing, I think the important point how. To member uh, in technical working group, this is must be endorsed for national focal points in each country, uh, and for our reason, how to link with the the the, the national uh, priority for for 
for the, the implementation the, the technical working group. Uh, this is uh, very important for us to develop term of reference for a work uh, technical working group. Uh, this is this is uh, the, the, the 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 very important that we have in in, in this test, uh, critical to 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 move yeah uh, with with uh, a new uh, design for SDSC 2023 20, until 2027 and in the same time also with, in line with PEMC roadmap to 2030. I think the first time this must be developed term of reference for technical working group. After that, we uh, uh, consider who representative for each country to nominate in technical working group. Thank you, Nancy. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Padida. Actually, Padida uh, elaborated on the process that we actually uh, applied in the in past uh, uh, discussions on updating the implementation plan or the SDS SEA. So anyway, okay. So Padida highlighted the need for a uh, terms of reference of the technical working group, and then uh, we will send uh, our request to the national focal point uh, for endorsement and uh, identification of appropriate uh, representative from the countries to be part of the working group. Thank you, thank you, Padida. We take note of that uh, suggestion. Uh, who's next? Uh, can, we, can we invite Lau uh, Van or Dr. Intabi? Yes, I will be representative of him <laughs> again. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> because he, he designed me to representative. Okay. Yes. Uh, about uh, creating the technical working group. Um, in general, yes, we are agree, but, but um, in terms of our country, even we create a new, new, new group, but still, uh, I think still uh, national focal point will, will be there. I mean, or whatever new group, but still uh, same person to, to work with the with the from yeah. MC and um, yeah partners. Uh, country. But in general, yes, we agree. Okay. Uh, yes, but may, may I get back to, to the uh, morning sessions? I have sent the, the dialect message to Kalyan, so please consider about that as well. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, yeah, just that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Van. So uh, same suggestion. Uh, that we will course the request for a nomination of representative to the national focal point. And again, the need for a POR is, is, uh, is uh, important <laughs> to delineate the roles and responsibilities of the members of the TWG. But as I think I have I highlighted this morning that uh, uh, we would have wanted volunteers only to serve on an ad hoc basis, but uh, but as, as suggested by Indonesia and Laos, so we will go through the formal process of establishing the uh, technical working group. Thank you. Uh, Philippines, uh, may in, we invite Philippines? Good afternoon again, Ms. Nancy. I'm okay with the creation of PWG, but just like uh, the Indonesia, we need to have the roles and roles and responsibilities or the TOR and we also would like to know the level of representation uh, is it director level or uh, technical staff and uh, we just would like to uh, express our continued support to PMC. Okay, thank you for thank you thank you thank you ma'am Neneng um, thank you very much so uh, Philippines also uh, supported uh, Indonesia and Laos suggestion to have a clear delineation of the rules and responsibilities of the members of the technical working group. And as to the level of representation, I think for the technical discussions on the management programs in particular, I think we would need uh, staff, technical staff who are uh, familiar uh, of their plans and programs of instance D and R. <clears throat> and, but for uh, some of the discussions on governance programs, I think uh, director level would be, uh, would be uh, appropriate. Uh, uh, but any, but we, we, can, we can discuss that later on once the TOR is, is in place. Uh, thank you, thank you, Ms. Nenning. 
Okay, so moving on to Timor Leste, please. Yes, Timor Leste is here. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. 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 Yeah, I just, uh, I just, uh, what is the reminder that, uh, uh, on Timor Leste, you know, uh, technical working group already established yeah, in the three municipality. Yeah. Uh, until the uh, sub district, you know, sub, sub, sub district already established. We hope that uh, on the new implementation, we hope that we, we, we expand the area not for the three municipality, but uh, we, we, we hope that uh, more than uh, three. This, this is a first. And second is the, for the communication, good communication, we'd like to, uh, what is the, uh, add some person from the, our side is uh, what is the technical, from the what is the civil servant for the uh, in fisheries side, we hope uh, we want to put what is contact person more than two person for the better uh, communication between national level, local level, and then for the regional level. That's it from the Timor Leste suggestion. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Mr. Celestino. Okay, so. There are existing technical working groups in the three municipalities. And again, uh, Mr. Celestino reiterated the, uh, the replication of or uh, developing in ICM implementation in other yeah. areas beyond the three sites that uh, we have uh, initiated uh, some activities on uh, communication, uh, to improve communication between the regional, national, and local level. And, uh, but in, in relation to our discussion on the technical working group, uh, would the existing PWG that you mentioned, uh, would they be appropriate to be part of this regional technical working group to discuss the formulation of the uh, 2030 roadmap or should it be at the national focal point level? I think, uh... Uh, in terms of the focal point national level is existing now yeah. and then we would like to put more than on the what is it cited uh, on under the under the focal point we have a put want to plan to put what is a contact person um, to okay. facilitate it and then contact contact person and then communicate with the national level to regional level. Okay, so we are, you are highlighting the coordination and integration between national and local level in the case of Timor. Uh, we will yeah. take note of that. And uh, as since the three countries or four countries have already recommended to develop the TOR, and communicate the, our request to for uh, representation to the technical working group, group through the national focal point. So we will also do that for Timor Leste, but we will also take note of your uh, inputs uh, regarding the existence of the PWG for the three sites in Nikisa, in Manatoto, and Dili. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Celeste. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so our uh, last but not the least, Vietnam, please. Uh, I think Vietnam is still on break. Uh, I just got a message from Juan. Uh -huh. oh. Yes, so I think you can proceed with them and just ask them on their inputs on the TWG2 email. But so far, it seems that to proceed with the creation of the TWG, we will definitely need to undergo a formal process, including the creation of the TOR. As, uh, as done in previous uh, engagements. Okay, so uh, I think we have been able to cover at least the four questions, although we will be needing additional inputs from the countries, particularly for the plans 
and programs on governance on ocean and coastal governance as well as the management programs uh, that they are implementing or planning to implement until 2030 but uh, for the purposes of our discussion we have already received uh, indications of support and thank you to all of the six countries who are here in this session and i think uh karen so uh, do, do we do we still have time to review slide two? Yes. Um, if there are uh, any additional input, uh, earlier I heard Lau uh, would like to add their written inputs in this matrix. So, so far, I've added it as the last bullet here pertaining to their past SDSC activities that they would like to build on. I can just expound on it later on during the plenary. Perhaps other countries may have other things they would like to add or note in this matrix. Uh, perhaps from Cambodia, just to um, do a roll call, Cambodia is this, uh, will this suffice? Mr. Long um, or Dr. Manimit, if you're there. Yes, I'm here. Yes, Mr. Long, uh, will this matrix suffice, uh, especially on the Cambodia side? Um, we noted your um, inputs, especially on Cambodia's intent to advance payments for ecosystem services and the building of sustainable cities. Are there other things that you would like for us to note? With that, I would like to uh, invite what is it, Dr. Van to, to express his view on this issue. Dr. Van, can you please? I think I, if, my, if I may intervene, I think Dr. Van has provided uh, significant inputs uh, in her previous intervention. Uh, for the interest of time, it's already 1.32, and I think we are expected to convene for the plenary at 1.30, Karen. Yes, okay. Yeah. Perhaps we can revisit some of these statements during the plenary itself, if ever okay. there are additional input. Okay. Yes. Okay. So uh, thank you. Thank you very much for your inputs. Uh, we will definitely <laughs> continue working with you uh, over the next few months in the formulation of the uh, implementation plan. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Nancy by the time I would like to request, what is you, would you please, would you know, sharing the document uh, with us before that we starting, okay? Yes, yes, yeah. definitely. Yes. Uh, yeah. The, the outputs from this uh, session will also be included in the proceedings, Karen, no? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Okay. So you okay. can still provide uh, inputs, additional inputs if, if necessary. Uh -huh. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, since everyone's here, shall Hello, we... good morning. Hi, good morning. Uh, shall we proceed? It. Okay, yeah. so uh, thank you very much. Uh, let's start. Uh, so uh, this is the group four. Uh, I will be facilitating uh, this group, uh, mostly uh, consists of the PNLC, PNLG, and then uh, uh, PRF, and then also uh, I saw here the uh, uh, our colleague from Seattle Field, yeah, and then. Uh, we will Mas, have a... Uh, Mas, hold on, please. I'll just ask uh, Jan, who is recording? Jan, I, are you recording? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jan. Uh, so, we will have a representative from PNLC, PNLG, and then also uh, the, the observer. So, uh, First, uh, let's uh, in, uh, do the introductions uh, among ourselves. Yeah. So first, uh, myself, Handoko Adisusanto from the uh, Arafura and Timor Seas Ecosystem Action Programs under GF, uh, UNDP, and uh, PEMC uh, partnership. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, my colleagues, Ingrid, can you uh, introduce yourself, Ingrid? 
Yes, thank you, Ms. Han. So um, I think uh, all of them know me to be part of a PRF, <laughs> a country program manager for Indonesia, Thailand, and Timor-Leste. But I just want to share that now I am also working with the ATSI2 program with uh, Ms. Han Doko here as a policy and result-based uh, management specialist for the ATSI2 project. Thank you, Ms. Han. Uh, you have two legs, yeah? Or maybe more than that. <laughs> 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 so, uh, <laughs> Ingrid will be our uh, breakout session. Our uh, note taker or uh, transcriber, Jan, can you introduce yourself, Jan? Yes, good morning. I'm Jan. I'm under PRF as an intern, and I will be documenting this breakout room for today. Thank you, Jan. And then uh, let's move to uh, our uh, uh, PNLC colleague, Dr. Wan Suk. Hi, I'm, I'm Wan Suk Senanan from uh, Burapha University. And um, we are a part of the PEMC Network Le of Learning Centers. Um, and I be, um, the learning centers at Burapha University has been served as a chair for the PNLC for the moment. Thank you. Thailand, Thank by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Mansuks. Move to our PNLC reps, uh, Dr. Uh, Fang. Could you introduce yourself? Hello. Uh, Hi, Dr. Fang. Hi, good morning. Uh, I'm uh, Ching Hua Fang uh, uh, from uh, Komi of Jiamen University in China. And uh, I, I'm here uh, uh, to represent uh, PLG sector here uh, this morning in, in this group. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, Fang. And then uh, let's move to uh, from the SHP. Mr. Fisal, could you introduce yourself? Mute. Unmute. Unmute, please. Um, sorry, good morning, everyone. Um, the Fisal from the um, President of Provence Hall. I'm the Director of Public Relations and International Cooperation and uh, Project Coordinator for ICM in Fresno Province. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Fisal. And let's move to uh, 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 the uh, Reggie. Reggie, could you introduce? Hello, I have the wrong virtual background. <laughs> so good morning, everyone. Uh, it's Reggie, a communication specialist. I'm uh, based in Manila. Happy to see you all here. Okay, thank you, Reggie. Thank you. And then our IT, uh, June. Hi, June. Um, hello. Good morning. Good morning to you all. I'm June. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you, June. So, uh, the group four members, uh, as guided uh, by uh, Dr. O, and then also explained by uh, Karen, the PRF Secretariat, we are discussing about six questions actually, uh, yeah, but then cover from all uh, four clusters. Ingrid, uh, can you share the screen uh, on the uh, our uh, uh, guiding uh, discussions? Yeah. Okay, Ms. Han. Okay, our discussion will focus on the uh, charting the uh, PMC 2030. Yeah? So I think uh, we can uh, discuss and then uh, you may uh, provide uh, comments, input and suggestions related to the uh, table, table 9 and Table 10 of the documents uh, 04 uh, related to the, the mapping and roadmap and then the 
uh, program adjustment of the uh, MC document. Can yes, okay. can you uh, two slides so? Okay, so uh, yeah, just to repeat that uh, this is a group four members uh, representative from PNLG, PNLC, HC, and SHP. Yeah. And then uh, in this discussion, we have about actually the effective uh, discussion may be uh, around one hour, yeah, one hour and 30 minutes. Uh, the first to review and discuss the PMC roadmap uh, to 2030, focusing on the relevance and timelines. Yeah. Uh, please uh, visit the table 9 and table 10 of the uh, uh, PC documents uh, 04, yeah, or, uh, yeah, uh, uh, or maybe. Uh, focus on the slide 28 to 32 of the uh, Nancy's uh, presentation. And then uh, we will uh, presenting uh, the highlight of the discussions yeah, later on uh, by me. So I will be uh, a double, uh, what do you call it? A double roles as the facilitator and then a rapporteur. But anyway, if uh, one of you would like to be a rapporteur, uh, I am uh, more than happy uh, to handing over to you. Okay, let's move to the next slide, please. So uh, there are uh, six questions, yeah, consists of uh, four areas. The first related to the overall uh, prioritization strategy. Yeah, I think there are three uh, strategies here, like grow, hold, and harvest, as, as explained by uh, Miss uh, Nancy, yeah. And then can you move first, uh, Ingrid, uh, the second uh, cluster question? Sorry, Mas. The next question? Yeah. Just next question first. Okay. So the second uh, cluster related to the governance and management programs, there are two questions here, yeah, uh, related to the, uh, like, uh, whether the priority activities identified in the table yeah, is adequate and responsive to our needs. Yeah. Of course, uh, from the perspective of PNLG, PNLC, and then also uh, the PRF uh, uh, vision, mission, and so on. And then uh, whether the programs also capture the priorities of uh, us, the uh, representative from the member four, for example. If no, maybe please provide us the uh, like uh, a detail of the plan or program or projects related. And then uh, the C, C cluster, can you move to the C cluster? Related to the timeline, yeah, uh, whether the timeline is also uh, uh, reasonable, yeah, uh, related, to the, related to the roadmap, and then maybe also link to our program or priorities uh, and so on. If uh, maybe we have any comment, input or suggestion related to the timeline, uh, maybe we can discuss later on. And then uh, the last uh, cluster related to the technical working group. Uh, so uh, in here, uh, uh, there will be a establishment of technical working group. We can uh, discuss uh, in the, the technical working group how to like membership of technical working group and uh, what kind of the governance uh, we would like to propose uh, with the technical working group. I think uh, that's uh, six questions, yeah. Uh, under four, what do you call it? maybe under four cluster, yeah, we are uh, discussing in this uh, member. So Ingrid, can you back to the uh, first questions related to the overall uh, prioritizations? So, and then just to remind us, uh, as mentioned by uh, uh, Karen, that uh, we use the what you call it a Chatham House rules. Uh -huh. I mean that uh, we can we can talk freely, yeah, and that we can talk because later on I will not mention uh, names who proposing this or commented uh, commenting uh, the, the uh, or answering the question and so on. 
So uh, anyone uh, who comes to, uh, or talk in the meetings is free to use information uh, from the discussion and so on. But uh, I will not mention who made the, any particular comment. So uh, I hope uh, using this Chatham's house rule, we can have uh, open discussions, everyone free to discuss, uh, and then everyone's uh, free to, to talk uh, any idea, uh, any input, any suggestion, critics, and uh, so on. I hope it's clear that uh, we are using these uh, rules. Yeah. Okay, let's move to uh, uh, questions. Uh, Number one, so on the overall prioritization strategies, yeah, grow, hold, and harvest. I think uh, Dr. O already uh, mentioned uh, whether uh, the strategy, do you find the uh, adequate and also uh, uh, sorry, whether the strategy is appropriate and adequate yeah, uh, as uh, mentioned uh, via the uh, Miss uh, Nancy Bernas uh, presentation. So in here we have uh, grow, uh, means that PEMC need to scale up or uh, we need uh, to continue and then uh, because this uh, highly impactful and effective in advancing the PEMC's uh, vision. And then another uh, strategies uh, we need to maintain, uh, or we call it hold, yeah, because it's catalytic in enabling uh, PMC uh, reach and impact. And then for the for the harvest, uh, like uh, requested to PMC to rationalize and to review, and also maybe turning over to the partner. I think uh, uh, that's the first uh, questions. And then can you move to next slide? Uh, I don't know whether we need to also uh, explain uh, again uh, the table nine and then table 10 for the discussions related to the proposed adjustment and then roadmap to 2030. Okay, I just uh, hand, uh, maybe uh, request to everyone to give a uh, uh, comment or suggestion. Whether, uh, whether we need to, again, explain the proposed adjustment and the roadmap, or we can directly uh, 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 we May I request uh, Ms. Wansu, what do you say? Uh, we need to explain uh, your perspective related to the uh, question. Okay, so question number one is the approach, right? Yeah, the, the priority. Prioritizing. Yes, yes. Um, so could, could I see the table again? So I, I think overall is is you know seem seem to to make sense but i you know see the the harvest part of pollution and and you know the harvest is more of a, a you know innovative innovation right so to to sort of uh, let's see so yes, um, I think my my when I look at this this table um, for pollution reduction and waste management, um, I, I see the monitoring, which is the strength of of you know, PEMC and the kinds of activities that is is ongoing. Um, but I could also, you know, I I, I think that it could. Um, in this area for the, you know, it's to reduce the, the po po pollution. You know, I think this is what we've seen uh, when, when applying ICM, ICM 
principles on the ground um, effective. It has to be tied to some economic activities. You know, so the collaboration among partners are, are good, but you know, to sort of reduce the amount of pollution that has been generated would, I think, some economic solution or like the the circular economy kind of concept maybe should be built into you know something that PMC do either by you know capacity building or you know something that that um, that sort of enables the reduction because the monitoring itself quite quite do it is that is that make sense so I think in that particular area, which is the strength of PMC, I think um, some considerations may be to develop some or encourage the development of, of um, tools or business models or something that would mm. capitalize on the there's so much. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how it's, it's going to get reduced, but yeah, so I, I think one, one of the comments that come to mind from looking at this table is the, the you know, part that we should have something that moving towards or have some economic incentive or try yeah. to come up with technologies or encourage some technologies that would um, also help with economic incentive of waste reduction. Okay. Okay, so maybe that's okay. it for now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, no, no. It's, uh, I think it's a good idea about the, yeah, uh, this, uh, like, the, these programs uh, should be linked to the, like, uh, the circular economy or economic uh, benefit. And I think this will be also linked to the blue economy uh, outcomes, yeah, with, uh, like, uh, zero waste, uh, and then on how we also generate uh, economic incentive. Uh, and then, uh, I don't know, maybe also related to the uh, polluter pace you know, uh, policy, something like that. Yeah. So I think should be uh, linked to the other uh, programs. Yeah. And then uh, I saw that also uh, there is a possible and then uh, really a big opportunity also to, to do the capacity building, for example, you know, uh, uh, that uh, of course related to the uh, underdeveloped uh, or development countries, yeah. And then also uh, your point related to the technology also interesting. Uh, I think uh, using the, uh, I think the, the recent uh, technology we can, on how we can use the technology to reduce we call it a marine and land-based uh, pollution. Uh, thank you. So uh, I would like invite uh, uh, Mr. F any uh, comments, suggestions, or perspective from your side, please, related to this uh, first. Okay. Uh, 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 thank you very much. Can you hear me? Okay, yes, thank clearly. You. Uh, yeah, I. Uh, I think the, uh, the priorities uh, identified and uh, and also uh, the, the 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 framework uh, and the strategy of the goal hold and the harvest. I think it's a uh, quite uh, a very very good one, and I think it's clear. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, we'll be uh, 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 we we'll guide the uh, the development of pension in uh, future years, and I, I think that will be very helpful uh, and, and very important in this region. And I look at the table and uh, and uh, uh, as the. Uh, representative of the PRG sector and also a member of uh, the founding member of the PRC and call me as the uh, regional center of excellence. Um, 
I think in the uh, the the both network, I think uh, uh, we we are happy to see the the, the important role of the P, both PNLG and the PNLC has been recognized in the in the priorities uh, for Pansy in the uh, in the roadmap to twenty thirty, and and also. Uh, 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 see the, uh, the the both PNRG and the PNRC mentioned in the knowledge man, uh, knowledge management and the capacity building, um, and with, what what mentioned here both uh, uh, including the expansion of the membership and the activities. Uh, I think that's quite important, uh, especially um, in the past years uh, at as the PNG uh, sector uh, working with the Pansy resource uh, facility, we have uh, uh, we have done a lot uh, trying to uh, expand uh, the uh, the membership, and we have seen the growing number of the uh, PNG uh, member now to uh, uh, fifty one. Uh, members, and uh, but I think that's also important uh, to, uh, at the same time to uh, pay more attention to the activities. I think uh, how to um, to to improve the uh, the networks, uh, especially the the the. the sector services to the members so that the members will uh, benefit from uh, the network. I think that is very important so that, uh, so we need uh, uh, more activities of, of the network. I think uh, uh, PRG and also uh, PRC and, and, uh, and also include the capacity building of the uh, PNG sector, and so, uh, so I, I I think there are more resources uh, is needed to achieve uh, these these uh, priorities. Uh, and more effort is needed uh, for for that. Uh, so that is why uh, uh, the first comment, and and uh, and uh, so just add some uh, one more information is about the. Uh, uh, the, uh, the the agreement between uh, Pansy and uh, and the Ministry of Natural Resources of China uh, in the last year we already include the uh, PRG sector capacity building as um, as a as a the contents of the the MOA between uh, PIF and uh, um, uh, Ministry of uh, Natural Resources of China. So we are very uh, pleased to see that progress. I think that's very important so that we can have more resources uh, to, uh, to, to, uh, to improve the uh, capacity building and, and also to, uh, to hold more uh, activities of the PNG network. And, and so that this year we, we will have a, a joint uh, learning forum of uh, PNG and PNC uh, uh, in November. Uh, so I hope in the future, this kind of effort uh, will, 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 will be more. Uh, that, that's my first comment. And the second is that uh, um, in terms of the, the I think that in, in total, six uh, priorities identified for the development of the uh, Pansy. And I think both the PNRG and the PNC network, they, are, they, they can play their role not only in the knowledge management and the capacity building, but also uh, in other uh, priorities. So as for example, in the uh, blue economy and the sustainable financing, I, I think, and also uh, some uh, ocean governance and and, uh, and, uh, and also biodiversity conservation. Hello. 
Mr. Pang, we lost you. Where's Dr. Pang? Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Pang, where are you? Ah, oh, okay. Hello. Dr. Fang, we lost you. Okay, so anyway, uh, maybe his connection. Yeah, is... while we are waiting, uh, Dr. Fang's uh, return. So I think uh, at least uh, we capture two points here, yeah, Ingrid. Yeah, the first on how, uh, yeah, the recognition of the uh, PNLC and PNLG. Yeah, uh, and then I think uh, Dr. Fang suggested. PMC to have more resources, yeah, and then also maybe in the in the next years, yeah, uh, like uh, if uh, possible to have more effort, more activities, yeah, and then I think also a good information related to the uh, MOA between PMC and uh, China uh, in in terms of the uh, uh, yeah uh, uh, the memorandum kind of uh, agreement, yeah. And then I think uh, also uh, pointed out that uh, the role of PNLC and PNLG not only on the uh, knowledge management and capacity building, but then uh, maybe uh, also to the other five uh, priorities. Yes, Mas. Are we sort of already answering question two in our discussion? So yeah, we, we will need to yeah. Dis yeah, distribute our like uh, inputs to yeah, uh, yeah. slides later, yes. So just I to think, maybe... yeah, I think later on we can we can uh, uh, we can make it like on how we clustering the the, mm -hmm. the answer, Ingrid. Not yes. Uh, maybe uh, uh, from this discussion, not one by one. Maybe also one one uh, perspective also cover to the other to answer the other other question as well. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, Dr. Fangs, anything else from your side or still uh, mute? So, I think we lost you when you mentioned about the six priorities and the role of the PNLG and PNLC. Do you have any other comments or maybe the, the third one? Or that's all? Or we can move to the other? We cannot hear you. Sorry. So <coughs> let's move to the other first. Any any uh, suggestion, comment from the other uh, group group four member, Reggie, Ingrid, or uh, uh, Mr. Fisal? Okay, sir. And that fine and support to this the concrete discussion and the result. Uh, so, do, do you think that the, the strategies uh, covering grow, hold, and harvest is uh, do you think that uh, the adequate chief by 2030, for example? Yes, I think the, it's a good one that uh, we can add something by our previous dis discussion. Ingrid, do you want to add something? No, Masan, your voice was up and down also. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a notice that my connection is unstable. It's okay. I, I hope. Uh... Okay, now. Okay, and it's yeah. from Reggie. Uh, I, host, I saw here uh, Mary. Mary uh, Reggie, anything else from your side? Yes, uh, yes, Mas Han. Um, I think it's interesting to see that uh, uh, communications and marketing um, plays a big part in the priorities that we've uh, set out here. Um, I agree that the rollout of uh, new products uh, should be tailored to local settings. Um, primarily because uh, I, I do acknowledge that uh, one size fits all, for example, communications plan might not be applicable to, to all the countries. So I think that's a, that's a good plan as well. 
we should uh, perhaps be looking into <laughs> um, looking into dedicated focal points per country, uh, mm. leveraging on PNLC, PN, uh, PNLC, PNLG network with regard to the rollout, for example, of these communications products and outreach. I'm, I'm not sure if um, it's, it's, in, it's part of our plans to kind of find a way to monetize, for example, uh, membership to the PNLG and PNLC, or for example, for some of the tr on-demand training programs that we, we will have lined up. So um, as part of sustaining the financial viability of PRF in the future. So those are just mm. some of my initial thoughts right now. Thank you, Masan. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you, Reggie. Sorry, before, before that, uh, I have a question. Whether PMC uh, has like the communications and stakeholder engagement plan? Um, right now, I'm, I'm engaged as a consultant uh, for PMC, but for this particular year, it is... Um, my engagement is primarily for the East Asian Seas Congress. Ah, but, okay. Yes. No, but, maybe Ingrid can 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 answer. Ingrid. Uh, yes, we, we uh, must hand. We we've had like <laughs> several versions of uh, okay. communication plan. Yes. Okay. But yeah, I, I think Reggie was also involved in the uh, in crafting the the previous one, Reggie, in your first engagement with PMC, right? Uh Yes, but uh, right now that would be highly outdated. <laughs> yes, oh, okay. need to update. Yes. Okay, so and I think we can. So we can we can recommend like uh, to like re refining the communication and stakeholder engagement plan. So I think based on uh, Reggie's uh, uh, comments or suggestion that if we really uh, like uh, pick strategy or agreed uh, plan. I think, uh, yeah, like on how we we capitalize uh, the resources within the PMC, for example, and then I think uh, uh, interesting if uh, I don't know also because the the the, the information related to the focal point for this uh, uh, programs, yeah, related to knowledge management and capacity building. I think uh, there is a focal point in each countries, right? Ingrid, please confirm. Yes, Masan. Yeah. So we, yeah, and they are all here. They're part of the PC. Yeah, I think so. We we have it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, interesting when uh, uh, Reggie uh, talking about the on how we what do you call it? Uh, uh, explain about the surface and then uh, also. What kind of uh, services we uh, we can provide, and then maybe uh, this will like on how we can sustain uh, the, uh, the the what to call it, of course from the fund from the funding side, yeah. Yeah, I and yes, I want to clarify, Masan. What did uh, Reggie mean when she mentioned like uh, monetizing? Maybe mo mo membership fee, uh, yeah. Reggie. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. That's correct. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think. I think. Also, like, yeah. I'm, not, yeah. I'm not sure about annual fees for uh, membership and activities, but um, and also for, for example, if we were to roll out uh, training programs or uh, certification programs, I'm not sure if that is an avenue for us to also be able to uh, monetize or charge fees for. But this is related to. Um, the sustainability plans for for PMC. I, I think uh, so far we uh, we has been doing that right uh, in Greece. Yes, yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. but then I think uh, of course uh, we can uh, like took into consideration your also your your attentions, uh, Reggie. I mean that uh, uh, so far I think uh, the revenue for the PMC is part of that. Uh, uh, coming uh, from uh, what uh, your suggestions. Okay, uh, I think so far, uh, yeah, the input uh, from uh, Dr. Wan Suks related to pollutions and then also uh, uh, from 
Dr. Fangs related to the uh, role of PNLC, PNLC, and then also uh, on how we have more resources, and then also uh, on how we can improve the network. Yeah, uh, I think uh, in the plan there is also uh, uh, mention on how the PMC expanding the PNLC and uh, oh, oh this uh, here there is here in the in the grow yeah expansion of PNLC and PNLC membership and activities. I think uh, already uh, here, uh, Dr. Fang. Uh, so, uh, can you move to next slide, uh, Ingrid? Yeah. Uh, uh, we, we are talking about uh, just three programs, and we have yeah. another uh, or, or related to ocean governance, and then blue economy, and new development. Yes, Ingrid, please. Yes, Mas Han. I also would just like to ask, because like here, there are six uh, subsets of programs. Mm -hmm. So biodiversity, pollution, knowledge management, and then the governance and partnership in the economy and new developments. But I noted that there are no recommendations regard related to climate change, adaptation, disaster risk reduction, and also related to fisheries like AFM or sustainable fisheries aquaculture and so on. So I don't know if these are aspects that we would like to request to include or highlight in the roadmap. Or for example, if fisheries is already included under biodiversity conservation and management, because in the, uh, in the detailed document, in the PC document four, like for the yeah. rollout of new products tailored to local needs and applications, one of the examples provided was uh, like development of fisheries improvement programs. So it seems to yeah. be something here, but yeah, maybe if, if we want to highlight some of this, then we can yeah. make recommendations. Sure. Uh, okay. I think it's interesting. Uh, yeah. Uh, related to climate change, related, related to fisheries, uh, fisheries management. Any, any comments on that input? I think uh, if there is no, uh, uh, Dr. Wansu, please. Yeah, I was just gonna second um, Ingrid on the, the um, climate change adaptation. Um, and, and I don't, yeah, I think that's, that's you could, because there's a lot of, of concern and you could do um, a lot of things on the ground and that would be important. But for fisheries, you know, it, it is important, but I don't know if, it's you know PEMC strength, you know like in, it. It seems like there are several organizations that are targeting the EAFM, and it seems like it's you know when we implement that on the ground, people often um, sort of can't recognize as PEMCs. Um, Activities, you know, and I think it's because it's it's sort of overlapping with with other um, international organizations like FAO, sort of, you know, there's so many. So if if that area is going to be part of the roadmap, I would like to see the synergies with other, you know, main main um, major players. Uh, of that area. Um, okay. Thank you, Dr. Wansu. <laughs> yeah. Uh, in interesting uh, comment. Yeah, okay. I, you know, I, I'm just speaking of, yeah. of um, our experience working um, with the concept, and it seems like, you know, many other organizations has has some activities. Mm -hmm. So it's it seems like it's hard to to make it unique to PIMC in a sense. Yeah. You know, I think that PIMC strength is in pollution and, and whatnot. So I think it's more of a image kind of issue. But yeah, you know, I, I think it's it's important areas and if it's getting incorporated in, in biodiversity conservation management, that would be good or food security or something of that sort. 
that that would be good. Yeah. Ingrid was going to say something. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. To cut so you before I'm in. Oh, yeah, Ma I will just, sorry, maybe Mas Han can share about the current focus of ATSI related to uh, fishery, so my... which maybe uh, contribute to the, like, Turn off my uh, video, sorry. Yeah, focus uh, of... Okay, uh, before I comment, maybe Ingrid, do you want to respond on Dr. Wansuk's uh, comment? Uh, uh, yes, Mas Han. So the climate change uh, adaptation is uh, like uh, all encompassing. So it cuts across the this different um, uh, themes like biodiversity conservation also affects pollution reduction and waste management. So yeah, so I also encourage like um, highlighting it in, in the roadmap. And then with regard to uh, fisheries um, in the SDS SEA program, uh, since the ICM uh, process or framework or ICM system should be looking at like different issues in an integrated uh, manner, so covering all of these uh, issues, we've also had like um, pilot sites, like demonstration sites uh, to demonstrate the applications of uh, ICM. ICM as a framework to strengthen uh, sustainable fisheries and so on. And uh, as not highlighted by Dr. Wansuk in Thailand, um, yet since there are other like, um, as these organizations like CIFDEC who, and who had um, more concrete or recognized uh, programs, I think they had some uh, challenges in getting uh, support for the program, uh, right, Dr. Wanso? And then there was limited uh, participation from the Department of uh, Fisheries since uh, like they, get, they are not a focal agency of TEMC. Uh, and we recognize that uh, within the PRF, there is limited uh, specialization related to fisheries, but this is an aspect that we are trying to uh, strengthen okay, because uh, these are all uh, interrelated. So in, in our sustainable development uh, framework, the SDCA framework, so we have different specializations uh, by, related to biodiversity, pollution, um, that's this CCA and DRR, uh, sustainable uh, fisheries and uh, like food security and then also uh, water resources um, management. So I think some of these have been uh, in, in the SDS implementation plan 20, 2018 to 2022, some of these have been subsumed. Uh, so biodiversity has been, subs uh, fisheries was subsumed under biodiversity, water resources management was subsumed under pollution reduction and uh, waste management. And uh, yeah, so somehow these were not uh, really highlighted. But uh, as I mentioned in earlier, in the more detailed uh, document, they mentioned some activities related to fisheries here under biodiversity conservation and management. Uh, which one, Ingrid? Yes. In this bullet, in the rollout oh, okay. of tailored to local needs and uh, applications, the actual example in the document is related to fisheries. Okay. So, yeah, like um, developing new products and tools to improve local fisheries, also including a development of fisheries improvement of projects. So those are ones that relate to certification, uh, right, Mas? So yeah. they are not uh, highlighted in the way it is uh, presented here, but uh, I think we're not really like leaving that out from the uh, roadmap being uh, okay. developed for PNC. Okay, okay. Thank you, Ingrid. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, if uh, I may add, yeah, uh, from the HC2 project uh, uh, activities, yeah, the HC2 is under uh, PEMC as an executing agency. So we are also covering uh, five transboundary issues, yeah, uh, 
yeah, of course, the first related to uh, sustainable fisheries, and then uh, uh, climate change, and then marine and land-based pollution, and then uh, biodiversity protections, uh, either habitat and species, and then uh, also uh, related to the IUUPC. So I think, uh, Dr. Wansuk, I think uh, more or less, uh, the uh, fisheries management or sustainable fisheries programs uh, will become uh, PEMSIS uh, concerns at least uh, for the next three or four years, yeah, because uh, one of the ETSI programs also related to uh, towards sustainable fisheries, like we are uh, implementing a fishery improvement program and then also working uh, to support the uh, fisheries industries toward uh, marine uh, uh, like the certification and so on, MSC. So I think uh, hopefully uh, uh, this will become like, what do you call it? Uh, for a program of the uh, PMC, at least for the next three or four years. I think that's all from my uh, additional uh, input. Okay, uh, any comment or suggestions from other members? All good? So, uh, yeah, Ingrid, actually from, yeah, he, he, even I'm the facilitator, but I think uh, I can also uh, provide comment, right, or input. <laughs> So related, so related to the uh, harvest ingredient in this case, the rationalized uh, ICM certification. I'm not familiar with the post uh, state measure, yeah. But then I think uh, you know, certification of ICM is important. Uh, I don't know uh, what the reason why the the reviewer uh, suggests. Uh, uh, ICM certifications uh, in the harvest strategy. Uh, I think uh, so far, you know, because I'm also teaching in the IBB University, we, you know, our module, our training module, our uh, lecture, uh, lectures uh, series module, and so on. I um, often uh, refer to the ICM's uh, document, right? And then uh, mm -hmm. we have ISO and so on. So in this case, if uh, we put the ICM certification in the harvest, means that uh, like transferring this uh, program to the other parties, for example, to, their, to the other partner. I don't know whether uh, I'm not really uh, having a deeper understanding the resources of the PMC, but then maybe Ingrid can provide more uh, information related to the uh, ICM certification. Yes, yeah, Mas Han, maybe uh, those who have experience with ICM certification can also share, like uh, Mr. Prakdisal and Dr. Fang, Mm, okay. Uh, maybe okay. we can get their good, uh, insights good. first. Yeah. What do you think? I, I just would like uh, to call uh, Mr. Fisal related to the ICM certifications, at least from your perspective in the uh, government uh, side, whether the ICM certification of the PMC program uh, is this, it is in a good uh, place in the harvest strategy, for example, Mr. Fisal. You still mute, Mr. Fisal. Ah, okay. Sorry, um, I don't hear you. Can you repeat the, again? Sir? Yeah, if you see the the in the program of biodiversity conservation and management, uh, there is a program of ICM certification, and then uh, from the reviewers' uh, suggestions put the ICM certification in the harvest strategy. Harvest strategy means that PEMC need to rationalize this program or transfer to the other parties, maybe not 
directly manage under a PMC. So based on information from Ingrid, you are the one who also uh, like receiving the benefit from the ICM certification. Just would like to confirm whether the ICM certifications also in the right place in the harvest strategy, for example. I hope that's clear. Mm, I think I can, uh, uh, Mr. Fang, Dr. Fang, can you help me to on this because I'm not ah, so okay. family okay. on that. Okay, no problem, Mr. Fisal. Dr. Fang, do you have any comments? Hello. Yes, please. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, I I actually have not been involved in the uh, ICM uh, certification process uh, in the past. Uh, but my ability. Uh, uh, what 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 I I'm thinking is that uh, I think the the ICM certification is uh, quite. Uh, a good idea to uh, to continue to uh, to promote the concept of ICM and uh, to to put that on the ground to realize that uh, for the local government and, mm. uh, and especially uh, we know uh, the, the ICM actually is uh, uh, there is no end for for integration. It, 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 yeah, that, yeah, you're right. Uh, improve to to uh, adapt to uh, the new uh, situation, and just like uh, in China, we we have a uh, uh, institutional uh, reform in 2018, and uh, so that is a big a big change in in the governance system uh, in China. So uh, uh, in terms of the the ocean and the coastal management, so so after the the institutional uh, reform. Uh, we we need uh, we, sh we 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 have some new challenges. We have some new uh, uh, opportunities uh, for ICM uh, implementation, and so I think that uh, that is a very uh, very very necessary and uh, and important uh, okay. for regular uh, certification, uh, even uh, for like uh, Shaman City. Uh, we, we, we now I think it's level two, uh, as I remember. Uh, so I think it's uh, quite uh, uh, unnecessary. And yeah. my suggestion is that uh, uh, how how to do the ICM certification, uh, in, in which way, so we can do that uh, more effectively uh, and and uh, more uh, efficiently, and and. Uh, and uh, mm. To, yeah, 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 yeah. So that that, that, that is uh, what I'm. My concern is is not uh, is is that uh, how how we can we we can do the ICM certificate and who will do that, and and I I hope the PLC members could contribute to that. I know that for, for, for the certification, we need lots of uh, document and, uh, and the data and the material to support uh, the process. And uh, for the local government, it's very, you know, the, the officials, they are always busy. They, are, they, they, they may have not a uh, staff uh, or resources to prepare these documents and materials. So I think uh, uh, if we can uh, make full use of the network of uh, PLC, so so the members of PLC they can work together with uh, uh, local government to uh, to help this uh, uh, to help them to uh, in the process of the certification. So mm -hmm. we see the we see the, the the implementation of the ICM certification is not so satisfactory. I think uh, we, we, we need to, uh, to to find out what is the reason, what is the challenge, what is the, uh, what the local government's uh, need uh, to, 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 to do that. Uh, so that, that is my, my thinking. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Dr. Fang. Just uh, my my questions: Whether in uh, in China or in Simon, whether the certification is required uh, to deliver training, for example, or 
to do the uh, uh, to execute the SEM program, for example. If there is no requirement, uh, uh, maybe uh, also quite difficult, right? Because there is no uh, demands. Yeah, I think that uh, it's actually not. It's it's so, so something like a voluntary. Oh, thing. okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for for the local government, it's not mandatory. Not required, yeah, yeah. Mandatory. Uh, okay. Yeah. So so that's yes. why I think we we need uh, uh, provide more support for the local government to do that. Uh, as mm -hmm. I know, in China now, uh, only uh, Xiamen and uh, I think uh, Dong, Dongying, Dongying and the two cities, they, they have all, already have the ICM certification, but we actually have uh, more cities, more, more local governments. They, 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 I think they are interested, but uh, just they, they don't have the resources to do that. Yeah, yeah. So since uh, Dr. Fang also mentioned related to PNLC, whether maybe uh, can support as the learning center for these uh, ICM certifications, I would like to uh, call uh, Dr. Wansuk to comment on this part related to ICM certification. Any comment from your side? Um, yeah, I have very little experience with that. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, if if PNLC members who take part in this, it probably needs some, you know, capacity building because I, mm -hmm. I think that it's, you know, to, to achieve certain standards, they may need some work on that issue, but, you know, that would be a good mechanism, but, you know, it depends on, on you know, what and, and the standards, um, to fulfill the ICM certification uh, dependency. So I you know, really don't have any insights to share on that it's okay. issue. Okay, yeah. no problem. Must I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Ingrid, okay. yes? Yes, must I... yes. Uh, it is uh, good to hear the insights from uh, Dr. Fang and also uh, Dr. Yeah, so just to also um, uh, second you in your like a concern that ICM certification is important. Actually, um, this is this should be one of the core uh, offerings of PEMC. This yeah. is actually yeah part of uh, the promotion and then continuing scaling up of the ICM uh, system. So this provides like a common uh, system for monitoring and assessing progress of uh, local governments in ICM implementation, especially when we are like uh, counting percentages of coastline. For example, we say, okay, we're covering 40% of coastline. Yeah. But you know, yeah. how, how do we know that uh, they are all uh, implementing the ICM uh, program uh, effectively? you know or you know as, yeah. we, as we conceptualize so this is important and i agree with dr fang that so far the implementation of the certi certification system has not been a uh, optimum or satisfactory and maybe because this was like a purely a led by tmc and then there was of course limited uh, manpower within tmc to under continue mm. this yes but in China, they've had this, uh, tr they've trained uh, people, you know, key people and in institutions to support this uh, ICM certification process. And maybe this is something that can also be done in other areas. So maybe when they said uh, rationalize ICM certification and also PSHEM, PSHEM, they actually meant um, make it more effective, but maybe it's not proper to put it under harvest. Maybe it's still something that we can put under grow or hold, you know, something that we can continue to improve and uh, scale up. And uh, since uh, we are saying that maybe we need to involve other partners 
in this certification process, it doesn't necessarily mean that we are turning it over to other partners or institutions. Maybe it's still something that can be led by uh, MC or the PRF and then made more effective in collaboration uh, with various partners. And I think okay. that engaging the PNLC, uh, providing them the necessary uh, training and the you know, capacity to support this uh, certification process would be important. And it can also be part of the like a key uh, activities that the PNLC can uh, work on together uh, as a network. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's what mentioned by Dr. Fang as well. So uh, maybe uh, PNLC will uh, have a, a important role in this uh, ACM certification. I think all university or national universities. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, uh, I think. Uh, since the time now is already uh, 12, 10. Let's move to, I think uh, what we discussed is already also cover uh, questions in the cluster B, I think, yeah, Ingrid, yeah. Can you move yes, to nice. the six, uh, slide six, Ingrid? This one? Uh, just to get uh, uh, an agreement whether uh, our discussions will will continue till uh, 12.30, is it okay? And after that, we uh, we have lunch break, yeah? So let's, let's just uh, continue with the next questions. Uh, so the, the, the question related to governance and management programs, uh, there are, I think, uh, three uh, management program and three governance programs, yeah? So the question are the priority activities identified under the governance and management programs adequate and responsive to the need of us, to the need of the region, countries, local communities, PNLG, PNLC, and PRF. And the second are the program able uh, to capture the priorities of country and non-country partners. I think to answer this, I think can we uh, See the next slide, Ingrid, to understand the program priorities. Uh, next slide. Ah. Yes. I think, Mas, we have sort of covered those questions also in our discussions. Yeah. But, yeah, but maybe we can look at this slide. So initially, we focused more on this. Now, maybe we can look at this slide also. Yeah, I think in the, I think in the implementation, uh, plan as well, Ingrid, in the slide 8 to uh, eight okay. to 10, yeah? Ah, okay, this line, okay. Yeah, I think in the in the slide uh, 8 to 10, it's related to the activities, right, uh, under uh, both governance and management. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, maybe, uh, Ingrid, can you maybe just uh, briefly uh, read the, the, the programs, the activities? Then uh, after that, we can uh, request the members to comment okay. from slide eight, yeah. Yes, actually this one, uh, Mas, is addressing this uh, uh, question on timeliness. Yeah, the timelines, yes. yes. But in the program yes. also, we just, just read the, the program. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in this next set of slides, actually the different activities, uh, proposed in the previous table has been organized into this uh, schedule. So for the first uh, activity mentioned here, establish a marketing partnership and outreach uh, focus for PEMC. So this is something that will be undertaken continuously uh, throughout the five years. And then uh, with regard to development of regional communication and partnership campaigns to support key R&D and policy agenda. So this was in the biodiversity uh, focus. It's being proposed to be developed in 2023. So that's the two years from now. And then expansion of membership and activities of PNLC and PNLG. Uh, it was proposed for 2024 to 2026, but it's you know, something that we can do earlier, I think. 
<laughs> we're doing it already. And then positioning MC as the East Asian platform for the decade of ocean science. It was proposed for 2023. So we can comment on that if we can you know, do it early, put it earlier. And then the turnover of ocean investment facility idea and platform, perhaps to all other partners. It was suggested for 2024. So I don't know if we should continue working on it since we're not transferring it yet. <laughs> I'm making side comments. All right. And then the review for partnership option with PRF, capitalizing on access and knowledge of LGUs in facilitation role. Uh, it's supposed to be done uh, very soon. And then establishment of a 2030 thought leadership and R&D agenda and, and focus. So it's uh, encompassing the five years and then continue and expand the application of state of ocean and coast reporting and on-demand training program. So it's a continuing effort. And then uh, consolidate and enhance a thought leadership and uh, year 2030 R&D agenda for the CKB and increase dissemination of knowledge products. So starting in 2022, and then development and rollout of new products and services tailored to local needs and applications. Oh, this is the one that I mentioned. For example, business continuity management for ports and then fisheries improvement uh, programs and maybe others related to biodiversity. So it's something to be undertaken from 2023 to 2027. And then uh, thought leadership on key blue econo economy topics and financing for knowledge management and training purposes. So it's a continuing activity for five years. And then rationalizing ICM certification and PSHEM, PSHEM into a sharper product offering. It's something that's targeted for 2024. And then recovery and resiliency planning, something to be undertaken in five years and then establishment of a project development and business development uh, focus also across five years, and then establishing a formal project development and business development division under PRF to be undertaken in 2022, and the cooperation and collaboration with local governments and local communities for ICM projects and programs. Actually, I think this is something that should be continued. <laughs> okay. And then uh, that slide, uh, formalizing a process for envisioning and initiating a post 2030 uh, MC. So it's uh, continuing across five years, conducting a feasibility study and options analysis to restructure PMC for financial sustainability, including possible spin off of the current uh, technical professional services under PRF to a fully operational consulting or contract per arm. So this refers to the conduct of the feasibility study, uh, which is proposed for 2022. And then monitoring and reporting on the progress of implementation of SDSC implementation plan across five years, dialogues on sustainability mechanisms and member contributions for PRF towards 2030. So there's still some country partners who we are uh, talking to with regard to voluntary contributions and also maybe other partners, so this is continuing. And then the decision for a post-2030 TEMC is targeted for 2025 at the midpoint, and then implementation of the transition plan will be undertaken in the latter part of the decade. Okay, so that's it. Um, yeah, <laughs> thank you, Ingrid. I think, yeah, still a link uh, between the table nine and table 10, right? So I think uh, we, yes. can, we can discuss uh, uh, and then answers related to the uh, question on the governance and management program and also related to the timeline, actually. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, okay, so after uh, uh, Ingrid uh, explains more detail related to the activities and then over the timeline. Uh, uh, I would like to uh, request comments, suggestion from uh, the group for members uh, related to this uh, uh, at least three questions. Yeah, 
the first uh, whether the priority is identified as adequate and responsive to uh, our needs yeah and then whether also uh, all the program and activities capture the priorities of the uh, country and non country partners yeah uh, yeah, and the last one related to the timeline, whether uh, the proposed timelines is matched the, the, to, the, uh, to our programs, to our uh, projects uh, related to the uh, sustainable development, blueprint recovery, and if not, maybe uh, if you please uh, inform us. So uh, who wanna, uh, comment or uh, provide input to these uh, questions. Hello, my internet connection is unstable. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay uh, I think. Uh, before that, I just uh, want to say that, can you move to the slide six, Ingrid, related to the uh, one and uh, second questions? Okay, nice. Okay. So, uh, I think so, as uh, noted in the table nine and table 10, of course, so, uh, from our side, from the Etsy program, of course that uh, Etsy program will uh, uh, like, I don't know, uh, Etsy two, uh, the duration is uh, from the 2019 to 2023 or 2024. So uh, from the, yeah, from the timeline first, yeah, Ingrid, yeah. <laughs> I think uh, still, still match uh, this timeline, yeah. We will support uh, the programs and activities or the target of the uh, PMCs. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, I don't know, I think uh, on the expansion of the memberships, uh, just uh, maybe need more information. Why suggested uh, uh, on the 2024, for example, not 2023? I think along the way, I think... Uh, I think comment also from uh, Dr. Fang here that expansion of mem membership maybe uh, yeah can be uh, each year, and then I think uh, can be also started in the next 2023, for example, or maybe next year. Mm -hmm. Dr. Fang, any comment from your side? Hello, Dr. Fang. We cannot hear you. Yeah, Dr. Fang. Okay. Uh, yeah, before we are waiting, Dr. Fang. I think also related to your comment, Ingrid, uh, in the in the in the in the presentation, in the activities, there is no. Uh, like uh, program or activities related to the climate change here. Yeah. Yes, yes. I think also uh, uh, what, what, what we need, right? Uh, uh, and uh, respond to the first question of this B, yeah? I think the, yeah, the climate change. Oh, okay, sorry, you already mentioned it. Okay. Sorry, these were my notes before we started. I'll just move first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so, some, yeah. Dr. Fang? Uh, okay, maybe... Uh, Let's move to Dr. Wansuk. Any comment from your side related to the whether the priorities uh, uh, match uh, or responsive to the need of the region, countries, communities, or maybe from the PNLC side? Um, okay, so, so can I see the, the slide again? So, um... No, not this one, this one is number four, right? For the timeline. Uh, let, let's, let's, I'll offer my, my, um, 
comments on the timeline first. I, I do agree mm -hmm. with Dr. Fang on the expansion, so B number four, right? Mm -hmm. uh, timeline. Yes, so it's on the expansion of, of PNLC uh, should start you know, early on. So, because there's no reason why it should be delayed, yeah. right? Okay. Um, Ingrid, sorry, sorry. Can you move to slide eight, Ingrid? Slide eight. Yeah, the expansion. Okay, please. Sorry, uh, Yes, yes. So, I mean, that was here. Yeah, okay. the grow membership. So I think that that is already ongoing. So it it could be you know have something um, earlier than two thousand twenty four. And then, you know, I was just thinking that we, since we already have ICM sites that we worked with um, previously, would there be something to build on their existence? You know, um, communities that are involved in the SDA, SDSC program, um, so I don't know if you want to strengthen them with the ability to uh, move to the next phase or the expansion of new ICM sites. So I don't know where um, it fit in this timeline, but I think that should be, that can be done mm -hmm. um, sort of ongoing, you know, and, and it could be something that we could work together to come up with some, you know, activities that could be implemented or um, could be done on the ground. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Wansuk. So I think uh, Dr. Dr. Fang uh, also uh, provide a comment in the in the chat box, Ingrid. Where can I see it, Mas? Oh, in the chat box. Okay. Yeah. Regarding the so, timeline, um, PNLG okay. membership expansion at least is regular work during the all the mm -hmm. year. Okay, each year. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we can we can recommend uh, for, mm -hmm. the, for the expansions will be the whole of the timeline. Yeah. You know. mm -hmm. Thank you, Dr. Fang and Dr. Wansuk. Uh, I think also, uh, I think second to Dr. Wansuk that about the strengthening the existing uh, ICM site, uh, I think also uh, what you mentioned, Ingrid, related to the, like the monitoring of the ICM implementation, for example, I think so we can, we can do better, for example, uh, with the site. And then, uh, uh, I don't know, in the other countries, but then at least from my experience with the Indonesia and Timor Leste, you know, sometimes the ICM programs is still uh, 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 based on the project driver. Yeah. Uh, so mm -hmm. uh, when, when the project is uh, uh, ends, then uh, there is no more uh, ICM activities, for example. So I mm -hmm. think on how we continue, yeah, I think uh, on how we continue strengthening the local governments and then monitor the ACM implementation, I think. I don't know whether uh, it's already included in uh, the programs you explained, Ingrid, but, uh, or maybe uh, this is kind of like uh, another recommendation we can provide uh, when we uh, report to the, to the, in the plenary. Yes. Um, uh, after the project supported like ICM uh, program development in the local sites, the idea is for uh, the national and the local or provincial or local government to continue to mainstream this as part of their programs and to continue supporting this uh, as part of their programs. So that was the idea. So it can be something that we can include in the roadmap, but maybe in terms of uh, roles and responsibilities, it can be something that the, our partner governments will need to lead with the technical support of uh, PEMC uh, yeah, as needed, yeah. PEMC and other partners. Okay, okay. okay, thank you, Ingrid. So I think uh, previously Dr. Wansuk would like to see the slide of the uh, proposed mm -hmm. implementation plan, uh, sorry, uh, 
minutes. Yeah, the, the adjustment, right? In the, in the program. Yeah, the, yeah. So, yeah, program to answer some of the question yeah. on yeah. slide six. Slide four and slide yes. four and slide five, Ingrid. Go to slide four and five. I, I think yeah. it's the five because I think we discussed the four. Yeah. So these are just the, the areas that we sort of have touched on. Um, yes, please. Yes. So the, the question is, are the priority activities identified is uh, adequate mm. and responsive to the need of the region, countries? Uh, yeah, of course, uh, from your side, from the PNLC or from the, uh, yeah, from the PNLC. And then whether are the program able to capture the, the priorities of country and non-country partner in strengthening the uh, governance and effective implementation of the SDSC program? Please, Ronso. Yes. So, um, I think that what is listed are are good because um, I, it, on the one hand, you know, I think countries um, speaking from Thailand development um, has instituted, you know, some policies and whatnot. So I think that's already taken care of. But I think what they need is, is maybe um, technical support on, you know, the, the evaluation part or, you know, some, some um, assistant in bridging their existing in, institutional arrangement. Yeah, so, so I think what listed probably cover what I, what I said. So I, I don't think they need um, help in coming up with institutional um, design, but if that's already in place, but what they may need help is to sort of make use of existing design, but with some you know, tools that would help facilitate um, that which already included. And I like the blue economy um, and sustainable financing, because I think that is one of the strength of PMC, you know, that isn't covered in, in other kind of projects. So I think that should be, should be um, st strengthened. And I don't know if PMC plans to have you know, some technical, um, sort of capacity building in this area or not, but but it may be something that that we could explore um, because I think we like to help, but you know, with with the the capacity that PNLC has right now um, isn't very you know economic oriented. Very it's very technical and maybe biological, ecological oriented. So if we could build some capacity to, to be able to facilitate some of these, we'll be willing to, but uh, but we have to work with PMC on this regard. Right, so I think that's, because uh, you know, in Thailand, there is some funding that, that the Thai government would like to fund, um, the blue economy, ideas, but it has to be very concrete. So this is something that um, we may be, may be able to work with PMC on, on um, solidify or, or making it towards what um, the region needs to see. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Dr. Masuk. I think it's interesting. I think in the... In I think the same ingredient in Indonesia as well, like uh, mm -hmm. some uh, related to the blue economy. Uh, I think, yeah, many people still not really sure what is the the real support or the real program for uh, mm -hmm. realizing the blue economy in place, for example. Yeah, many people said about the zero waste or something like that, but then uh, what is the real uh, uh, activities? whether different with the current uh, activities or uh, there should be other 
what you know, parameter requirement or other indicator uh, related mm-hmm. to this uh, blue economy i think so uh, yeah. the 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 concept or the what you call it the blue economy in practice also need to be uh, promoted yeah something like that And then I think uh, related to the monitor, uh, Dr. Wansuk, I don't know if uh, this is related to the slide number four, Ingrid, Ingrid related to the biodiversity uh, management. Uh, can you move it to mm-hmm. slide four? I think there is a program related to the monitoring of the impact. Yeah, I think uh, this cover also not only about the uh, ICM, but also about the, the, about the biodiversity protection, right? Biodiversity conservation, I think. I don't know. What do you think, Ingrid? Uh, I think uh, uh, the, the 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 input on how we like su- to support the monitoring of the impact. The ICM yes, implementation, for example. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. This is something that has been uh, emphasized by uh, during the SDSC terminal evaluation. This is an aspect that was so highlighted by value. We for of the integrated uh, program and various various levels, but she also emphasized the need to strengthen the ecological um, monitoring uh, capacities. You know, to support the updating of those uh, SOC reports uh, later on and to show the effectiveness of implementing the ICM you know, and uh, related integrated uh, programs. Yeah. And then with regard to blue economy, that was also a key recommendation from the SDS uh, terminal evaluation in Thailand that um, they are in Thailand, they are uh, implementing like uh, various programs on marine and coastal Uh, resources management, including ICM, but it is an aspect that they hope um, MC can uh, support them uh, further uh, in the future. It's a blue economy development aspect. Okay. Thank you, Ingrid. Uh, can I request a comment from uh, Dr. Fang or Fisal? Mr. Fisal, any comment from your side or Dr. Fang related to these questions? We are discussing three questions at least about the uh, whether uh, uh, the, the program is also uh, responsive to our needs and then also uh, whether capture all the related to the governance and uh, management. And the last one about the timeline. I don't know uh, the situation in uh, Cambodia, in China. Hello? Man? Okay. So uh, yeah, while waiting uh, comment from the others, uh, So uh, I don't know, Ingrid, if I'm that, uh, I'm thinking about, yeah, uh, based on the Nancy's presentations, also related mm-hmm. to the uh, coral triangle, right? So I don't know uh, th- uh, whether there is a link uh, from PMC to CTSCFF, for example. Uh, of course, the, for the Arab for Antimor Seas, because the, the program is under PMC, uh, maybe will directly link to that, but then uh, how about the link of our program to the CTSCFF? Yes, the, the idea, uh, Mashan, is to, uh, for the PMC program to serve as like, a, like an umbrella or framework uh, if possible for you know, other uh, programs uh, programs of other partners in 
uh, like LMEs or subregions uh, within the uh, EASR region. So, for example, um, like uh, YS LME is a, a non country partner of NC. And then we are also uh, have been we have been linking also with uh, CTI uh, CFF in the course of implementing the program, and I think they have contributed to the regional uh, SOC report uh, as well. And then for the Arafura and uh, Timor Seas, this can be a good uh, example of um, partnership uh, under the PMC framework that uh, engages the member countries or regional mechanisms in the uh, ATS region. So that is something that can be uh, highlighted under uh, ocean governance and strategic uh, partnerships. How the, like for example, the PMC uh, like governance model has been uh, shared for the possible development of the governance model in the Arafura and Timor Seas region and how these ATS governance can also be linked to the broader uh, governance uh, system in the EES region through PENC. Yeah, okay. Thank you, uh, Ingrid. So I think, I mean that uh, uh, related to uh, the linkage between PEMC and CTSFF, uh, I mean that I don't know whether uh, uh, need to be explicit here or uh, maybe already been uh, captured in other priorities. Oh, maybe we can mention that, Masan, like a strength and uh, linkages with uh, other regional mechanisms. Yeah. And then yes. I think- Because I, it has not been really formal. It has yeah. not been uh, formalized. Yeah. yeah. So I think related to the uh, B, the government management program, I think at least we have a uh, for yeah for input here like first what uh, Dr. Wang mentions the need of the more resources and then more effort or make more activities on the yeah of course related to the lo uh, network for local governor government yeah and then the second uh, the technical assistant or technical uh, support as uh, mentioned by uh, Dr. Wan Suk Ingrid yeah. Mm -hmm. And then a linkage uh, PMC to other regional uh, uh, mechanisms, yeah. Uh, for example, uh, yes, yeah. Yes. Okay. The other point, I think I, I wrote in the other slide. So we yeah, just... and later on maybe we can we can just mm -hmm. copy paste to this. Uh, mm -hmm. And then on the timeline, I think we have also input on the expansion of the. A membership of uh, PNLC and PNLT. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if we have any other input related to the timeline. Any other input timeline. from other members? Or all good? Uh, what time? Uh, yeah. We need to. Yes. <laughs> I yeah, in so. terms of the time, mm -hmm. uh, actually, we're supposed to start reporting at 1.30. Oh, okay. So actually, so the time is up, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Yes, Mas. We, okay. we work through our lunch break. We're supposed to okay. have lunch 12 to 1 and then work again yeah. 1 to 1.30. But since we okay. already uh, worked over time, then... We don't need to get together again. Is that correct, Mas? Yeah, yeah. I think if uh, I, I believe you will <laughs> provide the highlight of discussion later on. But then, uh, okay. you know, uh, sorry, uh, 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 colleagues, we have another questions here uh, related to support of technical the working group. Yeah, I uh, just maybe if, uh, if I request maximum maybe seven minutes, uh, if any comments uh, related to the. Uh, technical working uh, group here. Uh, the first that technical working group will be established to lead the development of uh, the SDSC implementation plan yeah, uh, in alignment uh, with the roadmap. And then the core team also will comprise of uh, technical session chair and co-chair. Yeah. Uh, I don't know uh, if uh, any comments from the group 
for members related to this, whether uh, there is a need to establish the technical working group, and then what uh, the membership, uh, who will be in the group, and then what the governance of working group. So I open the, the floor. Any comment from the members? Again, uh, of course, <laughs> this is really, really limited, like the only Mr. Fisal, Ms. Wansu, and Mr. Fang, or Reggie, if you would like to comment as well. Or maybe Ingrid can provide a brief idea about this again. <laughs> yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe two minutes, the, two minutes. The, main, the main point is if anyone would like to volunteer <laughs> to be part of the working group. Yes, ah, yes. Okay. Dr. Wansu? Yeah, I think they're uh, uh, yeah, calling for volunteers. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I'm, uh, I'm happy if I have chance to contribute to the uh, technical working group. Yay. Okay, thank you, Dr. Fang, yay. <laughs> but do you think this is needed, yeah, Dr. Fang, yeah? That uh, we need to have like the technical working group to, to what do you call it, uh, uh, to lead the development of uh, implementation plan and the roadmap. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Fang. Dr. Wansuk? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little bit hesitant. Sorry, <laughs> 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 um, can you repeat? Well, uh, I'm, okay. I'm uh, you know, I, because I, you know, with the time commitment with other things on my plate, so I'm, I'm a little reluctant to to accept, but I'm, I'll be willing to, to provide feedback, but you know, I, I will not be, you know, I, you know if I could choose, you know, I, I wouldn't want to be um, the core member, but I'm, you know, we'll be willing to, to provide um, comments and feedback. Is that okay? <laughs> Of course, yeah. <laughs> understood. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, understood, uh, Dr. Fang. But then I think I uh, just would like to get your comment on whether this technical working group is needed to lead the development of the implementation plan, you know, the roadmap, we are, what we are discussing, and then also the roadmap to 2030. Hello. Yeah, so maybe this is something that is uh, really needed, must have. Okay, um, really needed. Since okay. yes, we, we want this okay, uh, development the, of the roadmap yeah. to be more participatory and uh, engaging more partners, yeah. getting more minds together. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And then, uh, Mr. Fisal? What do you think related to the technical working group? Would you like to be part of uh, this or uh, what do you think? Fisal? Thank you, sir. I think it's uh, important that the technical working group is both the uh, I see on the program because the um the working group is so firmly for the program. I think it is important for that. So I I agree all the Ingrid mentioned earlier. Thank you, Mr. Fisal. So I think uh, since uh, we run off the time, Ingrid. I think uh, I would like to request Ingrid later on just put our highlight in the in the slide, yeah, what we are discussing. Yes. I think uh, yes, uh, just mm -hmm. define it and then uh, put it in relevant questions. Mm -hmm. uh, okay.
all good 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 okay, thank you okay so okay. if there is no more uh, comment or questions so i thank you to all of you for your participation for your comment and suggestions we will uh, return to the plenary at 1:30 ya ingrid ya and then yes, nice. uh, Ingrid, uh, also please send me this uh, uh, the final uh, result from mm -hmm. our group for discussions. Uh, anyone would like to? Okay, but then I need... <laughs> Okay, so I can say. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, okay, but then later on, I need your uh, I need the help from you all. Yeah, if I need. Okay. Anything. But then Ingrid will, uh, I think I yes. think Ingrid will compile all. I just read a uh, yes. complete sentence. Yes, in this so yeah. I, uh, so we'll mm -hmm. read. <laughs> yeah. So please do not leave this uh, breakout session. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, Mas, we didn't hear you. Hello? But yeah, we, we didn't hear you what you were saying. At least me. Okay. So I will uh, clean this up and then uh, send the file to you. And then for everyone, please okay. do not leave this uh, breakout uh, window. I, I think they will bring us back to the main session later on. So okay. yeah, let's okay, just, our just stay, this, just stay yeah, in this, this yeah. Mm -mm. Just stay in this uh, room, yeah. Uh, so the, yes. the committee will return us. Uh, okay. Okay. okay, so again, thank you very much. Uh, have a nice lunch, everyone. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Bye bye thank for you. now. Thank bye -bye. you. Thank you. See you later. See you. Thank you all. Bye bye. 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 Don't leave. Don't leave. Don't leave. <laughs> <laughs> just, just leave oh, it this. Oh. <laughs> okay. Bye. Bye. Yes. Okay. Bye. Yeah. Okay, uh, I believe everyone is here. Uh, can I call on the facilitators to confirm the presence of their uh, rapporteurs if they're ready for the plenary? Yes, our rapporteur is here. Okay, that's uh, that's two. good for group two, yes. Uh, for group three, um, I'm also ready. I'm the rapporteur for our group. <laughs> uh, for group one, um, Dr. Keita, Daisy, are you ready? Hi, Karen. Yes, we're okay. Thank All right. You. Thanks. And then for group four, uh, Mashan, Ingrid. Yes, we are here. Oh, you are Ready. Ingrid? <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay. Uh, then, Mr. Chair, unless uh, there are no further remarks or comments or suggestions on your side, perhaps you can start with the plenary. Yes, please. Now, I, I think every repertoire is here. So we yeah. can continue our meeting. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, may we begin with group one? Uh, I would like to call on Daisy uh, Padayo as the rapporteur for group one, headed by Dr. Kita, to present their findings. Okay, thank you, everyone. Let me share my screen. Uh, oops, it's not showing. Sorry, but let me repeat again. <laughs> hmm. It doesn't show. Uh, okay. There, not a day. It's already okay. working. Okay, can you see it? Okay, um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, hope you all had a good lunch. So my name is Daisy Padayo. I'm with PEMSI, and I'm uh, assigned <laughs> volunteer to report <laughs> in behalf of our group. <laughs> so for our group one members, this is composed of country partners. Um, the, our facilitator is Dr. Keita Farakawa. Um, I serve as the documenter and rapporteur for the group. And the members of our group includes Ms. Valerie Chow of Singapore, Ms. Sobin 
Shim of RL Korea, Mr. Hiroshima and Mr. Kobayashi of Japan, Mr. I Miss Hyun Shu, Mr. Wang So Chang, Miss So Shao Tung, and Miss Wei Liu of China. Okay, so we covered the four questions for the breakout session. For the first question on uh, whether the prior, prior, prioritization strategy are appropriate and adequate, um, the group agrees that the strategy is good at the moment, but um, they would like to um, point out that if it's possible to reconsider another word for the hold strategy, especially the hold word, because uh, to make it more positive. Uh, they think, uh, the group think that the hold word um, seems to be uh, like a more negative uh, word. So they think that if we can reconsider another word for that one. For the second question on governance and management programs on whether the priority activities are adequate and responsive to the needs of the region and the countries, and whether the programs were able to capture the priorities of country partners and non-country partners. Um, the highlights of uh, the discussion of the group um, are the following. So the group um, proposed that climate change adaptation and the disaster risk reduction should be captured in the SDSC IP and the roadmap. The PEMC roadmap should continue to promote the implementation of integrated coastal management. The SDSC IP and the roadmap should consider that actions identified, for example, in addressing marine litter will not duplicate and or replicate efforts of other organization, for example, COBC. Thus, it is important to have information exchange and collaboration with other organizations. The group has specific recommendations on the grow, grow, hold, and harvest strategy. For example, on the management, on the program on information, knowledge management, and capacity building for the hold strategy to continue the conduct of training programs with country partners and non-country partners and other stakeholders. And in terms of the priority issue or management program on climate change, for the growth strategy to utilize and mobilize bilateral international support to respond to climate change and to promote international exchanges to reduce the vulnerability of communities. And for the whole strategy to continue the regulation of emissions in the maritime sector, for example, from ports and ships. The members of the group has also identified some examples of their programs that are relevant to the SDSC IP priorities. For example, for the Japan, they identified that as part of their global effort to address, address marine litter, they have their ongoing work with the International Maritime Organization in addressing marine litter from ships. For RO Korea, one of their programs now is in terms of achieving carbon neutrality in oceans through the enlargement and or expansion of tidal flats for blue carbon. For China, they have identified a number of uh, management programs, for example, their blue carbon research, their programs on marine ecosystem restoration and protection, their ongoing cooperation with IUCN in the application of nature-based solutions and combining it with other concepts in order to realize the goal for marine eco-civilization the publication and utilization of the practice, practice of nature-based solutions, and the use and development of renewable energy, like tidal energy and current energy. For the third um, question on the timeline, whether the timeline match the timeline of priority programs and projects of partners, um, the group has a question to the secretariat on the timeline, on, with, on what does the blank or unshaded row in the timeline mean? Does it mean that the action will continue, have been achieved or dropped and or left behind? So maybe we can address that later on from the secretariat. And then the group proposed that the, if, if the country have more ambitious target, 
we can move the block or the shaded row of the timeline to earlier year. For example, the ICM code in China on the harvest strategy, uh, China uh, think that the target for the ICM certification can be achieved earlier, that is 2023 instead of 2024, in consideration of their current progress in the implementation of the ICM code in China. But then again, the timeline should consider the targets of other countries and that the group proposed that the column should be marked to accommodate the targets or roadmaps of other countries. So they proposed that the row should be colored either instead of leaving it white or black. And for the fourth um, question, uh, not really a question, but consideration of the breakout on the formation or establishment of the technical working group. So the group agrees on the setting up of the technical working group for the development of the SCIP. And, uh, but uh, the request uh, for further information and that they need to review the terms of reference for the technical working group, particularly on the extent of participation that will be required from the members of the technical working group. For example, the frequency of technical working group meetings that will be conducted in consideration of the other responsibilities of the potential members of the TWG. And then the consideration also of how many or the, on the number of members that is expected to be part of the technical working group and the composition of the members of the technical working group, whether it will just be the country partners or will it include the non-country partners and also other stakeholders. Um, yeah, I think that's it for our group. Um, I would like to request our members of group one, if you have other additions that in our um, summary for the for discussion. Thank you. If there are no additional explanations or comments from group one, uh, may we call on group two? Uh, Kate, you may go ahead and present your screen. Thanks, Masanori-san. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm Masanori Kobayashi of the Ocean Policy Research Institute of the Sasaka Peace Foundations, and pleased to serve as a rapporteur and present a highlight of our group two discussions. Um, first, uh, we have addressed the uh, overall priority strategies, uh, grow, hold, and harvest. And uh, on this point, uh, uh, but group participants um, really carried out a different discussions. And first, uh, the on the proposed strategies, the strategies uh, offers a good framework for the roadmap to, to 2030, and it should be optimized to guide PMC in zooming in on core competencies and the initiatives that would yield uh, greatest impacts and a better allocation of resources. It was also mentioned that it is very important to keep eyes on harvest programs initiatives so as not to lose good work that has been initiated by or through PMC. <clears throat> With respect to the proposed priorities and the strategy goals, it was suggested that, that there is a different priority management program identified uh, such as biodiversity, pollution reduction, waste management, knowledge management, and the capacity building. Uh, that are uh, interlinked there by highlighting the value of cooperation and partnership on various levels. Uh, it was also mentioned that uh, some uh, non-country parties, partners, initiatives have complement with SDS, SEA, and may be pursued for further synergies and the corporations. Regarding biodiversity, ASEAN Heritage Park program was mentioned and it was also said to be important to strengthen MPA effectiveness and networking 
in support of 30% global target for post-2020 biodiversity framework. Um, we have also continued discussions regarding on pollution reduction and waste management, GASEIA program, OSRL programs. Uh, they are supporting uh, the accelerations to international conventions, accession to the international conventions uh, related to pollution. BRS program related to marine litters, especially plastic pollutions. Uh, it was also mentioned and uh, the uh, merit in pursuing alternative fuels, blue carbons in support also to climate change mitigation and adaptation, sustainable fisheries, uh, fish net including fish net management. On knowledge management and capacity building, uh, non-country partners express support to facilitate better knowledge and the information sharing and the capacity development particularly with local governments and in partnership with existing networks of PMC. Several PMC project initiatives and, uh, and in the pipeline will provide more concrete areas for cooperation and the synergies in the next five years. PMC is, used, uh, PMC is urged to continue serving as a platform to facilitate linkages of various partnership initiative, initiatives programs at the local level where on the ground implementation and impact is a key. Um, um, by and large, uh, it was also mentioned that the, the participants noted PMC efforts and accomplishment on governance related initiatives as well as on the blue economy. It was also suggested to encourage PMC to facilitate more direct coordination with key entities, particularly linkages with local government and the local levels. Um, it was also said that uh, it is vital to strengthen collaboration uh, to generate synergies and to reduce overlaps on various initiatives in the region, including initiatives on sustainable blue economy. It was also said that it is vital to ensure that uh, fundamentals on governance are in place and the strengthened to better engage and benefit on the new global and regional commitments, programs and initiatives. And this includes gauging and helping countries enhance their readiness, especially under the COVID-19 situation. Um, it was also said in terms of the timeline the non-country partners, current plans and programs as are well and aligned with the proposed five-year time frame uh, for SDS, SCA, IP 2023-2027, and the more concrete synergies can be discussed in succeeding planning and cons consultations. NCPs express willingness to share copies of their respective plans and programs for reference in the development of the SDS SEA. Um, it was also mentioned that the non country partners support the proposed approach and the establishment of a, a working group for the development of SDS SEA. And the non country partners requested for a copy of the TOR for the proposed TWG to be shared to enable them to review the terms and consider and confirm their participation or representation at the working group, technical working group. I guess, uh, yeah, this is a nutshell of our group two discussions. I thank you for your attention and I thank you, the moderators and the participants for your very insightful discussions. Thank you, Masanori-san. Uh, I shall proceed now for Group 3's presentation. Uh, as you may all know, for Group 3, uh, our members are the Ministry of Environment in Cambodia, the Ministry of Environment and Forestry in Indonesia, the Department of Water Resources in Lao PDR, the Department of Environment and Natural, Resor Natural Resources in the Philippines, the Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries in Timor-Leste, and finally, we also have here 
uh, the Vietnam administration of seas and islands. Our group was led by Nancy Burmas, uh, the senior program manager here in the PRF, with me serving as the rapporteur and also documenter, along with Isa Acosta, one of our interns here in the PRF. Proceeding with the main findings, I have laid out here a summary matrix of the group's discussion for the questions related to the overall prioritization strategy, the governance and management programs, and the timeline of implementation of the PEMC roadmap to 2030. Um, so the overall response is that generally, yes, uh, all our member countries are supportive and they find that the overall prioritization strategy, the proposed programs and the timeline are in line with their respective country priorities and agenda. Uh, the only thing that we need to consider, however, is that, of course, in the formulation implementation of the PEMC roadmap and SDSC implementation plan for 2023 to 2027, especially as we go along with the technical working group discussions, we will need to consider country-specific nuances. And also they note that um, all management programs are captured except climate change. Uh, moving over to the specific discussions, uh, again with climate change, since most of the countries have high vulnerability uh, against climate change, they note that they would like to priority, prioritize adaptation over mitigation. And then we also have to consider ongoing developments at the regional level, especially the discussions and the possible turnout of the post-2020 global biodiversity framework. And then while they uh, accept and agree with the proposed uh, management and governance uh, programs, uh, there is a need to consider the interlinkages between these programs. Uh, the synergistic effect should be clear because currently it seems that the programs are existing in silo. And then uh, also we have to consider Lao PDR's context, uh, considering that they are a landlocked country. Hence, on their part, uh, the emphasis should be on IRBM. Then for Timor-Leste, um, they would like to note that uh, ICM application is very limited to few sites, unlike in other countries where they are already pursuing advanced efforts in scaling up uh, ICM implementation and have already more or less mainstreamed this in their development plans and investment programming. And then other things that uh, our countries would like for us to consider in developing and implementing the PENSI roadmap and the next SDSC implementation plan uh, will be first uh, from Cambodia's end, since they are pursuing uh, uh, the implementation of payments for ecosystem services or PES and circular economy, perhaps this is something that we can consider as well in the proposed priority activities. For instance, on the Cambodia's end, they are currently working on the development or building of sustainable cities, even along the coast. And then on Indonesia's part, um, related to the discussion on the interlinkages between the programs, there's also a need to consider how we can apply the ecosystems-based approach to ensure that everything is integrated and synergistic and also adaptive, considering the times. And then uh, from Lao PDR and Philippines, uh, their combined position was that uh, ICM mainstreaming uh, should still be pursued especially considering, let's say, on the Philippine side, uh, we are hoping to pass the ICM bill. And then also from Lao PDR, they suggested to uh, incorporate the mainstreaming of gender as part of the proposed activities of the PEMC roadmap to 2030, which is currently absent or not explicit in the draft. And then for Vietnam, uh, they would like to highlight the development of coastal and marine industries. Uh, for those who may have attended the Ocean Roundtable Dialogue last June 8, this is one of our collabs or first events for the East Asian Seas Congress 2021. Uh, they actually have a long-term marine economic strategy where they even listed uh, the priorities or order of ranking in terms of uh, marine and coastal industries that they would like to develop. So perhaps this is also something that we can consider in the development of the PEMC roadmap and the SDSC implementation plan 2023 to 2027. Then for Timor-Leste, uh, building on the previous point uh, that 
ICM application is limited to very few sites, there needs to be an assessment of current capacity and training needs. And then lastly, from Lao PDR, they noted that uh, on their part, uh, they need to continue or build on some outputs or outcomes of past SDSC project, particularly the development of the Integrated Water Resource Management Demonstration Site in Huay Nanong River Basin in Second Province, and also the capacity building on surface water data collection and water use permission. Uh, that will be it in terms of the discussions for the questions on overall prioritization strategy, the governance and management programs, and the timeline. Moving on to the next set of questions, particularly the support to the technical working group creation, uh, I will, I'm pleased to inform everyone that all countries so far are okay with the creation of this technical working group. Uh, there are some specific nuances, however, that we need to consider. For instance, in Cambodia, uh, they cannot provide a representative due to limited technical staff and manpower and workload due to Congress-related matters. Then on the side of Indonesia and Philippines, uh, there is a need to pursue a formal process just as we did in previous engagements in PEMC. Uh, there needs to be uh, the uh, terms of reference developed for, before Indonesia and other countries can nominate representatives. And then on the side of Lao PDR, they will probably nominate the same PEMC focus to join the TWG. On the part of the Philippines, they would also like to know uh, similar with group one stake, the level of representation needed for the technical working group. Then for the Timor-Leste, um, they can tap on existing P PWGs for their representatives to the technical working group. Uh, that will be it for group one. Uh, perhaps uh, some of our members may have additional inputs for things that they would like to note. If not, uh, that will be it for group three. Thank you. I would like to um, call on group four. Hello. Hello, Masan. Yes, we can. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Sorry, just. Uh... Okay, uh, I will uh, represent uh, group four's uh, members. So uh, from the group uh, four members, uh, there are uh, Dr. Fang uh, from uh, PLG Secretariat, and then Dr. Wansuk from the PNLC, and then uh, Mr. Uh, Prak Fisal from uh, Prehasihan Province, Cambodia, and then uh, Reggie, and then also uh, Mary Ann from the PRF. And then also uh, the uh, documentations uh, supported by uh, Ingrid and also uh, by Jan and June. So uh, when we discuss uh, about the, I think the total of six, uh, six questions uh, uh, and then uh, clustering uh, to the fourth uh, cluster, yeah, on the overall and then uh, programs, timeline, and then on the technical working group, so this is the result uh, first related to the uh, overall uh, prioritizations. Uh, we think that the uh, framework is a good and clear uh, that will guide us uh, for the development of PNC in the future, which uh, will be good for the regions. However, we need also to consider and then more focus on the core competencies of the PMC. I think uh, PMC has a long uh, experience in the uh, ICMs, including the ICM certification as well. And then uh, related to the uh, B uh, cluster, governance and management program, we discuss uh, more on uh, the program, the six uh, priority program, yeah, in the in the table nine, I think. And then uh, we we think that the monitoring should be encouraged, but uh, it is not enough to reduce uh, pollutions. So we think we need to be tied up uh, to some activities, tools, technologies, business model, and then the economic incentive to reduce the pollution. Uh, for example, for the economic solution, uh, for a circular economy, capacity building, and then also need to strengthen the capacities and program for biodiversity and ecological. 
And then also uh, from the discussion also, uh, we, we noted that I think uh, it is good if we can like uh, provide uh, or link between the marine uh, and land-based pollutions uh, to the uh, uh, economics incentive or uh, livelihood. Yeah. And then uh, the second related to this uh, question is that uh, on how to link uh, to uh, blue economy uh, outcomes. Uh, for example, like a polluter based uh, program and et cetera. And then I think uh, there is a big opportunity uh, to capacity building, uh, especially for the underdeveloped uh, areas. And then other highlights uh, discussions uh, in this uh, uh, governance and uh, management programs that uh, the roadmap recognized the uh, importance role of PNLC and uh, PNLG, especially in the knowledge management and capacity buildings. However, we, need, uh, we think that we need uh, an ex expansion of the PNLG and PNLC's members. Sorry, uh, expansion of uh, PNLG and PNLC's uh, membership is important, but also need to pay more attention to activities on how to improve uh, the network and services to the member such as uh, that member will benefit from the network. And then also we think uh, need more activities for the network and capacity development of the secretariat. And then another point related to the PNLG secretariat, Dr. Fans uh, really noted that uh, uh, the PNLG secretariat capacity building included in the uh, MOA between PMC and uh, AINA. However, uh, uh, there is a suggestion that uh, more uh, resources uh, available for uh, capacity building and uh, activities, including a joint learning forum of PNLC and PNLG in November. Hopefully, more similar efforts or activities in the future. Uh, another point uh, PNLG and PNLC can contribute also to the other identified priorities. So, uh, I think uh, not only uh, related to the knowledge management of capacity building, but then also uh, more roles of the PNLG and PNLC in the other priorities, such as uh, blue economy, conservation, and uh, other uh, priorities. And then uh, we also recognize that good uh, marketing and communications uh, in the roadmap. However, so we think that we need to have like a more tailored communication plan uh, activities uh, on the target. More uh, important role of the national partner to support uh, comms uh, or marketing plan. Also, uh, we uh, recommend uh, to refine and update of the PEMC's uh, stakeholder engagement and uh, communication plan. Uh, next highlight uh, in this uh, question also, uh, we recommend to include the uh, climate change adaptation and then also sustainable fisheries or EFM initiative in the roadmap uh, and then also in the implementation uh, plan. Uh, since uh, HC2 projects uh, under executed under PEMC uh, cover five uh, transboundary issue, uh, one of them is related to the fisheries and also the climate change uh, impact to the uh, fishery sector. And then also we discuss related to the uh, one of the uh, priorities on the harvest part is related to ICM certifications. Uh, maybe, I don't know, uh, maybe uh, we can, uh, we need to consider should either in the under grow or under hold, not in the harvest since we think that ICM is a continuing process of improvement and adoption in response to new developments. Development and implementation of ICM in the countries and site is continuing. Then ICM certification is important to assess and guide on the progress of the ICM implementations, either in the local, national, or regional level. However, we recognize also that currently implementation of the ICM certification has not been optimum or at the satisfactory level. So the, the consideration here, how to improve the conduct of ICM certification to be more effective and efficient, then who will do the certification? Certifications need uh, significant documentation, local governments are interested but uh, need support uh, from us. And then uh, ICM certification may be supported by uh, PNLC. So I think uh, 
uh, we agree that uh, PNLC can also support uh, the ICM uh, certification uh, program. However, of course, I need the capacity uh, building uh, in this process. And then on the timelines, uh, we recommend uh, related to the expansion of the PNLG and PNLC uh, part uh, should be earlier than 2024. In the timelines, uh, uh, expansion of PNLG and PNLC started in the 2024. We think that the PNLG membership expansion and activities is regular work during the entire period, uh, maybe started uh, is even from 2022. Yeah. And then uh, also build on the existing ICM uh, sites, uh, uh, we need to strengthen uh, them or scaling up, need uh, to be done sooner, I think, to plot the activities to be implemented on the and on the timeline, the HC2 project executed by uh, PMC, uh, especially on the, on the regional and uh, PNG component, also will be able to support the SDSC implementation plan, and then also the roadmap. Uh, uh, in addition, also uh, we are updating the uh, strategic action program of the Arafura and Timor Sea ecosystem actions. Maybe also uh, able to contribute to SDSC implementation. Uh, the last point from this timeline also uh, we recommend to continue pro monitoring uh, progress to implementation and then to also to ensure mainstreaming of the project supported ICM into national and uh, local plan and uh, program. The last part related to the uh, establishment of the technical working group, uh, I think the member all agree that this is important for the participatory and collaborative uh, planning for the SDSC implementation. And, and but then I think uh, uh, Dr. Fang is really available uh, and potential member. Uh, but then uh, for Dr. Wansu, uh, he willing, uh, she willing to provide uh, input as needed. But then maybe we are not able to be a member or, or a member of this uh, technical. I think that's all from uh, the group four. Uh, over to you, Karen. Thank you, Mas Han. Uh, with all group presentations over, uh, I would like to give uh, Dr. O. Uh, thank you, Karen. Uh, thank you very much for all the participants of the breakout discussion. Uh, I, I found that many good points were made by four reporters. There are too many, but I would like to make just several points. So first of all, it seems that all the, all the groups think PEMS's role is very important in achieving goals of roadmap to 2030 and SDS, SDS SCA IP 2023 20, 20, to 2028. 20, 20, and regarding the overall prioritization strategy, I think all the groups think the biodiversity, climate change, and pollution reduction and waste management are interlinked. So we have to consider integrated and synergistic approach while we are carrying out these projects. Um, regarding just a moment. And also, I think all the groups think uh, ICM is very important. So, so we have to consider promotion and level up of ICM as well. And regarding technical working group, it seems all the groups agree upon establishing technical working group. But first of all, we need to have clear TOR to, to initiate this work. And the TOR must include, for example, extent of participation, composition, and level of uh, representation from each country partners. I don't know at this moment 
who can participate in this technical working group. Anyway, we have to have clear technical working group, TOR, to proceed. Yes, uh, these are my points. Thank you. So, Karen, now can we start Q&A for yes. the presentation? That yes, that will be Dr. O. Yes, now the uh, floor is open for your questions and answers. Please. Do you have any questions, comments, suggestions? Edie? Yes. Uh, yes, please. Yes, good. Uh, thank you, Dr. O. Oh, um, I was waiting for others to, to make comments before I would, but uh, since the, there has none on the floor, probably I'll start and others could follow. Yeah, thank you for all the comments and feedback to the uh, crafting of the PEMC Roadmap 2030 and the next implementation plan for uh, from 2022, they are all very valuable, and uh, they are they all will also serve as uh, you know to help further inform the development of of our PEMC roadmap to 2030, which in turn will guide the development of our ministerial declaration, which is like would be like a policy framework that would guide us in the next uh, uh, you know up, up to 2030 in the fulfillment of uh, our obligations or commitments rather to the international agreements that we have signed on as countries and as region. Now, um, just a quick feedback. Um, I think, uh, well, first of all, I was in group two. I was facilitating in group two. And we, in our slides, we, we had our summary of the discussion, but we failed to have, uh, to acknowledge the, the members, the group. So we had, I, ha I headed the group of the non-country partners and we had active participation from OSRL. Uh, OPRI, IPICA, and SAN Center for Biodiversity. So thank you so much for our non-country partners who joined us. Um, we lost Cohen uh, at some point. I don't know what happened. So, but hopefully we can reach out to them. Um, Masanori San was the one who uh, reported and uh, the documentation. And uh, Kate Gallardo also helped me with the, with the facilitation. Now, um, I think. Some group mentioned about, uh, okay, we welcome the PEMC roadmap or, or the strategies or the key elements, but we should be mindful of our competencies that we do not overreach. I think that's how I interpret it. Um, I should just uh, want to clarify that when we talk about PEMC, we talk about the partnership. So we just don't talk about the secretariat. So I think that should be clear. PRF is just one actor. So while we may have limited resources and capacity, the, the, the framework or the regional strategy is for the entire partnership from country and non-country partners to collaborators. So it should be all encompassing in that sense and comprehensive. I think uh, part of the work of the, uh, the technical working group probably will be to establish who will do what once we have you know, all the basic elements uh, of the jigsaw puzzle, because I'm sure it will be like a patchwork of who, who will be doing what. So that um, I take note that uh, there wasn't much uh, information on the review, and I don't know what happened there uh, on climate change, but I am happy and pleased that the group has actually, uh, you know, put that back on, and because we know that countries actually have good programs uh, to implement uh, their commitment to the Paris Agreement. So I'm very pleased with that. Um, and then um, in terms of the technical working group, yes, we will craft the terms of reference. We just wanted to make sure that everybody's comfortable with that. There will be intersessional work because uh, if we have to have a clear roadmap by December uh, 2030, then uh, we need to, to do work in between the formal meetings. And the... Um, Composition of the group, except for the technical and uh, co chair and co chair, which we made sort of mandatory and PRF, would be voluntary. <laughs> so we had some um, countries who want to join, and we also had some uh, non country partners who are also willing to join. In any case, at the very least, I think we would want everyone to participate, either to send comments if they cannot participate in uh, you know, online uh, discussions. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you very much, Edi. Are there any other questions, comments from the floor?
perhaps, uh, Mr. Chair, we can proceed with this. Uh, country partners first, then non-country partners. Then for the country partners, maybe we can call on them uh, alphabetically first uh, with Cambodia. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> yes, it's a good idea. <laughs> Uh, Cambodia, uh, may I call on Mr. Long or Mr. Amida or Dr. Moninit to provide comments or inputs, if any, on the group presentations thus far? Good afternoon to everyone. Good afternoon, Mr. Long. After the uh, lunch, so <laughs> Yeah. Yes, the time. <laughs> you know, this is behind that. What is the a screen? Okay, what is here from from my side? What you know that what is the um, fulfill the uh, you know that what is the the full group presentation, and also there is a comment from uh, Mr. Chair Dr. O. So I saw I I I also agree that what is the uh, four um, point that was just a raise up, and the. Uh, well, uh, this is what is there from me. Uh, uh, that's what is the I support, and I wish to see that what is the, the program is going well. But the one thing that I worry about what is the the the, the pandemic uh, right now. So you know, there's uh, COVID nineteen, and I afraid that was a COVID twenty one or the COVID twenty two something that was there coming up. Then what well, you know. You see, everyone was, you know, look at to the uh, planning uh, uh, strategy on 2030. Then was uh, look look to this uh, different issue. I hope that was the uh, Mr. Chair agree with that, right? That's all of my comment, Doctor O. Okay, thank you, Cambodia. Then. May we call on China? China, um, yes, please. Huyen, China, please. If you are there, or perhaps Wang from CTC. Or Dr. Zhang. Dr. Wang, or Dr. Zhang. Uh, if there are no additional comments or suggestions from China, maybe we can call on Indonesia first. Yes, please. Indonesia, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. I think uh, Indonesia Council already uh, presented in our uh, breakout session in group three. Uh, this is uh, for the roadmap, also for uh, the setting the uh, SDAC for 20. 23 until 2027. This is a critical time for us to to design uh, the, the, the our activity. I think I, I, I also uh, agree with uh, Amy uh, said the, uh, for PMC the, the 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 important point for us. We work together uh, with partnership. This is uh, our our character characteristics. And uh, uh, for 2030, this is uh, all country uh, have target under uh, under multilateral agreement, under climate change target, under SDGs target, under biodiversity target, also under pollution uh, control target, uh, especially for marine litter until I don't know still they are. Uh, negotiation for a new agreement. This is uh, important uh, for us to synergize our activity uh, with a multilateral agreement. And also uh, in, uh, uh, in the, the implementation, this is uh, with accordance with uh, national policy and authority. This is uh, uh, important that they are, they are linked with, we work together in, in, in a region area with accordance with uh, national authority and uh, policies. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Indonesia. Japan, please. Thank you, uh, and uh, thank you for uh, all facilitator and the reporter and the all members. Uh, I have 
uh, at this point, I don't have any comment、uh, for the uh, reporter's uh, summary.、Um, I hope、uh, the discussion will、uh, improve the、uh, roadmap to 2030.、Uh, thank you.、Uh, thank you for your comment, Japan.、Uh, Lao PDR, please. Uh, may we call on Dr. Intavi or Van as his assistant? Yes,、uh, as uh, I have advice from Dr. Intavi. So, from Lao PDR, we, we don't have any other comments for now, and we are looking forward to work in detail what we have discussed. Today. And we also hope that we can further work together face to face with our COVID anymore. So, <laughs> no more for now. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Lao Pedia.、Uh, Philippines, please.、Uh, thank you.、Um, I think、uh, the discussion already fully covered our inputs, but、uh, we have just one additional. Uh, if we will be able, or we want to know how to how we can also network the LGUs that we work with、uh, in our implementation of the Marine Protected Area Network and ICM and mainstreaming.、Uh, that's it.、Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for your comments, Philippines. Aro Korea, please. Uh, I think our case opinion is clearly reflected on presentation, and thanks to our reporter, Ms. Davy. And I hope the SBAC IP c o n t r i b u t e to East Asia's region sustainability, and also hope the technical working group goes to very fruitful. Thanks, that's all. Thanks. Thank you, Aro Korea.、Uh, Timor Leste, please. Uh, Mr. Arthur, we give the floor to you. And then later on,、uh, Singapore.、Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm very sorry. <laughs>、uh, if there are no further. Ah, yes. Mr. Arthur, go ahead.、Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay.、Uh, thank you.、Uh, Timor l e s is no comment for this. But we still look forward for、uh, what we already discussed for today. So we still focus for、uh, the topics that we already discussed. Thank you. Thank you, Timur Leste. Singapore, please. Thank you, Chair. Singapore does not have any further input to the presentations as we note that integrated coastal management topics such as coastal adaptation to climate change, marine, marine ecosystem protection, and the application of nature based solutions continue to be of high interest to the partners in PEMC. With regard to the technical working group, can we seek clarification if the technical working group does not have to include all partner countries and that all countries will be consulted in the session? For input. Thank you. Thank you, Singapore. I, I'm sure that、uh, PRF will provide good TOR for the DWG.、Um, Vietnam, please. Thank you.、Uh, I think、uh, Basie and Mondre from Vietnam don't have、uh, any comment. Okay. We agree. Thank you. Okay. Thank Vietnam. Now, Let's come back to China. China, please. Thank you. Thank you, Chair.、Uh, China、uh, has no further comments.、Uh, we hope we can contribute more for future, for the future roadmap. And uh, uh, this uh, future, uh, roadmap can help us all, and uh, uh, everyone could, uh, could uh, benefit from it. Yeah,、uh, thank you. Thank you, China.、Uh, Dr. Wang, you have a very nice shirt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <I'm empty. laughs> thank you very much.、Yeah. <laughs> so now.、Uh, Dr.、Uh, Mr. Chair,、yeah. if I may,、uh, just to answer、uh, Singapore's question on the technical working group, 
Um, yeah. While Valerie, uh, not all country partners necessarily have to join the technical working group, although that would be ideal, of course. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, while that may be the case, uh, we will consult all country partners, regardless if they are involved in the technical working group, as well as uh, non-country partners. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Uh, now, the uh, floor is open to non-country partners and guests. Do you have any comments, questions? Uh, perhaps, uh, Mr. Chair, we can start with the ASEAN Center for Biodiversity. Uh, I would like to call on Director Clarissa or perhaps Director Sheila to provide their comments or suggestions. Okay, thank you, Karen. Uh, ASEAN, please. Um, hello, this is Marlene. Um, while well, our director uh, has to attend another meeting or engagement, um, ACB would like to um, uh, express our appreciation for being invited in this uh, meeting. Um, we look forward to further uh, partners to further our partnership, especially on the uh, upcoming um, project that will be uh, hopefully be approved by the GEF UNDP. And we look forward to a more uh, progressive partnership with Densi and all the other AMS participating in Densi as well. Thank you. Thank you, Asian. <coughs> uh, may we? Can, yes, please, Karen. You proceed. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, may we call on MX, uh, perhaps uh, Ishizu san, uh, Matsuda san, or Hosomi san are present in the room. Uh, if not, um, may we call on uh, NOPAP? Mm -hmm. Mr. Asani. Ning? Thank you, uh, Dr. O and uh, mm -hmm. Karen. And NOPAP is look, uh, looking forward to working with MC closely. We noticed that many issues, many topics um, may be overlapped. So mm -hmm. we really explore the opportunities to work with you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ning. I hope that we do not duplicate or uh, replicate. Okay. <laughs> so we, we need to cooperate yes, yes. in the near future. Thank you, Nafra. Thank you. Yes. Karen, you proceed. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I would like to call on uh, OPRI SPF, uh, particularly Kobayashi-san. Uh, if there are no comments or suggestions uh, from OPRI SPF, I would like to call on OSRL, perhaps James, if you have additional feedback. Or you hi, uh, hi, this is James. Can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, all right. Uh, no, no further comments from OSRL. Um, we were very, we had a good good discussion in group two earlier on. So uh, really looking forward to the exciting projects in the near future. Thank you so much, Karen. Thank you, James. Uh, next, uh, I would like to call on Dr. Fang or perhaps Gabby from the PNLG Secretariat. If there's none, perhaps uh, Dr. Wansok as PNLC president. Okay, well, first of all, I'd like to um, thank for the opportunity to join the meeting and I appreciate the insightful um, discussion. Um, I have no further comments and um, look forward to, to our future work and look forward to seeing the finalized plans and roadmap. Thank you. Thank you, PNLC. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm pleased to inform you that we have now uh, went around to all country partners and also non-country partners, mm -hmm. as well as our guests. I think we may proceed now with the end of this meeting. But before that, I would like to remind everyone to answer the feedback survey that is provided in the chat box for PRF to use as basis in improving our services in organizing meetings, such as the Partnership Council. 
Okay, uh, thank you very much, Karen. Uh, uh, first of all, thank you very much to everybody for your active and fruitful discussion. And I think that we have good results today. And I hope all of you come back tomorrow at 10 a.m. Manila time. Now, if there is no housekeeping issue from the PRF, now I would like to adjourn the meeting. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, everyone. See you tomorrow. Yes, yeah, thank see you, you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Thank you, everyone. See you tomorrow. Thank see you, you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, everyone. See you tomorrow. Thanks, Dr. Kita. Thank you, Amy.